Welcome to My Watches with Ben. Today's video is about the wristwatch type of field watch. Yes, this video contains all the field watches I could find in today's market. I even tried to find anything that could still conceivably work as a field watch as well. Today I will show you what I consider to be the best field watch out of 330 watches from 213 brands. There are timestamps in the description. So if you only have 15 minutes and you just want the top 10 list, please skip ahead now using the timestamps in the description. The top 10 is very close to the end of the video, and I'm literally going to go over 330 watches first, which will take some time. How much time? I don't know yet. The time is well worth it if you want to get to the bottom of what makes the best field watch, and if you want to see how your field watch stacks up compared to the other ones. And if you just want to see a ton of field watches, well, this is the place for you. So I made this video because every other video I've seen on YouTube about the best field watches is typically has like five or so watches. Usually it's kind of the same sort of things and they seem to have been picked kind of arbitrarily. So I thought, hold on, there are hundreds of field watches and they always have the same ones. Surely there are better watches out there than to the same handful I seem to see everywhere. Well, after my research, I can confidently tell you the answer is yes. There are a lot better field watches than what everybody talks about all the time. The actual best field watches are usually ignored in these types of videos that I've seen. So in this video, you'll see the good, the bad, and the ugly. <coughs> 30 meters, <coughs> water resistance. There's only one of my top 10 that I've seen in any other top field watches videos. In this video, I will rate watches you've heard of, such as Timex Expedition North Titanium, the Tudor Ranger, the Bulova Hack, the Rolex Explorer, and the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical, as well as watches you probably haven't heard of, such as the Merci LMM01, the Draken Iraqi, the Timor Modern Field, the Mark III Crucible, the Circular Pro Trail, the TWC Cadet, and tons more. So after a little intro and background, I will give you my top five field watches in five different price categories. The first category is under $200. And examples in this category include Timex Field Post Mechanical, the LL Bean, the Casio MTPS 120, the Prezidis. Next, we have the price category of $200 to $500. And examples in this category include the Benris 3061, the Seiko SRPJ85, Marathon, and Bertucci. The next price category, $500 to $1,000, Includes examples such as Hamilton, Tissot, micro brands such as Yema, Baltic, and Vare. The next price category, $1,000 to $5,000, includes things such as the Longines Marine Nationale, the Tudor Ranger, Nomos, and Glycine. And in the $5,000 and up category, yes, there are field watches in this category, the examples include the Rolex Explorer, the Omega Railmaster, the Patek Philippe Calatrava, the Hermes H08. After I cover the different price ranges, I'll give you the top 10 in all price ranges. If you don't see your favorite field watch in this video or you disagree with anything in there, please let me know in the comments. With this many watches, there could have been some oversights. And naturally, we may disagree on the importance of certain features in the watch. And here's the first list of the video. The top five best value for money. Here are the top five watches with the highest specs to price ratios that also pass my specs recommendation threshold. What it turned out to be was essentially the best watches you can get under a hundred bucks. Unsurprisingly, three of these are Chinese watches. In number five is the 511 Pathfinder. This 42 millimeter watch costs $95 and it received a ratio of 0.8. Next in number four is the Miltado Military. This 36 millimeter watch cost 80 bucks and it had a specs to price ratio of one. In number three is the Bertucci DX3 Field. This 40 millimeter watch costs $75 and has a price to specs ratio of one. And in number two, we have the Redune G10. This 35 millimeter watch 
has a price of $54 and thus has a ratio of 1.2. And then in the number one, my most recommended watch just for price. If you don't have very much money and you want the highest specs, the best performing field watch you can get for the money, my recommendation is the escapement time. This 38 millimeter watch costs $51 and has a price to specs ratio of 1.6. So there you go. These five watches are not the best out of all 330 watches in the video. They're just the best of the absolute cheapest, you know, say under a hundred bucks. And now for a field watch overview. So a field watch can be a lot of different things to a lot of different people. I define it very narrowly using the field watches of World War I and II as the starting point and not deviating very far from there. It's for the scenario if you get dropped in the forest, you have to stay there for months for some reason, your friends are there too and you need to coordinate attacks or something, you've got all the food you want, you're going to be okay, but <clears throat> you have to have a good watch, but it can't be digital. Digital somehow doesn't exist anymore, and it's absolutely critical that you be able to read the time easily. Your watch cannot break, even though you're banging around in the woods and it's raining on you and you're diving into lakes and you're chopping firewood, that watch just has to work and not interfere with everything you're doing. So that's my rough description of this very specific watch category. My unpopular opinion is that most watches marketed as field watches are less robust than the average sports watch. This shouldn't be the case. Field watches should be robust and simple with a minimal profile to avoid snagging. Instead, a shocking number of these field watches have numerous complications. They're made of poor materials. They have applied indices that can fall off, all these extra doodads on them. A lot of them have really weak water resistance. And some of them are just way too big for some reason. Modern trends have almost completely saturated field watches. Watch collectors really like automatic movements that they can look at, the little spinny rotor, and dive bezels to play with. Watch collectors are more concerned with how the watch looks than how it avoids potential threats to it, such as the crystal cracking, the spring bar slipping off, um, or the lug possibly cracking, or banging your crown into something and damaging the movement inside. The market seems to demand a date on the dial even if the model is vintage or retro. More than half the watches in this video, 53%, um, 175 watches, have at least one complication. My broad point is that field watch design has largely yielded to the market demand for these more everyday features that watch collectors have grown accustomed to. Automatic movements are thicker and have an additional moving part. Automatic movements and hand winding are not as robust as quartz. Of the 330 watches I scored, 206 or 62% have some kind of mechanical movement. When you consider the use case of the field watch, this is illogical. I was also really disappointed by the number of watches with 30 meters water resistance. It includes Bulova, Timex, Ball, Casio, Accutron, IWC, Longines, and tons of others have 30 meters or less. This is less water resistance than many dress watches come with now. You may like how your watch looks on Instagram, but that doesn't make it a good field watch and we're going to get into it. What I'm looking for in this video is the perfect field watch. What are the hallmarks of a field watch? It needs to be well protected. So these are things like welded lugs, recessed crystal, NATO strap, crown guards, screw down crown. Secondly, it needs to be good at telling the time. So it needs to be legible. It needs to actually be accurate. It needs to have a format on the dial that is easy to quickly read. So you don't have complications cluttering it up, stuff like that. Applied indices can fall off and then it makes it harder to read the time. Finally, it needs to be practical. So a good size, and a good weight. For this video, I'm only considering analog watches, no digital. I know that G-Shocks are probably the ultimate field watch. I fully concede that point. But in this video, I'm looking at the traditional field watch, which is analog. Also, I know it can be pretty arbitrary, but I'm going to exclude pilot watches and dive watches. These often look very similar to field watches, but I'm doing my best to exclude them. Also, I'm only including watches that have a website where you can actually order the watch. I mean, some of the watches on this list are like currently out of stock, but I have every reason to believe they will sell more soon. In the future, they're not going out of business. For example, if there's a Kickstarter page from 2018 or something, and that's it, well, that watch is not in my review because they went out of business. They're not making that watch. You can't buy it. However, if this is a company that's been selling watches and they're just out of stock at this exact moment, they're still on the list because 
I believe they will continue to sell that product. So I'm doing my best to only include watches that are available in today's market. To make the video more objective, I developed a scoring system to rate the watches within the price categories. This system is based solely on the specs. Obviously, there's a lot more to a watch than its raw specs and pictures on the internet. However, for field watches, I think that function supersedes the form. It's more appropriate to evaluate the watch solely on specs than with other watch types. I don't care about the hand finishing of the gold rotor, the perlage of the fully milled clasp, or the Zeratsu polish of the outer chamfer. Primarily, I just care if the watch is sturdy and easy to read. At the end of the video, I'll give you the top 10 that's been adjusted because I recognize that a field watch is not just about the specs. You actually do want it to look good. You want the brand to have any sort of history to it. I will take those aspects into account at the end, the more subjective things. The final top 10 is actually kind of a twist. Is the Patek Philippe Aquanaut in the final top 10? I actually don't know, <laughs> totally. As I've adjusted the weights I'm assigning to certain things, such as brand heritage, looks, aesthetics, these sorts of things, the Patek Philippe Aquanaut has gone up and down in and out of that top 10. So you'll have to watch to the end to find out, did the Patek Philippe Aquanaut make the cut? Is that one of the top field watches of all time? I've spilled the beans here. It is a, a really good field watch because <laughs> um, it's so close to that final top 10. Anyway, you'll have to watch or skip to the end to find out my completely unbiased and objective take on the best field watch. Okay, so let's go through the scoring system. If this is overwhelming to you, just looking at this, please skip ahead. It's gonna be probably 10 or 11 minutes for me to go through all this information. But I wanted to clearly explain how I'm scoring these watches. I scored the watches based on how closely their specifications aligned with the use case of a field watch. So you really want it not to break, that's the protection here, that gets 50 points out of 100. Um, you really wanna be able to use it, tell the time, so that's 40 points out of 100. And then practicality is like, is it not gonna interfere, get snagged on things? It needs to basically not be too big, is really the big deal, or too heavy. So let's go into protection here. Um, protection, the risks to the watch. Um, I came up with water intrusion, losing the watch entirely, damaging the movement, and becoming a pocket watch. And we'll start with the first one. Water intrusion is pretty self-explanatory. It's just water resistance. And out of the 15 possible points, um, for 100 meters plus, there's no penalty, no point penalty. 50 meters, you get minus 6 points. 30 meters, you get minus 13, because that's still better than nothing. Okay, the danger of losing the watch really comes down to the strap type that you have. Most watches have a spring bar, and if that spring bar pops off and you have a two-piece strap, a leather strap, that watch is going to fall off. It could fall down a cliff. Um, it could fall into the water. It could... So... NATO is superior because rather than losing the watch, you just get a pocket watch, basically, if that spring bar pops off um, and you can't find it, which is better than losing it entirely. So NATO gets no points off, but non-NATO gets 10 points off. I know most of these watches, you could actually put a NATO on it, but I'm grading the watches based on if you buy it and use it the way that it is right there. Damaging the movement is 15 points off. Um, if your movement is damaged and you can't use it, that's clearly a huge issue. So here are three ways you can protect the movement. You can have start with screw down crown. If there's an impact to the crown area, um, if you have a screw down crown, those forces will transfer to the case rather than to the stem of the movement, thus lowering the risk that you will damage the movement. So push pull crown gets minus five because it doesn't have that protection. Crown guards also protect the movement in the same way. So um, you lose five points if you don't have crown guards. Finally, we have shock resistance here. And I know it says six points because um, I allocated 40% to this. And, and five plus five plus six equals 16, which is too much. But anyway, yeah, don't worry about that. I, I, I fixed it over here. It's just with the percentages and the rounding and everything. That's how it works out. But shock resistance is based on the movement. Quartz movements are way more shock resistant than automatic movements automatic movements can lose they can lose a jewel they can the rotor can get stuck there's things like that so an automatic movement gets minus five points hand winding gets minus four it's a little bit more shock resistant because it doesn't have the rotor and then there are automatic movements that have anti-shock technology so that gets just a minus 
you know, that's, that's a lot better than just a regular automatic. Okay, finally we have in the protection category, protection against becoming a pocket watch. So something that's going to make it so you can't wear the watch on your wrist anymore. The first one is spring bars versus welded lugs. Welded lugs are better. Spring bar can pop off. That's happened to me before and my watch fell on the ground and I had to use it like a pocket watch. I just had to put it in my pocket. It couldn't go on my wrist anymore. Next we have crystal cracking. If that crystal cracks, you could still probably use the watch, but you're gonna baby it a little more, probably put it in your pocket if it's raining because you don't want water to get in, that sort of thing. So um, if the crystal cracks, it's probably a pocket watch. So things that will help prevent the crystal from cracking, the first thing is the case design. If it has raised bezel that, or a recessed crystal, let's call it a recessed, that's what I have on the screen. Recessed crystal is safer than a flush or domed crystal that sits up above the case. So flush or dome gets minus two. The crystal type is important. The harder the crystal, the more likely it is to break. From what I found, mineral and acrylic have essentially the same. They're both highly shadow resistant compared to sapphire. So what you're going to see here is sapphire is minus two. Mineral and acrylic are just minus zero. Lug cracking is also a reason this could become a pocket watch. Can't imagine the forces it would take to actually crack the lugs. Um, not that much force if it's a plastic or resin watch. So that's the basically this is based on the tensile strength. You'll see these percentages are like pretty interesting here. Um, this is just so I looked up the tensile strength of all these different materials. I know titanium can can vary. For example, a lot of these could vary. Steel, depending on the alloy that you're using or whatever. But this is, this is basically what it is. The, the plastic ones are at the bottom. Um, white gold and bronze actually are not very strong materials. Yeah, tantalum is actually less strong than steel. Yeah, there's a reason you don't see tantalum everywhere. It's, it's not as good as steel. Okay, now let's go back out to the utility of the watch. So this is just how easy is it to use. 40 points are allocated between legibility for 36 and then accuracy for four points, but let's start off with legibility. Dial printing gets 14 points here. Um, essentially, the more things that have numbers on them, the better. So if you have all numbers on the dial, one through 24, then there's no penalty. But if you only have numbers one through 12, you get four points off. If there's like, if there's some baton, a mix of batons and numbers for the one through 12s, but for some reason you have the 13 through 24, that's not ideal, so you kind of get a little bit of a penalty here. Um, if you have a mix of Arabics and batons just for the 12s, that's minus 8. And then if there's no Arabic numerals at all, you get minus 14. That's the hardest to read for me and most people. Complications interfere with the ability to read the watch, the basic timekeeping. They give you additional information, but they hinder the purpose of just reading the basic time, which is the most important for a field watch. So each additional complication gets minus five points. Contrast, it should be high contrast. You get penalized if it's not. Minute Arabics, so this is if it says 5, 10, 15, 20 on the outer like chapter ring. That's a bonus, basically, three point bonus. Minute hash marks, some watches just have, um, they'll just, they'll just have the numbers one through 12, but there won't be any hash marks in between it indicating the minutes. The movement watch is an example of this. It gets penalized five points for that. Scratch resistance crystal type. Here is the scratch resistance of the, the, different, the different crystal types. Acrylic and resin are gonna rate very low on this. This is no shock to anybody. Loom, it's better if the watch has loom than if it doesn't, so I'm going to reward watches that have it. It's not super critical on a field watch, but we have loomed. If everything on the dial has loom, that's the best. If it has tritium loom, that's also the best. But if you only have the numbers loomed, but none of the indexes, you know, that's a point off. And then if, if it's just the indexes, but no Arabics, that's harder to read. So that gets two points off. And then if there's no loom, that's three points off. Applied indices can fall off. And so it's better if it's printed. I mean, look at the Tudor Ranger. That's an expensive watch, but they still have printed indices. And it's not because they're cheaping out. They could do applied indices if they wanted to on the Tudor Ranger, but it's better to have printed. Tritium has tubes on the hands as well, so that's a minus three. Movement type accuracy. 
So this is part of the utility of the watch. Is it accurate? So the movement type accuracy, quartz and solar quartz do well, hand winding and automatic. You know, they have much higher deviation in timekeeping from day to day than quartz and solar. So they, they get minus four points there. I know this is a general, if you get to these really fancy watches like your Patek Philippe or whatever, it probably has would have a lower number. I didn't factor that in. The actual scores are computed by a machine. I did not fiddle with them. So if it's an automatic movement, it's minus four points for accuracy compared to a quartz. And finally, if you're still with me, <laughs> practicality, how the watch, you know, the watch not interfering with your coordinated attacks and your communications and everything you need to do running around you know, chopping the firewood, all these things you have to do in the woods. Um, case size, if it's below or above 40 or 37 millimeters, 37 to 40 millimeters is the sweet spot. If you start to go outside of that, you get increasing penalties depending on how far you go outside of that. The case weight is shown here. Um, this is based on the actual density of these materials, which I believe is grams per centimeters cubed. And you can see the, the values here. Plastic actually wins out here pretty strongly. I mean, forged carbon is the best. If all field watches were made of forged carbon, that's probably the best choice, but it's very expensive. But anyway, battery changes here. It's annoying to change the battery. That impacts the practicality of the watch. So quartz gets minus two, whereas solar quartz hand winding and automatic don't have any battery change penalty. That was my scoring system. If you're an analytical person, you may have seen some flaws. I'm sure there's some flaws in this. It's not perfect. But this was the best I could think of to try to match the watch to the use case of field watch. And this is a scoring system I used throughout the video on all these watches. Top field watches under $200. Long last, we're at the actual watches. So... Here's my rating of all the watches under $200. I'm going to start off with the top five. So in fifth place is the Miltado Military. This 36 millimeter watch costs about 80 bucks. And in my scoring system, it gets a score of 79. Things that it has really going well for it are the dial layout. It's really nice to have all these numerals on here. Um, it's steel. There's a lot going for it. I really like the green dial. At 36 millimeters, it's a little bit small for me, but some people will actually prefer that. It has fairly good protection here. It has a screw down crown. Could be better protection. In number four, we have the Escapement Time SR920SW. This 38 millimeter watch costs $51. And as I showed previously, this was my top pick for specs to price. The specs of 79 are really great. Um, you're not going to see many watches with that high specs once we get higher in price category even. So this is really good. Quartz helps us out a ton. Actually, all the top five are quartz. I didn't explain exactly in my scoring system, but due to several factors, automatic movements are 10 points below quartz. One, they're less accurate. Two, they're more prone to damage from shock. And then three, they're just thicker. When you compare a quartz to an automatic in the field watch scenario, the quartz is a lot better for the purpose of fighting the zombies in the woods. <laughs> Again, the, everything has to be taken in that context that we're, we're looking for a really robust, reliable watch here. So that's the escapement time. In number three, I didn't realize this was even a watch until I did this video, the 511 Pathfinder. And of course, it's the product photos. It looks amazing. So this one has excellent protection, 41. This is the best protection so far. Um, it gets really good protection. Well, the crown guards, the other ones had screw down. So that's screw down and crown guard both get five points. So if you have both, there's no minus five here. You get a zero, but this has a push pull. So, so I guess that's, that's the same. Where it really excels against the other two we saw is from the recessed mineral crystal. So in other words, this bezel here is above the crystal. So if you hit your watch into something, the bezel's going to hit it, not the crystal. There are very few, few there are very few field watches that actually do this. Really surprisingly, most field watches have a flush or a domed crystal. But anyway, this one has better protection. Um, total score of 80. And you'll see as we go on, 80 is a very high score in my scoring system. If a watch has an 80, that means it is really good for the purpose of 
the coordinated attacks in the woods with your, your buddies. 5.11, also, I didn't mention this, it's 42 millimeter and it costs 95 bucks. In number two, in my top five, is the Redwood Monsoon. I'll be honest, when I look at it, it doesn't really get me that excited. Um, this watch is 40 millimeters, $179. It's at the, at the upper end of that price range here for this price category. It's got a screw down crown. It comes on a NATO strap. All these come on NATO straps in the top five here. Um, this is the first one we've seen with the solar quartz. Solar gets a little bit of benefit over regular quartz because you don't have to change a battery. So actually it gets a couple points here at the bottom of my scoring system here. For practicality, you don't have to change a battery on a solar power. And all these watches in the top five have 100 meters or more of water resistance. In number one, the number one field watch under $200 is the Bertucci Construction King. So this watch gets a score of 50 for protection. In my scoring system, there is no better protection than what this watch has. And so what, what is it? What does it have? It has 100 meters water resistance. It is on a NATO strap and it has welded lugs. So welded lugs is what I called there being a fixed bar between the lugs. You cannot remove it. It's not a spring bar. Most watches between the lugs have this spring bar that is just held by tension, it can pop off if there's tor if there's any sort of force on it. And this has happened to me. The spring bar pops off and your watch will fall off your wrist if you have a one-piece strap. Um, if you have a two-piece strap, then it's going to flop around all stupid and you'll probably just put it in your pocket because it's kind of goofy flopping around. This watch has uh, fixed lug bars or welded lugs, so it will not do that. All right. Impact risk is quartz. Quartz has the least impact risk of the movement types. Screw down crown and crown guards, and it's at that four o'clock position. So I, four o'clock position isn't factored in the score, but this is awesome. Um, recessed mineral crystal. So the and and on Bertucci they really raise it up. The bezel is really high against the, um, in comparison to the crystal. So you're not going to be hitting that crystal into anything. But even if you did the mineral, I covered this in my in my scoring overview. Mineral is the strongest. Mineral and acrylic both have high resistance against shattering because they're, they're not as hard as, as the sapphire crystal. Sapphire crystal is much more prone to shatter when there is a hard impact on it. And then case strength of steel, you know, other materials would also make it in here. Forged carbon or titanium also have high strength, tensile strength. But anyway, this is perfect, perfect protection for the watch. I don't know any other technologies you could add to this to make it more protected. So Bertucci knocked it out of the park there. In terms of the utility here, um, it's got one through 24 hours on the dial. So you've got the, your military time and your standard time, all with numbers there that you can see easily. However, it doesn't have any minutes. So it doesn't have like 05, 010, 015, around the edge. So that was a minus three for that. It's very minor, you see, I mean, this is a great score. 90 is awesome. Uh, this is the highest score. There, there's one or two other watches, I believe, that also have the same score. But this is the highest score you will see in the scoring system. It could obviously be higher because they could have the minute Arabics. Scratch resistance. Uh, mineral crystal gets a minus one. Sapphire gets a zero here because sapphire is more scratch resistant than mineral crystal. Loomed indexes, no Arabics. So basically... It's just the little squares on the outside and that triangle that have loom. So you can see after dark, the numbers are not loomed. I think that's not as good as if all of it was loomed. So that's why it's a minus two. All of these scores are basically, if you have this option versus this option, which is better. And obviously it would be better if everything was loomed. So that's why it lost points there. The case weight loses two points down here. Oh, I, I skipped some other things. It's printed indices rather than applied. Printed can't fall off, applied can. Movement accuracy, quartz, that's the best there is, is quartz or solar quartz. Anything 37 millimeters to 40 millimeters does not get a size penalty on my system. And then the case weight is minus two for steel. Steel is heavier than titanium. It's heavier than forged carbon. Um, it's heavier than plastic. It's heavier than... And, and these, these points, if you didn't see the scoring thing, it's all based on their actual density of the materials. So steel gets a minus two. And then you have to do change a battery, so that's minus two. If this was a solar quartz, then it would have two more points here. It'd be a 92 instead of a 90. Those are my top five. 
These are all great options for field watches. Now I'm going to take this moment to show you an overview of what else there is. Out of the 84 watches in the under $200 price category, I actually recommend 49. So that's more than half. I recommend more than half of these watches. That's really incredible. As you see in higher price tiers, I do not recommend nearly so high a percentage. But yeah, it looks like 5, 10, 15, 20, 21. I recommend 21 of these watches as is, as they are. And then these yellow here, the yellow ones, um, I recommend it if you swap the standard strap it's on for a NATO. And so some of these, you'll see, they already are on a NATO, so I can't recommend it. Now I'm going to show you everything that there is to see in this price category. We already saw the top five. You've already seen all these. Next we have Bertucci, Redwood, Bowderry, Bertucci, MWC, San Martin, Trigalux, Kime, Redwood, Alba, Baltany, Timex, Timex, Merci, Timex. So the point is, you see a watch you like, that'll compel you to keep watching as I go through these one by one and explain their scores. Redune, 111, Tandorio, Naval Watch, Timex Expedition Camper. Timex, Hemel, Timex, Smart Turnout, Smith & Bradley, there's a lot of Timex. Tandorio, Baltany, Pagani, Thorn, Zestrian. Cassio Forster, Wanger, Loris, Prezidis, Maven. Skagen, Valbart, Timex, Spadel, Timex. Cassio, Prezidis, Islander, Cassio, L.L. Bean. Kind of low there, L.L. Bean. Watch to see why. MDC, TPW, Rolls Timmy, Cassio, Columbia Cross Trails. The last recommended one, Timex. From here on out, I do not recommend. Timex, Bernie, Dialfendi, Rolls Timmy again. <laughs> Santo, Pegude, Caluz, Timex, Cassio. MDMT, Triwa, Fossil, Slava, Bernie. Timex, Timex, Sterling, Aragon, Bulova. Cassio, Seiko. There's your only Seiko. Why did it score so low? You'll have to watch to, to find out, but this is the overview so you know what's coming. You know that the Seiko is going to be towards the end of the watches. Gustav Becker, Swatch, Sterling, Invicta, Matthew Tussaud, Svalbard, and Timex. Man, Timex was throughout that whole spectrum. If that was enough of an overview of the under $200 category, just use the timestamp in the description to skip ahead now to the $200 to $500 category. But if you want to find out all the nuances with these watches, keep watching. I, I talk about every single one of these watches. Some of them I really breeze through, but you know, if it's interesting, I'll, I'll talk about it. The choice is yours. Continuing on, um, this Bertucci A2 SEL, 40 millimeter watch, costs 175 bucks, and it gets a score of 87. If you're paying attention, you'll notice, hey, that should have been in the top five based on score. Th this is a bigger deal in the next price category up where Bertucci was like four of the top five, but I thought that wasn't very interesting. So I, I made the rule that only you can only have one watch from a brand in the top five. So there has to be five brands in the top five. So you'll see that in the next price category as well. But here we are, Bertucci A2 SEL. Again, perfect protection score. And um, it loses five points for this complication here of the backlight. I could have gone either way on this backlight here because it, it doesn't interfere with the legibility of the watch, which is the criticism of complications is that they interfere with the ability to tell the basic time. This does not do that, but it is an extra thing on the outside. So I kind of just had to decide um, if it's an extra thing sticking on the outside of the case, we'll give it the complication penalty. This could be the best field watch. I'm definitely gonna pick one of these up because this is sweet. Um, in addition to the backlight, it has, it has loom on the little arrows on the outside. So even if you broke your, your electroluminescent thing, you're still gonna even have loom. So that's crazy. Next we have the Redwood Kilroy. I really like how this one looks better than the Monsoon on that previous slide there. Um, the Monsoon, I didn't mention it, has the 24 hour markings, the military marking times on the very outside. This one has them kind of in that traditional inner ring. But this is a Solar Quartz. I think Solar is really sweet for a field watch. Solar Quartz is just really excellent for a field watch, but you don't really see it very much. So Redwood, I've never heard about them. I actually haven't even seen any videos on them or anything, but based on specs alone, there's this Redwood Kilroy really gets up there. Score of 80, like I said, there, there aren't a ton of watches with a score of 80 or more. There's a small handful, really. 
Continuing on, here's the Bowderry Voyager Titanium Field. Made of titanium. Clearly modeled after the Bertucci, but they do a few things that are different. They, You see the case shape is a little different. Next to the Bertucci, the Bertucci's more rounded. This has a little bit of angles here. Um, this Bowderry is really cool, and people really like it. It's a $97 watch. It's 40 millimeters. It's a great size. Um, score of 78 on my scoring system. This is a solid field watch choice. I don't pref I prefer not to have any complications. If it didn't have the complication, this this would be um, an 83, very solid. But you know, it's a solid watch. Next, we have the Bertucci DX3 Field. This is our first plastic watch, and it shows how well it's fiber reinforced polymer, slightly better than plastic, I think. For tensile strength, what I found is that fiber reinforced polymer is slightly better than plastic. Fiber reinforced polymer is still not as strong as zinc alloy, for example. And we all kind of know that, that it's not going to be the strongest. So yeah, it's, it's got a score of 78. Very respectable score for something like this. It's got the crown guards fully guarded there. You're not going to hit this. Um, you're not going to hit the crown on anything and damage the movement inside. This is awesome. And they come in really fun colors like this. And it's only 75 bucks. Bertucci is killing it with these field watches. They set out to make a really rugged field watch, and they really did. We've got 330 watches to go through. These guys are at the absolute top, just consistently. Bertucci kills it. A little bit of a spoiler, because they're in the next price category as well. Next, we have the MWC G10 BH. These letters always stand for something. I don't know what that means exactly, but they have a ton of models with very subtle differences. This one is plain steel. It looks like it's been bead blasted. And while it looks like it has a recessed crystal, like it might because the bezel raises up around, around the crystal, it actually does not have a raised crystal. Um, it is flush. So they, they show it on the side and you can see that crystal at the very top. So it's not getting any impact um, protection from the bezel there. But it does have the crown guards. It does have a screw down crown. It is quartz which doesn't get people excited in their feels or whatever, but it is, it is more robust. It is more appropriate for fighting the zombies in the apocalypse. There is a complication here of the date. So, score of 77. Next we have the San Martin SN0137G. Very standard looking G10 style field watch here. It looks great. Um, they screw down the crown, they gave it crown guards. Very solid. This may be the first automatic. Oh no, okay, the Bowderry. Bowderry was the first automatic we saw. San Martin is another automatic. We're gonna see a ton of automatic movements in this um, video. And like I said, they're just not as robust as quartz. There's really no arguing that. Nobody's ever tried to argue it. But at the same time, automatics are what people wanna buy and you can charge a lot more for them. So it, it makes sense why watchmakers wanna put them in there because then they can up that price and people will pay a higher price for it. This also doesn't have any crystal protection. We're going to see that for almost all the watches. It's very rare to have the recessed crystal. But this has a score of 77. Next is the Trigolux F100 Parabellum. Is it like a Ford F100? or like Ford doesn't make an F100. I think they used to. But anyway, this is a Mexican brand of watch, I believe. And you can't really order it in the U.S., supposedly. You could probably get them on eBay. But this has a score of 75. It actually looks pretty cool to me. I like it. If you're gonna do the faux loom, I think it's nice to do it really dark like this and just go all the way in. I think it looks really cool. Next is the Kimei Cooper Pathfinder. It's a 38 millimeter watch, $118, score of 75. It does not, oh, it does have crown guards. You can't really see it in the shadow here, but there's crown guards there. Got the mineral crystal, which I prefer due to its higher shatter resistance than the sapphire. Uh, for a field watch, I prefer that. And then the score is $75. This looks pretty cool. It lost, it lost some points because it doesn't have all the numbers on here. It's got a mix of like symbols and numbers. So it's not as legible as if it had all the numbers on there. It doesn't have the minutes, it doesn't have the military time. Next we have another Redwood. This is the Redwood Field V3. I think this is their full catalog here at this point of field watches. But you'll see this one has, it's a little bit more minimalist. It, it's missing some of the numbers here. Gives it that kind of explorer look, if you will. 
and it's only got loom pips on the four cardinal directions. There's there's not much loom on this thing. It is a solar movement again, which I really really like. I I would love to take a look at one of these and try it on, um, see what it feels like because solar is is really nice for a field watch. But yeah, score seventy two, very respectable. Next we have the Alba AXHL seventy five X one Workman's Analog. It's a 40 millimeter watch, $199, so just at the top. $1 more and it'd be in the next price category, so it's a, it's a, um, it cut its weight just to get down into this one, in this price category. Very interesting watch. I think it looks ugly, personally. It's not my style. It's got kind of a, it's, it's a dated look to it here. The bracelet looks like garbage. But yeah, the score is 71. It's got the crown guards, which will help with the resilience of the watch. It protects the, the movement. And you've got the screw down crown as well on top of that. You've got great water resistance. It has that date complication. From what I could tell, it has no loom. And this is a good time to mention, I had to go with the product listings and also just searching for loom shots. So I would just search for the model number with the word loom and see if I see any images of the loom. And I could not find any for this. There might be loom on these hands, but I have a watch right here that has hands that look like that, that have little loom, looks like loom plots on there, but there's no loom on this thing. So I can't assume. If it doesn't say loom on their product listing, I'm saying no loom. Sometimes they say there's loom on the hands and that's it. Then I say there's only loomed hands. This didn't say loomed anything. Uh, 70, score of 71. If it had loom, add three points to the score. Loom is not a huge factor. No loom at all is only three points off in my scoring system. I don't think it's that critical. If you really needed to, you could like use the stars, just let your eyes adjust and see the time. I don't think it's that critical. It is better to have it, so it does get some points, but it doesn't get a ton of points. Next is the Baltany Military Watch. This is a 39 millimeter watch with 100 meters water resistance. It's already on a NATO, which is great. Um, it is an automatic, so it lost 10 points for that. So it would have been an 80 if it was a quartz. It does have that complication there, but this is a solid choice. I don't know about the quality on this one. It's a Chinese watch. These scores are based solely on, you know, the materials and the cosmetic features that I can see. So I don't know about the build quality, that sort of thing. That was not factored into this test. So you obviously need to take that into consideration and it will be incorporated at the end of the video when I do the top 10, but I didn't do that for all 330 watches. I would probably go insane if I tried to do that for every single one of these. Instead, I just entered the stats and boom, here's the score. And for this Baltany military watch, it's scoring pretty well, 70 points. Next we have the Timex Expedition Northfield Solar 36 millimeters, costs 150 bucks. That small 36 millimeter size is okay. It's not the best. I think it's better if it's a little bit bigger. 36 is a little small, especially for modern day standards, it's a little small, but it's also, the smaller it gets, the harder it is to read the time. This is a 36 that I have on. Um, this gets a score of 69, totally fine. And it doesn't, it's not even on a NATO. You put it on a NATO and it's even better. So this is a solid field watch right here. Solar powered field watch. Next, we have the Timex Vietnam Camper, which I am wearing on my wrist. It cost me $80. I got it on eBay. Um, if you're looking for it, that's where I'd look for it. But it has a push-pull crown, no crown guards. It has an acrylic crystal. Acrylic is actually not that bad, folks, for field watch. It really is not. It will survive an impact that a sapphire crystal will not survive. I've found tons and tons of articles on this. This is just the, the facts. Uh, sapphire shatters a lot easier. So don't you worry about your acrylic crystals. Those are fine for a field watch. But yeah, it gets a score of 69, totally fine. Next we have the Merci LMM01 Original Quartz. The size is 38 millimeters and it costs $137. And the total score is 66. So totally respectable. I had never heard of this brand Merci before. And it really, I really like it because it kind of reminds me of school. And maybe some people would hate it because it reminds them of school. I like it. So I'm thinking about getting one of these. It's very cool. With a score of 66, it's a respectable field watch, in my opinion. This is a good time for me to kind of point out. 66 is the lowest number I recommend. 
Anything lower than a 66, I do not recommend it as a field watch for fighting the zombies in the apocalypse with your friends with the coordinated attacks in the woods. You don't know when you're going to see your wife and kids anymore, and you just have to survive. So I recommend this for that purpose. It doesn't have loom, but again, loom is not that critical to the function of the watch. Next, we have the Timex Expedition North Sierra Solar. It's a 40 millimeter watch. The price is $159. It's not on a NATO, but it still meets that recommendation um, threshold. And next, the Redune G10 RA03. This is only 54 bucks. It's a very small watch at 35 millimeters. So if you're gonna order it, just know that ahead of time, it's small. Um, it has a water resistance of 50 meters, which is not great, and push-pull, no crown guards. So th that's really hurting it. All those three things together are 16 points. So that, that really impacts the score when you have less than 100 meters water resistance, and then you also have push-pull and no crown guards. So other than that, it's really solid. So screw down the crown, put on 100 meters. I think just those two things alone added 11 points, put it to a 77 much more competitive with those other options. But as you can see, there are better options than this one. And that's kind of the point of all this, is you can see, well, that one looks pretty good. Oh wait, there's other ones ahead of it that actually do have a screw down. But this still technically is recommended. Next, we have the 111 SW2 Solar. This is the first watch so far that I don't recommend that you take it out of the box and fight the zombies with it. And why is that? Let's go over it real quick. Um, it's not on a NATO. NATO is 10 points, which seems, ext it, it, when I think about it, I'm like, is NATO really that important? And it actually is. As I went through the scoring system, the risk is that you lose your watch entirely. If you have a one piece strap and the spring bar breaks, that watch could fall into a lake. It could fall down a cliff. The part that the NATO is important is just so you don't actually lose the watch itself. And that is pretty critical. You know, given the premise that we set out from the beginning, that you need this watch to survive, you need it to tell a good time, or you or your buddy's lives are in danger if you are not able to do your coordinated attacks at the same time, you need this timepiece. I mean, that's kind of the premise of a field watch, is that it is, it is something you are issued which is an element of your survival. I won't say it's the most critical element of your survival, but it is something that will help you either live or die. That's the point of the field watch. So the NATO is very important. It's worth 10% of the total score. And yes, you can put it on a NATO and then it's a recommended watch, in my opinion, even with the plastic. Plastic's actually not all that bad because then it has practical benefits down here at the bottom. The plastic is very, very light. So it's not as strong, but it is a very light. And what, are you really gonna break the lugs hitting it against something? Probably not. Next we have the Tandorio Titanium Another small one, this is 36 millimeters. Very cheap, it's $85. That's the benefit of the Chinese watches. They steal other people's designs. Sorry for saying steal. They take other people's designs, other people's IP, and then they produce it cheaper. They don't have the brand heritage, so the only way they can compete is by lowering the cost significantly and raising the specs. So this is titanium for $85. It's also an automatic movement. Like, the mind kind of boggles at what they're able to do for the money. But does that make it the best field watch on the planet? Well, it makes it okay. It's a 65, put it on a NATO and you're okay. We haven't seen any Seikos yet. So yeah, it's better than the Seiko. A lot better than the Seiko, <laughs> spoiler alert. But anyway, here's the Naval Watch Mill 01B US Force. Very cool look to this one. Um, it's got a date, which I think is totally unnecessary. It's already on a NATO, so it's under my, my recommends threshold. But if they lost the date, it would be. If they gave it more water resistance, it would be recommended. If they gave it a screw down crown, it would be recommended. All these things add up and it's got a, it's got a few things going wrong, but you'll see as we go on, watches are gonna have to do multiple things to be recommended. This one, it only has like, it could just fix one of these things in my opinion, and then it's a better field watch for actual use. Wearing around town, it's fine. The watch is fine, there's nothing wrong with it. Most of the watches on this list are perfectly fine for your everyday watch. I'm talking about the extreme scenario, which is the best for the extreme scenario, and this isn't it. Finally, we have the Timex Expedition Camper. This has a score of 64. It's not on a NATO, so if you put it on a NATO, I recommend this one. Um, it actually has good loom on it. It has Indiglo. This may be the first Indiglo we've seen. Um, 
I decided not to give Indiglo a complication penalty because Indiglo is Timex's feature of electroluminescent backlighting. So that whole dial will glow blue when you, when you push on the crown. The way they've integrated it in, into the crown, into just the side of that, there's no extra buttons on the outside or anything. So for me, that's not considered a complication. Timex Indiglo is not a complication even though it is something extra beyond basic timekeeping because the way they integrated it, I just consider it to be loom. Yeah, this is actually a cool watch. It's uh, very lightweight with the plastic and it has a great dial format. This is a contender and you can just put it on a NATO and I think you're all set for fighting the zombies. Next we have the famous Timex Weekender. I've seen people recommend this one they always mention the 30 meters water resistance, and that's something that gives them heartburn. It gives me heartburn as well. I think the watch is a solid recommend if they just fix the water resistance. There's no crown guards, it's a push-pull crown, so it loses protection there. It gains protection by having a recessed crystal. As I mentioned before, that's kind of a rare feature to see. So this bezel does rise above the level of the crystal, offering that protection. The dial layout is fantastic. There's no date to have to worry about setting or to clutter up while you're trying to read it, preventing you from seeing the three o'clock or the 1500. This one would be a recommend if they just bumped this up to 50. Let's see, 50 meters gets you minus six, 30 meters gets you minus 13. So what is that difference? Seven points? Yeah, add seven points on here. You have 70, solid pick. Solid pick of the field watch if they just upped it to 50 meters, water resistance and other people have said the exact same thing that I'm saying. So the scoring system actually does bear that out. Still a very cool watch. It has that Indiglo that I love. Next we have the Hemel Chevron. This 40 millimeter watch costs $199. $199. Again, squeaking in under the $200 cap for this price segment. Um, it's not on a NATO. It looks like it, but it's not. It's got the complication. It just doesn't, it just doesn't um, make the cut. 63, score 63. On a NATO, you could use it. Next, we have the Timex Field Post Solar. It's a 41 millimeter watch with a price of $169. It's got a chunky push-pull crown and crown guards. The crown guards protect the movement. That's good. Appreciate that. It falls below my recommendation level, but you put it on a NATO and it's okay. I recommend it. Next, we have the Smart Turnout Military Watch. Smart Turnout, what is that? I think this may be kind of a UK thing. Um, it's $187, and it's a 36 millimeter watch. That price seems kind of high for what you're getting here, I'll be honest. But yeah, there's a complication here of the date. It does have crown guards, that's good. Otherwise, push-pull, crown. Just didn't quite make the cut. It's 62, it's already on in NATO, so you can't, there's no save in this one. It's just not a recommend for fighting those zombies. There's no loom on it. It's still a field watch, but it's just not making the cut. Smith & Bradley Discovery, micro brand, 99 bucks. They're not charging crazy price for this. It looks okay, but when you dig in, it's uninspiring. There's, um, it could have more water resistance. It could have a screw down crown. If they did that, if they gave it 100 meters water resistance and a screw down crown, I would recommend it for the apocalypse. Right now, I do not score 62. All right, continuing on. Tandorio 39 millimeter steel. I don't know what they, there's no model to this that I could tell. 47 bucks, this is very cheap. 39 millimeters, uh, score 62. So if you throw it on a NATO, it's still recommended. Next is the Baltany Dirty Dozen S2032. The size is 39 millimeters and the price is 121. I think this is the first Dirty Dozen I've seen. I give the watch a complication penalty for this uh, six o'clock small seconds because you don't have the six anymore. And I think it's just a distraction. I, I know that it's historically accurate. I know that these watches literally were used in war, but that doesn't necessarily make it superior. The six would be better there rather than the small seconds. Just put the second hand on the central pinion. Roast me if I'm totally ignorant. There's probably some reason why they had the small seconds there. They thought it was better than having the second hand on the central pinion. I don't know what that is. I would prefer it on the central pinion and then you get all the numbers on the dial. Score 61, so I recommend it on a NATO, but not as it currently is. Pagani Design PD 1717. 38 millimeter watch for 56 bucks. It's clearly 
trying to be like the Longines spirit. Got the little Arabic numerals for the minutes on the outer perimeter. I love that. 30 down here and 35. I love to see that on the dial. It just blends right in. You don't have to do any dramatic thing. You can just put those little numbers there and it, at least it greatly pleases me. So since it's my video, that's what I, why I gave it some points there. Uh, I think it's easier to read the time. But total score of 61, so put it on a NATO strap and it's fine. Next, the Thorn A11, SHY034. This is an homage to Prezidis, which is a micro brand. It's kind of funny they're homaging this little micro brand. But what's not so funny is that they did what the Prezidis did, but they did it way better. It's got a screw down crown. It's got 100 meters water resistance. It's made of titanium. It's $85 cheaper. Boom. All those things. Way better than the than the Prezidis. Prezidis has 50. It has steel. It has push-pull. The Chinese watchmakers are really able to eat the lunch of Western watchmakers when they do this kind of stuff. Basically, what it should tell the Western watchmakers is just up your game. You know, screw down the crown. All these sorts of things. I think Western watchmakers, if you make a superior product, then you're totally going to defeat the competition from the Chinese here. And the Chinese are probably making your watch anyway, so just up the specs a little bit, and boom, you're not going to be losing losing money to Thorn A11. People will look at the Prezidis and the Thorn and they'll say, well, I'm not a millionaire, and this Thorn is, has better specs. I'll just go with the Thorn. I really like how it looks. So the way to combat this, I, I believe, is to up your specs, Prezidis. Just get better specs on that watch, and I don't think you're going to have as much of a threat from the Chinese watches. The, the Prezidis is already $85 more, so it's tough. I don't, I'm not going to pretend I know how to, um, how to compete with the Chinese here. Maybe it can't be done. But anyway, it's, this one's 115 bucks, 36 millimeters, so it's a little, little watch, but it's good. And it score 61. If you put it on NATO, it's still recommended. Sestrian. What is this watch? What is Sestrian? I never heard of it. It's 151 bucks, and... If you like Hamilton, which I do, I have a Hamilton right here. I only have four field watches, but here's the Hamilton um, khaki field automatic. This Chester is has that same dial layout, but it's hundreds of dollars cheaper. It has a screw down crown, which the Hamilton doesn't have. This is superior specs to the Hamilton. Just looking at straight specs, obviously it's going to have like a Seiko NH35 or something, whereas this has an ETA movement, 2824 or whatever it has in it. I'm not going to get into all that because you know what? When you're fighting for your life in the woods, nobody cares if you have an ETA 2824 or you have a Seiko NH35. Actually, what's a lot better is just a Japanese quartz movement. Just put a Japanese quartz in there and you're going to do so much better in terms of having that watch survive you chopping the wood in the... I love... It's got all the... 1 through 12, it's got 13 through 24 here. It looks great. It has loom on all these things. It has looms on these little dots on the outsides. It has loom on the numbers. It has loom on the hands. It has loom at the end of the seconds. I don't care for the date there, but this is a solid choice. And yeah, bracelet is a little weird for a field watch, but if you put it on a NATO, I recommend this for fighting the zombies. So this is a viable option. Do some research on Cestrian. I don't know anything about them, but their watch looks really cool. Continuing on, we have the Casio Forester, 36 bucks, 42. So it is, it looks like it wears a little bit large. So these are all in proportion to each other. When I measured the 42, I did it diagonally here. It's right next to this 35 millimeter. So maybe that's why it looks so big. For 36 bucks, I think you're getting a lot of watch. It's a resin case. It's a resin glass crystal, which I still think is less shatter prone than Sapphire. From what I can tell on the internet, reading these things, it has a back, it has a light. Um, it has water resistance of 100 meters. Look, if Casio Forester can do this for 36 bucks, why are any of these watches not putting in the gaskets that are needed to get 100 meters of water resistance? This is a legitimate question. But water resistance, why are we seeing 30 meters ever if Casio Forester can do it? And I know, okay, Casio does things no other watch brand can do. They somehow make these extremely cheap watches that are very robust. I don't know how they do that. Casio, you're amazing. You do kind of set the bar for people because $36 and you have 100 meters water resistance. 
I actually recommend this for the Apocalypse if you put it on a NATO. I think this is great. Even with the fact that you have the light, I, I took five points off for that light and for the date. And still, this is doing great. And it's $36. Oof, they're setting that bar really high for the other watch brands. Continuing on is the Wenger, or Wenger Avenue. It's 190 bucks, it's 35 millimeters, so one of the smaller field watches we see at all. Um, probably works well for women and men, but yeah, score 60. Next we have the Loris RB877CX9, $123, it's 37 millimeters. People really like this one. I think it's deserved. If you put it on a NATO strap, I recommend it as a field watch for the apocalypse. I think it is strong. It only has 50 meters of water resistance. It would really help them if they upped that. I really, and then push pull crown, but it does have crown guards, which you might even say is better than having a screw down crown. In fact, I tried to score it that way. It just, due to rounding, they kind of came out, they both came out as five points. It's some kind of protection for that movement, which is really important. But yeah, it's helped out by the courts. A myth busting is that, oh, an automatic is the best. The only way an automatic movement is better than a quartz is if there's an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, that lock, knocks out your electronics. But how many times in the history of war has there been an EMP? Like, legitimately. Loris, $123, 37 millimeters, score 59. Throw it on a NATO and you're good. Prezidis A11 Origin. This watch is $195, it's 40 millimeters, it's a total score of 59. And as I mentioned before, with that thorn, it's, it's steel, it has 50 meters water resistance and a push-pull crown. Those three things. Oh, and the price. Four things. It's just, it didn't do as well as the thorn. So there you go. Next is Maven. Maven MUS01. Has anyone heard of this brand? If you've heard of this brand, please let me know in the comments. Looks good. The dial layout, 34 out of 40 points. It did well in terms of utility. No problems there. Protection is where it lost a ton of points. 30 meters water resistance. Ouch. Push-pull crown, no crown guards. Bam, that loses half your points right there. And then it is on a NATO strap, but it does have a spring bar in there. I, double, I double-checked. It is not a fixed lug bar or a welded lug, however you want to call it. It's not a recessed crystal. It's a sapphire crystal, which shatters easier than acrylic or mineral. All these things together, it's, it's less than half of its protection points that it could have. It's not a very well-protected watch. And that really is what contributes here to the low score. Next we have the Skagen Grenon Solar, is a 37 millimeter watch, $137. Um, the interesting thing about this, I said it has crown guards just so it didn't have the penalty of a vulnerable crown. The crown is hidden on this one, so there's no penalty. So it doesn't have crown guards, but there's the crown is hidden away. This is a solar watch, very cool. It actually does have military time here on the dial. It just didn't do that great on my scoring system. Svalbard Elementary, AA48. Price of $140, size 41. 50 meters water resistance, not so great. Unprotected push-pull crown, score 59. Timex Welton Trench Watch, $95. 30 meters water resistance, why Timex? Why? Casio did it for $34. So the Welton would be a recommend if they if they fix that water resistance. The um, lugs here are actually Single piece, fixed lug bar. So that's cool, but didn't save it. Score 58. Next we have the Spadal Solar, Solar Power Nurse Watch. Price on this is $75. It's a 38 millimeter watch. So great size for a lot of people. Um, great field watch size. I think that's the ideal field watch size is 38. I really do. 50 meters water resistance, push pull crown, no crown guards. Score 58. Timex Field Post Mechanical. Ah, we're getting into the pink territory here with the scores. This watch is $114 and it's 38 millimeters in size. It's not on a NATO, but you could put it on a NATO, obviously. Hand wind gets a little bit more impact risk. Really, the only reason there's so many recommended watches, or, or watches you could put on a NATO and still recommended, in this price category is because there's so many quartz. Once we go up in price, so many more are going to be hand wind or they're going to be automatic, and that's really going to hurt them because this looks like a straight up field watch. You know, the dial looks really good on this one. Where it's losing points is in the protection here. Um, and part of that is that the hand wind or automatic movements are just more susceptible to damage from impact. Score 57. Casio MTPS 120L 3AV. It's a solar movement. Um, you've got your day and date there. And oh, you do actually have some Arabic numerals here. 30, 15, 
45. That's all you get. I don't think that was enough to give it. Oh, I did give it credit. Some minute Arabics. Anyway, you've got your military time, normal time. Put it on a, on a NATO and I think it's okay. Now, the Presidus Jungle Field OG. It's very small. It's a 34 millimeter. That's as small as you're going to see. 50 meters water resistance. That's, that's rough. Push pull crown. Could you take it to the apocalypse? Put it on NATO and you can. Islander ISL 82. $185, 39 millimeter watch. Looks good. Score 57. Casio HGA 600B slash 1BV. I counted these bull bars as um, crystal protection. So where it says recessed, that the glass is protected there. Um, this has a total score of 57. LL Bean, Katadin Field Watch. Score 57. Some things to note about this is that Okay, it's quartz. That's good. I actually think quartz is best for a field watch. Now, it doesn't have any loom, and it's got the date complication there. There's no protection for the crown. It's not screw down. It's a push-pull, and uh, there's no crown guards. Is it viable? Yeah, kind of. Put it on a NATO, but there are a lot of better options. MDC Infantry, 29 bucks. Man, why get this when you can get the Casio, though? There's a Casio that's better than this. So this is like... Chinese trying to be as cheap as possible. And um, yeah, what did they do here? It's actually steel. This is a steel watch for 29 bucks. That's kind of impressive. I, I actually am impressed with that. Um, but it doesn't do as well as that Casio we saw earlier. Push pull crown, no crown guards. Oh, day date, that's probably part of the reason. Next is TPW Field Watch, $6. This is the cheapest watch on the whole list, 42 millimeters. When I did that price to specs ratio, um, comparison. I just, at first I just did a straight formula. Hey, what are the best price to specs? And I got all kinds of this stuff, you know, TPW and MDC infantry. And what I had to do is I had to cut it off and only take the ones that go over my, my recommend threshold. So 57 was too low, you know, 30 meters or less of water resistance. Who could recommend that? So th they didn't make the cut, obviously. Anyway, this one's made of a zinc alloy case. So here's where you're getting some funny stuff going on. Next, we have another zinc alloy offering from Rolls Timmy. Have you ever heard of Rolls Timmy? If you have, let me know. I don't know what's going on there. They have the, the hammer, like the Soviet hammer as a counterbalance on the second hand. But yeah, this scored 57 points, but it's only $36. It's really not that great, but it did as well as that LL Bean. Rolls Timmy, you're on par with LL Bean. That's part of the point of this, is just to be like, to just to show. Okay, you think your LL Bean's so great for $199? You can get an equivalent field watch, specs-wise, in my opinion, for $36. All right, Casio MTP E715. Steel watch from Casio, $84. 43 millimeters. I don't know where they're measuring the 43. I bet this is pretty big. Score of 56. Next is a watch I actually have, which is the Columbia Cross Trails. There we are. There's the right way up. $68. I think I paid $50. Size of 44. It's a, um, it's got a water resistance of 50 meters, which isn't great. Um, this is one of those ones where I would say, oh, I recommend it if you can put it on a NATO, but I don't think you actually can. These lugs are so tiny. I don't think a NATO strap's going to go through there. I don't think that's a viable option on this watch. So that's something to keep in mind. You can't always put these things on a NATO. But yeah, the score of 56, it's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. I thought this would score so horribly. It, it actually did okay. It does have crown guards over here, for example. The plastic watch, the bezel does not turn. There's no loom. But it's actually kind of okay. The plastic is really nice. A, pl a plastic watch and a field watch is not that bad. It feels really nice to have such a light watch on when you're actually doing things outdoors. All right, next we have the Timex Expedition Metal. They say metal because it is a brass watch. Um, not brass like in the, I'm gonna show it off on Instagram, just brass like it's really cheap, so let's do brass, it's cheaper than steel. Which is funny because they charge a premium for brass when you're doing it for Instagram, but if it's like one of these budget watches, they use brass as a way to cut costs and actually lower the price. It's just funny how that works out. But yeah, this has solid dial. It's really the protection category that where it loses points here. Um, 
and you can see why. You know, push-pull crown, no crown guards, those sorts of things. Timex Expedition Scout is 40 millimeters. Price is $42. And the score of 55 means even on a NATO, it can't be salvaged. Anything here on out, you can't salvage it. I, I don't recommend it for the apocalypse. The Bernie AM7 110VM, price of $136, size of 38 millimeters, and a score of 55. Next is the Diao Fendi Solar Watch Military Time. 36 bucks for this. Quite a deal. 40 millimeters. <clears throat> Total score is 55. 30 meters water resistance. Hate to see that. Otherwise, it looks kind of cool. It doesn't look like a field watch at all, but it really has all the dial elements I'm kind of looking for. But it didn't score well. Another Rolls Timmy. We're on to Rolls Timmy again. Uh, $36 watch. That's 42 millimeters. Again, with that Soviet hammer. And uh, score of 55. The Xanto Military Field Watch, 40 millimeters, um, score 54. Next, the Pagood Premier Anthracite, 44 millimeters, so getting pretty big here in size, um, $190. I don't know what this brand is. There you go, huge honking crown. That's not going to feel great in the field, but score 54, not really great. Next, the Kaluz, KVX 4211. This is a titanium watch, but there's something weird about this product image. That dial looks like hot garbage. It's a $138 watch, size is 41 millimeters, score 54. Next, the Timex Standard 40 millimeter, $89 watch, and score 53. Casio MW240B 5BV. There's a lot of different ones. That just different colors and they just every different color gets this different string of numbers and letters there's a ton of them but i just put one of them on here everything's resin even the crystal is resin so it's, it's just a resin watch here um it's kind of big at 44 millimeters although all the dial stuff's there that i i like to see pretty much all the dial stuff i like to see it just doesn't cut it um it's just it doesn't make the cut it's 52 Next we have the MVMT Field, Everest Blue. They say this is a field watch, okay. So if you give me a grief about, hey, that's not a field watch. Well, they call it a field watch. There's a lot of watches they call field watches that are not. And then there's watches they don't call field watches that actually do the job better. This is one that does not rise to the top. It is $118, it's 41 millimeter watch, blue PVD, that's kind of cool actually. But um, the, the score is 51. Next, we have Triwa Ocean Plastic. If that does something for you, go ahead. But I don't recommend it for the apocalypse. $119, 37 millimeters, and a score of 52. Fossil Defender, 46 millimeters. This is a huge watch for no reason. Why is it so huge? I guess Fossil just does it that way. A Solar Watch. Solar Watch getting a score this low. There's some things they could tighten up, obviously. It does have 100 meters of water resistance, but it's really big, it's penalized for that, has a day date. Those kinds of things all bring the score down to 51. Here's the Slava Spetsnaz Attack. Um, I have a feeling the actual Spetsnaz do not use this watch. Um, this is a zinc alloy watch, so it, it loses some points there for case strength and case weight. There's no loom on it whatsoever. It's a quartz, but 30 meters of water resistance, so yeah, not a real winner here. It's 50, you score 50. Burning Titanium, we're only getting going down from here. 80 bucks, uh, 37 millimeter watch, G great size. But yeah, it's got a push-pull crown, no crown guards. Um, it's a quartz, I mean, it scores low, 48 points. Not so great on this one. All right, Timex Waterbury, score of 47. Timex Modern Easy Reader, score of 47. Sterling Classique, 207M. Score of 47. Aragon Caprice. It looks solid, but and it has 100 meters and a screw down crown. So it's losing a lot of points in other areas. The dial layout is not ideal for me. It lost eight points due to not having military time and missing some of the normal one through 12s. Lost some points for the complication. Um, the loom could be better. There's applied indices that can fall off. The movement accuracy. As you start to see these lower scores, 
you're just going to see a lot more red on the scorecard. And these are like minus one, minus two, minus two. None of these things on their own are actually drawing that score down tremendously. But when you have so many of these things in a row, it really does drag it down. And the fact that it's automatic and it's really wide, it's so practicality, it's losing points there. It's, it's four out of 10 points for practicality due to that size and weight. Score 46. Bulova 96A102. I don't think this is in their current catalog, but you can find it still. Uh, it's got all 1 through 24 hours, but it really loses points for protection here. 30 meters of water resistance. Score of 11 out of 50 for protection. That's just, that's really bad. So yeah, this, this watch didn't do so great. Casio MQ249B. $23 watch. It's 35 millimeters in size. Score 46. Seiko. Here's the Seiko. <laughs> it's like so tragic. You saw like the weird, not good watches we saw come before this. I'm just evaluating based on what is the watch made of? What does the dial look like? All these things. And the Seiko. Ouch. Seiko score of 45. You can't just blame it on the fact that I do a complication penalty. Yes, there's 10 points off just for the complication. Yes, there's 10 points off for the NATO. That's a still just a 65, you take those things off. Automatic movement is not as robust as quartz. Uh, it's got a push-pull crown, no crown guards. Pete, I'm not the first guy to say they should screw down their crowns. So you can't just blame it on me. I think 42 is a touch too large, but automatic. Yeah, 42 is a minus one, automatic is a minus one. So those are both minus two together. But yeah, it. I don't... I don't feel happy, I don't feel great about the fact that on the scoring system I set up, Seiko just did horribly. But if you have a criticism with this, please explain your scoring system where Seiko is the best. Because if you do that, you're going to be saying some weird things, like the more complications the better. You'll have to say that. You'll have to say things like, yeah, you're going to have to say automatics better than quartz for a field watch. And how do you, how do you support that? Like, is it better accuracy? better impact resistance. No, it's, of course it's not. So yeah, and again, they, they didn't loom the numbers, but they could have. This is just a disappointment. 45, score 45, priced right up at the upper end of this category even at $180. Sad to say, Seiko does not perform well with the field watch. Next we have the Gustav Becker military watch. And this does not score well either. Uh, it's really big, 43 millimeters. I shouldn't say really big. For a field watch, I believe it is too big. Score 45. Here's the Swatch 1984 Reloaded Rouge Noir. Score 42. The Sterling Jensen 3939. Score 41. And we're at the last four, people. Invicta Vintage Men, 47134. Price of $45. It's too big, 44 millimeters. Who's going to use this as a field watch? Nobody. But uh, it gets a score of 41. Matthew Tissot City, 42 millimeter watch. Has one date complication on there. Score 40. Svalbard Flashback, AD11B, size of 42 millimeters, score 40. This is sad. This makes me, this <laughs> literally makes me sad. Timex Expedition North tra Trap Rock, score of 38. This is the worst scoring of all these crazy watches I looked at. We had the Swatch. We had an actual Swatch. We had, what else did we have? We had the, the $6 Chinese watch, the TPW Field Watch. And then what comes in absolute lowest is the Timex Expedition North Trap Rock. Timex, what are you doing? They're putting this brand of the mountain on there. And the watch is hot garbage. This is a garbage field watch. It looks so good. It looks like a field watch. I mean, okay. And I don't have it out for plastic. We had plastic watches that did really well. Um, plastic... The total plastic penalty is minus two, or minus three. That's the only plastic penalty. All things considered, plastic is good. In fact, plastic has a case weight advantage. So compare steel to plastic, it's a one point difference. Because steel has steel is stronger, steel has a zero for strength, but steel has a minus two for, for weight. So plastic is just minus one point compared to steel. That's not the problem. The problem is 30 meters of water resistance. Push-pull crown, with no crown guards. Um, yeah, there's no NATO strap. You could obviously put one on there. But yeah, the dial, there's no loom. 
Um, it's got the complication. I don't think it should have that. But yeah, this one just really, really, it, it all adds up. All this stuff adds up when you when you start putting it in there. And the score of 38 is really sad for this one. Timex missed an opportunity here. This could be, even a plastic watch, it could be okay. It could be a good field watch if they just <laughs> beefed it up slightly. Just give it some crown guards. Uh, give it 100 meters water resistance and a screw down crown. And it's a viable field watch. But they didn't. And there's no loom, and it's it's just so weird. I don't I don't get it. That's the end. That was a lot. All the field watches under two hundred dollars. I know. I pr I'm sure I missed some watches. Let me know if your favorite field watch under two hundred dollars was not on my list of field watches under two hundred dollars. But that's it. That's that's the whole deal. What are some takeaways? Yeah, there were some disappointments. Seiko was sad. That that made me sad to see it do so poorly. Timex. I really like Timex, and Timex, let's go back to the beginning. So page one, two, three, four. We had Timex on page four here, doing so much better than tons of other watches. Tons of other field watches. Timex is definitely a contender for a field watch. I'm wearing one right on my wrist, but that, that one at the end, it's just sad. All right, so field watches $200 to $500. This is a really nice price category. It's kind of the sweet spot for field watches. You've got a lot of really good options. There's a ton of competition in this particular price range. There are a lot of micro brands in this space. There's some more interesting things to look at compared to the under 200 category. Things are just a little bit polished. They're tightened up a little bit more, but you're still getting some really good value. Um, in my opinion, as we start to go up in price, most of them are just not going to work so well for that purpose. The watches aren't gonna work so well for the use case of field watch which is you're out in the woods, you're fighting for your life, you need this timepiece, but you need it not to interfere with your equipment. You need it to tell the time quickly and easily. This is a great category for that. As we get up in price, there's, there's not gonna be as many good options. I'm really excited to show all, you all this. And so let's dive right into it. In number five, we have the Newmark 5-2 Field. It is a 38 millimeter watch. It costs $253 and it scored really well on my um, scoring system. It has a score of 78. It gets a lot of good points in this utility area. 40 possible points, it gets 35 out of 40. And that's because there's no complications. Um, it actually has minute markings on here, 60, 5, 10, 15. That's really nice. It's missing the military time, so that's why it gets four off here, minus four. And then for the loom, loom to Arabic, no indices. It just means that these numbers, 1 through 12, have loom on them, but there's no little dots back here somewhere that are going to have loom. Some watches actually do have that as well. So it's just my way of being able to grade how much loom is on the watch. And so this one doesn't quite have as much as other similar format watches do. Great size. Steel, obviously, be better if it's titanium or something, or forged carbon, it would have it wouldn't have this minus two penalty for weight. Plastic gets a zero there, but then you, you lose points for strength if you have plastic. But anyway, for protection here, push-pull crown with crown guards. Um, the crown guards are really interesting on this where the case just kind of is wide here and that kind of creates crown guards for this. The crown is re it's kind of in the case there. That's really cool. This does have a flush crystal, so the crystal rises above the case and so it is a little bit more impact prone from that perspective. There's no, there's no protection for that crystal. But yeah, that's the new mark. In number four, we have the Armorlite AL144 Field Watch. This 42 millimeter watch is $350. And on my scoring system, it got a score of 81. If you watch the prior segment, you know that 80, or 80 plus is really solid for this scoring system there are not many watches with 80 or above. So that is, that's really nice. This watch has tritium on it. 
yeah, I'm pleased to see Tritium make it to the top. It gets a little bit of a penalty here for utility, applied tritium indices, because those they can fall off. The tubes can fall off, so that's that's why there's a minus three here for that. But the loom itself is really pleasing to look at. Yeah, it's nice. Um, I could do without the, the date complication here. This one also gets a pretty cool bonus here. It says welded lugs, but actually what is here is screwed lugs. So unlike a spring bar that can pop off, the bar between the lugs is not going to be removed. It's not gonna detach if there's enough torque. With a spring bar, if you put enough torque on it, it will just pop right off. But that's not the case with, with this system. So I gave it that welded lugs bonus. This is really good. Oh, and the crown guards, I didn't mention that, but it does have a little bit of crown guards. I gave it credit. If they had anything even approaching crown guards, I gave them credit for it because so many, most watches just don't have crown guards whatsoever. So you get the bonus on my scoring system if you have any at all, and this one does. All right, in number three, we have the Vare C3 Korean Field. Look at that beautiful dial. Um, it's not beautiful like a sunset. It's beautiful in its utility. The utilitarian part of me looks at this dial and is very pleased. This is a watch I could tell the time with. And that's, that's what you want in a field watch. You want a watch that, wow, this is not going to tax my mind even slightly. When I want to tell the time, it's going to be very easy to do that. I love the minutes on the outside. That gets a bonus in the scoring system. The fact that it has minute Arabics. It, where it's losing points here, minus four, is that it doesn't have the military time. Just like the, uh, yeah, the new mark was, was missing military time as well. But yeah, this is a solar quartz. That's my preferred movement for a field watch. I think that's the best movement you can have because you don't have to worry about changing a battery, but you also have the movement accuracy and the impact resistance of the quartz. So you kind of have the best of both worlds of automatic and quartz is because there's a battery, but you don't have to change it. Um, it's going to charge itself, but then also there's significant benefits from not having an automatic movement. In fact, all these top five are quartz, and that pleases me greatly. Automatic movements have their place, and you can have a field watch with an automatic movement, but it's just not the best of the best. The best of the best for field watches, um, they have quartz movements. The most resilient, the most suitable for fighting the zombies in the woods and banging around, and you just need that watch to survive. So that was the Vare. I'd love to get my hands on one of these and try it out. All right, and number two, we have the MWC G10, and I just put its uh, national stock number here. I thought that was cool. It has one. I mentioned this in the under 200, but MWC has a ton of watches. They have watches below 200, watches above 200. I didn't put all their SKUs in my... I included the ones I thought that would score the best, and this one scored really well. It gets an 85, which is really excellent. It's very robust. It doesn't get a perfect score here. And the only reason why is because the there's two reasons. Um, it's a sapphire crystal. That's minus two because of sapphire crystal loses two points for propensity to shatter. And then um, it's flush. So there's no, the bezel isn't rising above to protect that sapphire crystal. So minus four, but this is solid. You're not going to see very many field watches with the protection score of 46 here. The dial's really good. There's no minutes or anything. I think this proves that even though I prefer having the military time and I prefer having the minutes and so forth, I mean, this one's in number two and it doesn't have any of that stuff. So the scoring system is forgiving of different styles. You can have different styles of field watches and still have a solid field watch that'll perform well. In the number one spot is, and this, this should be no surprise, we all knew this was coming, Bertucci wins the top spot. Bertucci A2T Vintage 12027. Almost a perfect score. They have a sapphire crystal. If this was mineral, that would be a perfect score for the protection. Actually, if it was acrylic, it would also be perfect. Mineral and acrylic are both getting that benefit of impact resistance compared to sapphire. So it could have an acrylic or a mineral, and it would get that high score here. For the dial format, they have all the numbers 1 through 24. There's no complication. With the Sapphire, you get a benefit here because it's scratch resistant. So that's why I said earlier it, it kind of comes out in the wash because different crystal types have their benefits and drawbacks, and none of them is perfect. The loom is disappointing on the Bertucci, I'll be honest. I wish they would loom the numbers. They do not loom the numbers. They only loom the little triangles here. 
and they're all identical. So you do have a little bit of orientation issue. If you're looking at this in the total blackness, you're not gonna be able to tell as easily where the 12 is, especially if it's not on your wrist. But yeah, the big deal about this one, I didn't mention it yet, is the titanium. Titanium is a very strong material, kind of on par with steel here. I think it's slightly weaker, but in my scoring system, it comes out the same. And then for weight, it is 40% of steel or 40% less. Either way, a steel gets a minus two, this one gets a minus one. If you're asking what gets a zero, that would be forged carbon or plastic, those sorts of things. But anyway, titanium does great. And this, these uh, crown guards are really nice here. The four o'clock crown is nice. Screw down crown, obviously, 100 meters plus of water resistance. I mean, this one is solid. And what do I think about the style? Well, I don't think it's gonna win a beauty contest. <laughs> this is not gonna win a beauty contest. It's not going to get the most likes on Instagram. It's just not that kind of watch. This is a watch that you buy for the utility of it. You just want this thing to work. And I think this one is gonna work great. I definitely have a Bertucci in my future. I haven't decided on which one, but it might be this one. I think I'm gonna go with the one with the backlight. That one was pretty cool. So that was the top five. Now I will show you the rest of them. Continuing on, $200 to $500. Okay, slide two, you see here, I have to go back to slide one, just show you back and forth. Slide one, we have score ranges from 90 down to 78. Well, here on slide two, you'll see we have four Bertucci's and one MWC. And all of these scores are entitled to be in the top five. So I explained this with the under 200 category. I didn't want all the brand, I didn't just want all the watches to be one or two brands. I wanted there to be more diversity. So five separate brands in the top five. So that's why. All right, as I did in the prior category, give you a visual overview of, of all the recommendations. This category has the most green that you're gonna see in any price category. In this pr price category, there's 90 watches and I recommend 46. So just over half of the watches are actually recommended in the 200 to $500 range. That's pretty solid. And yeah, like I said before, the green, there's a lot of green in this one. That's good to see. So the greens are ones I recommend as is out of the box. The yellows are, I recommend it if you swap it for a NATO. And then the red ones are, the score is too low to recommend. Even if you swap the NATO out or something, the watch as it is, it's just not recommended for extreme scenarios as a field watch. And now I'll breeze through them so you can see what's ahead. See if you wanna find out all the extra detail. Here's that first slide, which you already saw. After that top slide, we have Bertucci, 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 MWC, Bertucci. <laughs> MWC, Centric Instruments, RZE, Winfield, Momentum, Victorinox, Woolbrook, minus eight, Boulder, CWC. Vero, Rotary, Hamilton, Tracer, Luminox, Tracer, Vare, California Watch, Marathon, Kuoe, first not recommended watch, Mercur, Woolbrook, Vostok, Merci, Thai Field, Timex, Knight, Draken, Boulder, Smiths, Centric Instruments, Notice, JDM, Thai, Aristo, Ridge, Nixon, Bolova, Bolova, Seiko. There's a Seiko higher up in this one than in the last one, but you'll see, do not recommend. If you want to find out why I do not recommend the Seiko and the Bolovas and all that, you'll have to watch for, after this for the detail when I, find, when I get to it, you know. I do them in order from beginning to end. Luminox, Sterling, Marathon, Ventus, Unimatic, Marathon, Mass, Swiss Military Avenue, Axios, Shield, Islander, Vario, Laurier, Smiths, Venturo, Roebuck, Citizen, San Martin, Prezidis, Benris, Undone, Radia, Molnia, Stramansky, Second Hour, Slava, Arcadia, Titi Poliat, Seiko, Trafford, Rotary, Undone, Illinois Watch Company, Vague Watch Company, Xanto, Walden, Tissell, Chronologia, Molnia, Mondaine. That was my speed run through the 200 to 500. I'm gonna cover them each in detail. If you don't think you're interested, use the timestamps in the description to skip ahead to the, the 500 to $1,000 range. And there you'll get the top five in that category. Otherwise, watch ahead. The choice is yours. Anyway, let's start with the, uh, the first one here. Six out of 90. Uh, here's the Bertucci A2T Super Classic. It is a 40 millimeter watch that costs $245. Almost has a perfect protection score. It would if it was mineral or acrylic, as I mentioned before. Utility, 
also very high score. Um, this is a titanium watch. It's quartz, but it has this date complication here. It's a fully loomed dial, so that looks really sweet. Solid pick right here. Next, we have the Bertucci D3T Retroform Epic. Bertucci makes some solid watches. This one is built like a brick. You know what? It's not my style. I don't know if it is anybody's style. It's a very, like, it looks to me like your, your watch, like, melted in some sort of accident or something. It looks like scraps on the floor of a machine shop or something were used to make a watch. It's got a very interesting, unique look to it. You can't say it's not unique. Very chunky lugs here. This thing is probably even sturdier than my scoring system is allowed it allows it to give it credit for. This case is clearly very strong. Um, for some reason, the, the crystal is not recessed, though. So it lost a few points there compared to other Bertucci's because it does have a flesh crystal. If you like the look of this, go for it because this is very unique. Not my cup of tea though. Score of 87. Next we have the Bertucci A2TS Solar Classic. Um, this one has a complication. It has that flush crystal again. So that's, that's why it's not in the top. The Solar Quartz does give it a couple points extra over a regular quartz, but it has these other shortcomings. The thing is, Bertucci, if they wanted to, they could easily have a watch that was a score of a 99 if they combined some of the features. So if they had the titanium and the solar, and they didn't have the complication, and if they had great loom, if they do all these things, then, then it could be even higher score than they are already getting. But yeah, you can kind of shop around and there are different models and whatever things are most important to you, you can kind of find those. So they do have this solar option, that's pretty cool. Um, score of 85. All right, continuing on, this is the MWC A17 US 1950s Korean. This 40 millimeter watch costs $252, and it gets a great score of 85. Um, it has the welded lugs, so monolithic case. It's just a single piece. The lug bar is actually just part of the case. You can't swap it out or anything, so it has to take a NATO or Zulu pass-through strap. It has a mineral crystal. The crystal is flush, so it's not recessed. And there's actually no loom on this watch, which is kind of surprising. Minus three points for no loom. It may be a bigger factor for you. But the dial layout is really nice. It's got all these numbers that I prefer. And you see there's plenty of space. You can have the little squares. You can have the little numbers. All the little numbers. There's plenty. The actual dial that I personally think is the best for field watch, there's plenty of space on the dial for that. A lot of brands just, they, they don't fit it in. Interesting looks on this. It kind of looks like it was hand painted or hand printed or something. It looks a little bit imprecise, the dial printing. And I think that's deliberate. It's kind of that vintage look. Next we have the Bertucci A11T Americana Officer's Edition. So we've got the date here again that they do. This one actually does have minutes. Bertucci, this may be their only model where they do put some minute Arabics here. I did not see that on other models of Bertucci's. So like I say, they you combine the elements of all their watches, you get, for me, the perfect field watch. They already do dominate. They have the highest score. The, the, the 90 is just, nobody else comes close. Bertucci is the king of the field watch, in my opinion. Yeah, all the ones on this page were Quartz. Quartz is still doing great. This is as good a time as any to explain that I, I've been misspeaking a little bit about the difference between the movements. There's four movement types, Solar Quartz, is the best and then actually quartz movement you do get this little penalty here of minus two and then with hand wind the total penalty for hand wind is minus eight you get minus four for impact minus four for accuracy and then for automatic the total penalty is minus five for impact risk because it has a rotor and minus four for accuracy and then minus one for thickness so the mistake that i made was i said that when you compare quartz and automatic automatic's 10 points lower I didn't factor in the battery change when I said that, so I'm sorry. Um, the automatic is just eight points lower than the quartz, than the regular quartz. Moving on, MWC G10 SL Tritium. This 40 millimeter watch costs $347. And look at that weird looking watch. It looks so funky. And I think part of the reason these MWCs look weird is that the product images look like they were taken in some bunker after the world ended. 
you know, I, I don't know. The, the pictures look kind of disturbing to me. They're kind of creepy. Creepy product images. They, they're, they're kind of depressing looking. Maybe that's just because they have this vintage feel. I don't know what it is, but their watches kind of freak me out. Um, <laughs> this one looks really intense and uh, disturbing for some reason. It's, it's hitting me on an emotional level in a weird way. But it's a, it's a funky looking watch. It does have tritium loom, so that's really cool. I could do without the complication here. But it gets a score of 78, so pretty good. Next we have the Centric Instruments Field Watch Mark III. This 40 millimeter watch is only $225. Total score is 78. Now's a good time to point out, none of these watches that we've seen so far have been near the top of the, of the price range. We haven't seen anything cracking four hundred dollars, and that's that's just further evidence. It's like the higher the price you go, the worse it gets for fighting predator in the jungle, because they start doing things like applying the indices and putting in automatic movements and stuff. This is right near the bottom of the price range, two hundred twenty-five dollars. Um, protection, it could do a little better with the protection, like if it had crown guards or something, or recessed crystal, or uh, fixed lug bar. This is totally reasonable. I think this is a reasonable level of protection that people expect. It's 100 meters or more of, of water resistance with a screw down crown. Um, it's a quartz movement, so it'll survive an impact. An automatic would not survive. And yeah, the total score is 78. The dial format's pretty good. It doesn't have the military time or minute airbags, but I know that's personal preference. So this is a solid field watch right here. Um, in terms of getting excited, I can't imagine someone who would get excited for this particular watch. From a design perspective, it is very plain. But if you're just looking for an instrument, here's one for you. Next we have the RZE Valor 38. Um, this is another one that I do not get excited about the, the dial, the design of it. It's very plain here. You see their little R branding below the six, but otherwise they keep this very plain. Very high contrast, very easy to read. I should probably get excited about this one just for the utilitarian nature of it. It's very easy to read. It's got nice crown guards, uh, nice protection on this watch. Solid protection. I mean, you can't expect there to be like fixed lug bars for all these watches and those sorts of things that Bertucci does that are superior for a field watch. But, you know, in the real world of watches, most of them are going to have the spring bars and a flush crystal. So this is pretty darn good. This is the first automatic we've seen at all in this uh, $200 to $500 price category. Here's an automatic watch competing with the quartz ones. And so that kind of shows you if it made it this high, it's got some other really good things going for it as well. So it is titanium. That's really sweet. I really like the case, how they did this. You know, just from looking at the product images, I, I think this is a really cool one. Score is 76. And of course it comes in other colors as well. Next is the Winfield Model 1941 PVD. Presumably this is a model that was used in 1941 or something. I've actually seen these on Instagram a fair amount too. So it seems to be a popular choice. But the total score is 76. And I think it is well deserved. And check this one out. I did not know this existed until I did my review. Momentum Smoke Jumper Eclipse Solar. So if you really like the aesthetics of the Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic, and I really do, this Momentum Smoke Jumper Eclipse Solar has similar aesthetics to the Hamilton. They're not totally copying. Um, it's just the same dial layout here with the, the little minutes and the, you know, all these things look similar to the Hamilton. Smoke Jumper just takes it a notch up. Momentum here. You've got your crown guards. You have a screw down crown. It's cheaper and it's solar. So all those things are superior to the Hamilton, those four things. Um, it's hundreds of dollars cheaper. So yeah, the crown guards, the screw down crown, I would love to see crown guards or screw down crown on the Hamilton khaki field automatic. Solar movement, that's really sweet too. So this is a cool watch. I've seen probably one review on this one, the 38 millimeter, and the guy was very pleased with it. He's not a watch guy. They're not really marketing towards watch people. They're marketing more towards outdoor people. And they've taken those concerns into consideration. 
you know, the average outdoor guy, he's not going to want the automatic movement. He wants the solar. He's going to want a quartz, and a solar quartz is even better. So, yeah, this is really cool. The loom, there's loom on all these things, on the little dots and on the numbers and on the hands. So I would love to, tr to check one of these out one day. It looks really nice, and uh, it would probably replace my Hamilton khaki field automatic. Um, I, could, I could see just getting the momentum and then getting rid of the Hamilton if the momentum does it better. All right, next we have the Victorinox Swiss Army Heritage. This 40 millimeter watch is $375, and it has a lot of nice protection on it. The dial layout looks pretty cool. It doesn't excite me for whatever reason. I mean, it's hard to say what designs will excite one person or another. To me, it looks like a pretty plain watch. It looks a little bit dated in terms of the styling of it, but it is a solid field watch. No question about it. It is on a NATO strap. I think pretty much all the watches so far have been. The momentum was not on a NATO strap, but they, all the rest of them have been. And there's one little complication, the date. They say the word date above the date. If, in case you were wondering what that is, they tell you it's the date. Total score, 75. Next is the Woolbrook Outrider Mecha Quartz. So it says Douglas on the dial. I don't know if it's a Woolbrook or it's a Douglas. I think you'll find it either way if you search for either of those terms, but first thing you'll notice is this, um, it's like a dirty dozen here, but instead of a running seconds or a small seconds, they've got an actual 24 hour indicator. So you can kind of have a second time zone. That's a really cool feature. I mean, if I prefer that to the, to the small seconds, if you're going to take up the style space, like do something cool with it, not just a seconds. So you can put the seconds on the middle. So I like that. I mean, it's a, it's a minus five for a complication, so. It's something that interferes with your ability to tell the basic time, so that's why it has the, the penalty. The field watch, in the traditional sense, doesn't really need anything extra on it. It only needs the time. But yeah, protection is, is good here. It's got a mineral crystal, which I prefer, over the sapphire for a field watch. And with a score of 75, it's doing great. Next is something very unexpected. I kind of found this at the very end of my review and just squeaked it in. This is the minus eight field 1S. I said there weren't very many watches with a monolithic case. Well, this is one of the ones with a monolithic case. These lugs here are just a single piece. Um, it's just part of the case. The case is a single item here. There's no spring bars whatsoever. Oh, that gets it uh, four points. The fact that these are all welded together, you're not going to lose a spring bar. That's not gonna happen. So it's a steel watch. Uh, it's 39 millimeters, great size, $298 getting up there, but still reasonable for what you're getting. In terms of how it actually looks, there's something about this dial that's really not doing it for me. I think it's the fact that these three, six, and nine are so huge, and then the other numbers are so tiny. I don't care for that. I, I, I really don't think that's good. I like the hands, the hands are cool. It has kind of a futuristic look to it with this case and the hands. And I think they could have done something a little more futuristic with the numbers. And it's it's okay to have the numbers different sizes. I kind of like that. But the disparity of size, you know, here to the, the 4, it says 04 for some reason instead of just 4. And then to the 3, there's a lot of dissonance there between these these numbers. And then the minus 8 is a little bit confusing to, to have it at that 12 o'clock position. I'm sure there's some significance to minus 8, whatever that means. You know, we could ask the, the watchmaker. I like this one. It has no complications. Crown guards are cool looking too. It's a very stylized case. Very cool. And next we have a very famous field watch that everybody would be expecting to see on this list. It is the Boulder Venture Carbon Black. And this is a very popular watch and it is well deserved. It is a great size for a field watch, 38 millimeters. It comes on a NATO strap. Um, it's made of titanium. Some, some things that watch collectors really like about it, I think are not so great for a field watch like the automatic movement and the sapphire crystal. I think it would be better if it was quartz or even hand winding. Hand winding, as I mentioned, is a couple points more than automatic. But yeah, this is a great option. They, they, took, they took what was popular and they made a solid field watch out of it. This is a solid recommend from me. And next here is the famous CWC G10. This one is issued to actual military soldiers, and you can see why. It has it has the fixed lug bar here that, that cannot be removed, so it's not gonna pop off. That's That gives it four points, so that's nice. 
It's quartz. It has an acrylic crystal. People complain about the acrylic crystal, but it is more likely to survive an impact than a sapphire would be. But yeah, total score of 72 is a very viable option. Okay, next is the Vero Smokey the Bear. This is what I was talking about with the micro brands in this price category. There are some kind of fun things going on. This watch looks really cool. I really like the looks of it. Case is kind of plain, but I really like the numerals. I like the brown. I like even the red. I, it's really cool. I like this watch. It gets a score of 72 for protection. It does have a screw down crown. It has 100 meters of water resistance. This is a solid field watch. The hour hand is really interesting. It's kind of a spade tip on it. Next we have that Rotary RW 1895 field watch. Hey, this hour hand also has a spade tip. That's interesting. Anyway, this is also a score of 72, similar to that Vero Smokey the Bear. This one is actually a quartz movement, and that, I actually like that. It's a 37 millimeter watch, great size, price of $272. I think this is a great option for a field watch. I think Rotary did a really good job here. And it's on a NATO style leather strap here. Next, we have the Hamilton Khaki Field Quartz. This is the only one I know of. Actually, no, that's not true. I take it back. There are a few other Hamilton watches that come on NATO straps by default, but this is the only quartz one I know of. It's in their catalog. Their catalog is absolutely filled with Hamilton Khaki Field Automatics or the Khaki Field Mechanical. There's a lot of those. This one, you kind of have to dig to find it, but it's in there. Hamilton Khaki Field Court. It's a 38 millimeter. The price is $449. That seems a little steep for this. It's a bit much. You're, you're paying for the Hamilton brand when you do this. If you buy this one, you're paying for the brand. And look at that huge crown. It looks strange on a quartz movement to have such a huge crown. It's just, it gotta be just for style. But if you're using it as a field watch, that would be annoying to have such a big crown. But it gets a respectable score of 71. So I recommend this one. Next is the Tracer P67 Officer Pro. Tracer makes tritium watches. I think they make the tubes too, if I remember correctly. This is a 42 millimeter watch with a price of $470. It has nice crown guards. It has, it has a push-pull crown, but crown guards are a good protection too. That complication's a little bit interesting. You still see the three and the 15. You've got that date just kind of, just squeaking in there between them. That was an interesting choice. They're still able to keep all the numerals on the dial. I think it looks okay. My preference would just to be clean. And it's not just aesthetics. It's easier to read the watch when you don't have extra numbers that are interfering with your ability to read the time. So you have a three, an eight, and a 15. You have to choose which number to read. And who knows, this could be a four, or it could be whatever. So I don't like the date, personally, on the field watch. But yeah, it loses a little bit because those tritium indices could fall off. At the same time, tritium is really effective loom. More effective than the charging kind because a lot of times, just because a watch has loom, it means you can charge it up and look at it. But you know, a few hours later, is it still there when you actually need it? And the, the tritium loom is gonna be there 24 hours a day. You don't have to worry about it. So I think that is a great way to go. All right, score 71. And next is the Luminox Green Shield Patagonia Steel. These crown guards are what I'm talking about. Look at that right out to the crown. That is excellent what they did there. Um, this only has tritium markers on the cardinal positions. The other ones don't have it. And that's the only loom. I probably should have taken a point off or something for that, but um, I didn't want to program that sort of thing in just for this watch. There, there's not really other ones that are having this issue. But okay, this has a NATO strap. This is solid though. It's got one through 24 hours. This is a great field watch. Again, with the date complication, not my cup of tea, but market forces. This is what people like. They want a date on their watch. And I understand, you know, for every day, I definitely like having a date. But yeah, if you're going to go dual monsters in the woods, you don't really want that date function on there. All right, next we have the Tracer P59 37 millimeter. Price of $255. I don't have much to say about this one. Score 71. Next we have the Vare S5 Tactical Field Solar. This is a solid option of a field watch. Vare does a great job. What was the one in the top five? In the top five was also a Vare. This one looks a little bit more sophisticated, I would say, than that one that was in the top five, but it's still pretty solid here. It does have that date complication, which is not needed. It's not on a NATO strap by default, but you put it on a NATO strap and then it's a score of 80. So. Yeah, this is a good choice. Next we have the California watch, Lost Coast Solar. Really cool to see the blue PVD and this strange case shape. 
and just all the design features of this are really cool. The military time, they just kind of made it real small. So it's there if you need it, but otherwise it's not gonna probably bother you. Um, I really like how they've got the grid for the solar panels here just kind of making that part of the design. There's a ton going on here. A lot of thought went into the design of this watch. The case is really cool. This is a cool choice. You probably can't put it on a NATO. That's probably not even an option, the way this case is built. And that's gonna be one of those issues. A lot of these watches probably won't even take a NATO strap. Yeah, this is a really cool watch and there's no complication. This is a solid field watch, score of 67. Next is the famous Marathon Officer's Quartz. This is a quartz, which is nice. It's the officer's quartz. They make a hand winding one. It doesn't do as well. Any, and that's in the next price tier anyway. But, any, you know, there's the quartz. It gets a score of 67. This is the, this may be the only passing grade marathon watch, which is sad to say. It's a, it's a great company. It's sad to say. I mean, their watches literally are used by governments. Score 67. So I recommend this one. This has water resistance of 50. A lot of theirs have 30. But it's push-pull. It does kind of have crown guards. I gave them credit for crown guards on this one. It's pretty minimal, guys, but it, it still will work. And it's got tritium. I think this is a solid choice. 67. Here's the first one that I don't recommend for hunting vampires in the woods or whatever you're doing with your field watch. The Kuoe Old Smith Green. I really like Japanese style. It's the size of 35 millimeters, a little bit small, and a price of $358. And it just is below the price range. It's already on a NATO, can't fix it there. Um, what could you do? What could you change to fix it? Or what could I? What would I change to give it a few more points, get it up into the recommend? It only needs one more point. What could we do? Well, here's one of those things. Loomed indices, no Arabics. If they loomed the numbers, boom, it's recommend. Could do a couple things to get it over my score threshold. I know nobody else is thinking it in these terms. Um, but yeah, it is, you can kind of tell from it that it's like, it's a really cool field watch. Is it the one you're going to actually take when there's an apocalypse happening? No, you'll probably grab the Bertucci. You know, part of this exercise was to see what could you use for fighting the zombies in the apocalypse. And yeah, this one's just under, just a little bit under. That's too bad. It's a really cool looking watch. Okay, now we have the Mercur Vintage Military. This is obviously just copying the Marathon. So this is a 39 millimeter. It is $280, 281. It has tritium indices on it. So this, this is a Chinese watch in case you didn't know Mercur is a Chinese brand. They tend to kind of do things to a higher quality than some of the other ones that are just homage ones. This is a straight homage though. This is just um, trying to be like the, this is just trying to be like the, the the marathon. The hands are slightly different than the marathon, and then I think this is actually a little cleaner what they did with the dial here. There's no date, so I like that. Um, these crown guards are really nice. The lugs are also a little bit better. That the the marathon has really chunky lugs that look just weird to me. But yeah, this has uh, 50 meters water resistance. It's a hand wind, so it's got more risk of being damaged by impacts you know, a jewel popping off or whatever. It's got the tritium. I like that it has all these numbers on here, but score 65 means I don't recommend this one. Next we have the Woolbrook Douglas Outrider Professional. Okay, so they say both of them in the product listing now. It says Douglas on the dial and it's Woolbrook. And uh, it's got the date here, score 64. Put it on a NATO and it's, I recommend it for extreme scenarios. Next is the Vostok Komandirsky K34. It's 42 millimeter watch, it's $247, and I gave it a score of 64. So if you put it on NATO, you can use this one also for the zombies. And it's interesting what they did here. The military time is very subtle. It's just impressed into the dial here. There's no printing even, so that's kind of interesting. But, um, the other weird thing about this is the Commandeerski dive watches are smaller and then the field watch is bigger. And typically you do it the other way around. Typically a field watch is a little bit smaller and a dive watch is a little bigger. But they decided to flip the script and do it the other way. But this is a cool looking watch. It has an in-house automatic movement made by Vostok. It's going to have that wobbly crown that protects it from impact even more. So that's kind of cool. Next is the Merci LMMM. 01 field watch. It's 38 millimeter watch, costs 274 dollars. 
it is a quartz and it's a little bit below my recommendation threshold they could beef it up by screwing down the crown or giving it 100 meters water resistance something like that would push it into the recommend if you didn't watch my previous segment the cutoff score for recommendation is 66 and so watches that are below 66 can become a recommend if you can put a nato on them but this one already has a nato so it's just it's not recommended that you get this watch if you're really gonna have an extreme scenario. That doesn't mean you shouldn't buy the watch. It just means they're better watches for extreme scenarios than this one. And that should be obvious just from looking at it. But yeah, that's what the scoring system tells us. All right, next we have the Thai Field Watch. I think Thai stands for titanium. It is a titanium watch. It is a solar quartz, solar driven. They say that on the dial. I like that blue. Doesn't quite match the, the second hand, but they're both cool colors. I would say choose one or the other, but they've, they've chosen two colors of blue here. Day date is not looking good. This watch would look a lot cooler if it didn't have that day date, and it would also give it 10 more points if it didn't have that complication, and it would, it would push it into a recommended level of a score. I didn't state it, but it is a 41 millimeter watch, and price is $399, and I don't recommend it for fighting the zombies. All right, the Timex Expedition North Titanium. It's 41 millimeter watch, is $349, and it's score of 62. If you put it on NATO, I recommend it. Timex did a great job here with this particular model. It pleased so many people. It's a reasonable size, 41. A lot of people are gonna be happy with that. I think that even more people would be happier with it if it was a 39 rather than a 41, but this is okay. This is this is good. Um, it has a screw down crown. Hallelujah. Do it. Yes. Timex got a screw down crown. Great. Please keep doing that. That's what people want. It's going to protect that movement. And then we've got stupid looking date window. A lot of these date windows just look really stupid. And it's going to interfere with that time. You know, this is 1500, except it says a 14. So what are you going to do? If you... <laughs> If you're trying to tell military time and you see the 14, you have to take an extra half a second to convert that and be like, oh, ignore the 14. So, yeah, it does make a difference, okay? The date window is unnecessary. But it's a great look. It's a fresh look. Yeah, how fresh can you make a watch like this? Because there's so many of them. But this is. They did a good job. The mountain symbol at the 12, that's really cool. That trap rock really spoiled the branding, though. That trap rock we had in the under 200 category that got the lowest score of any watch. Um, they slap that mountain on the, the trap rock and that that sours that branding for me, but um, this one is solid. This one brings it back up. They did a lot of great things here. It's titanium, great watch. Next is the Knight MX-10. This is their field watch. They make a lot of dive watches and different sorts of things. Very cool. These ones are issued to military. It has tritium tubes. I think Knight is way cooler than Marathon. Sorry, Marathon. Um, Knight is cooler. Anyway, it's got some little crown guards here. It is quartz. That's cool. I know some people balk at paying $400 for a quartz watch. I think you should try to get past that if that's your attitude because quartz really is superior for a field watch. And if you're buying a field watch, I think you should get the best and quartz is the best. This is, this is Ben's advice here. Enjoy your watch hobby, get some automatics, get some hand winds. But if you want a field watch, don't, don't insist on an automatic or a hand wind for a field watch because a quartz is really much better. The field watch is more akin to like a beater or what, just a really strong watch that is going to survive. If you're gonna be doing some work out in the yard, fixing a fence, grab the quartz. Don't mess up your automatic watch. Just grab a quartz watch. And I think that's what a field watch should do. This is a great example of just a high quality field watch. And it looks really cool. They have these in different colors. The black one is really nice. But yeah, if you put it on NATO, I recommend this one. So good choice. Continuing on, another gem that I found, really cool looking watch, is the Draken Aoraki Zulu. It's got this actual dragon here on the watch. It looks really cool. I really like the style of this. Everything about it, the, the um, crosshatch pattern on the crown, 
these numerals, the um, these kind of staple sort of minute marks here. I really like it. This watch does not make the cut though. It's already on a NATO, so the score of 62 doesn't make the cut. 39 millimeters, $399. What could it do differently to make the cut? Screw down crown, it would make the cut. In terms of fighting the zombies, it would make the cut screw down crown or crown guards. You could take away the complication. So there's a lot of things it could do just a little bit differently and make the cut. As it is right now, um, I think the thing that's probably gonna stick out to most people is the fact that the crown is not a screw down crown. Does it make it a bad watch? No, it doesn't. It just means that there's better options if you really want your watch to survive harsh conditions. There's better options than this one. Very cool watch though. I, I really like how this one looks. Next we have the Boulder Voyage Antarctic. This 40 millimeter watch is $449 and it has a score of 62. So if you put it on a NATO, I recommend it. Very unique look to it. They really did some dark fotina here. This is some orange, like cantaloupe colored um, loom. The loom's a little more orange than my, than my um, cursor here. But wow, very interesting hour hand. Cool looking watch. That crown is crazy. That's definitely, that would definitely dig in my wrist. And it's gonna leave a mark if it hits something. That's like a mace or something. Cool watch. Next we have the Smith's PRS 29A. It's a 36 millimeter watch that it costs $443. A little bit smaller. Um, they are charging extra for that Smith's name. It is a hand winding movement. That is cool. I really do like hand winding movements. I don't have it out for them in any way. I have some hand winding watches and I really love winding them up and wearing them. But yeah, it only needs four more points to get it up into the recommended category. So if they did the fixed lug bars, there you go, you got it. If you did crown guards, there you go, you got it. Understand the crown guards don't really fit with the aesthetics. So that's probably not an option for them. Smith's is really cool. You know, when I say I don't recommend it, I just don't recommend it for fighting the zombies because we have better options. Next is a Centric Instruments Field Watch Mark One, And you can put this on a NATO and use it to fight those zombies. And I recommend it. It does have a screw down crown. That's great. Um, Flush Sapphire Crystal, complication I don't care for. It is a solar movement again. Centric Instruments is doing these solar movements. Cool, good for them. I like it. The style is not for me. I don't know who the style is for. Maybe like a scientist or something would really go for this one. I could see that. Next we have a really cool looking one, the Notice Sector Field. And on a NATO strap, I recommend it. It's not on a NATO strap though, it's on a bracelet. So if you buy it and you wanna fight the zombies today, you have to go pick up a NATO and swap it out first before you do that. But yeah, there's no date. It's got some really cool um, design elements to it. It says sector, so you see that crosshair in the middle, and then that continues out to these little indexes on the outer perimeter. They're both thicker and they're that light blue. The blues all match here from what I can tell from the product listing. This is a really cool looking watch. 38 millimeters is a great size, $450. Um, like I said, you can put it on a NATO. So this is one of those ones that it's an Instagram watch and it can actually do the deal. If you put it on a NATO strap, I think this is excellent for all your outdoor activities. Next we have the JDM Military Alpha 3. Oh, what did they do here with the date window? Like, just get rid of the three if you're gonna do that, because what is that? Bleh. But yeah, JDM, I have never heard of these guys. They have a kind of Swiss cross thing here, so they must be a Swiss brand. It says Swiss made down here. Um, it's got all the minutes, I really like that. I do wish I would see that more. Actually, I do see that a lot on field watches. It is pretty standard thing. I wouldn't, I don't have the exact numbers. I could find them, but I do like to see the minutes on a bracelet, so that's not great for a field watch. Military, it's military if it's on a bracelet, guys. It's a 42 millimeter, costs $299. You're paying for the fact it says Swiss made. It's a 61, so like I said, put it on a NATO, you're good to go. Next is the Thai Daily Solar Watch. And you can kind of see the solar panels here. They didn't really disguise it. It's got that kind of brownish look to it of that panel, brownish purplish, just solar panel look to it. But it's got the minutes, it's got the one through 12. I don't like the date, that should go. It still has a passable score if you put it on a NATO. It is 38 millimeters and $275. And next is the Aristo 38 millimeter Navy. This one costs $475. Um, that little triangle, you're kind of looking like a, kind of looking like a pilot watch there. Watch, don't do that. This is a field watch video. I don't know if it's a pilot watch or a field watch. There's, 
Some of them are very clear. They say, like, this is a pilot. Well, hey, this says Navy. Ah, uh, there's pilots in the Navy. Dang it. All right, well, anyway, it's got 50 meters water resistance. It's push-pull crown. No crown guards. Guys, put on... Do do one of the, do something here. That would really boost the score. Score 60. All right, let's keep on trucking. Rich titanium field watch. This looks really cool. I like the style of it. It's titanium. They put the military time on the outer perimeter. 40 millimeter watch, $275. It's got some crown guards. It is an automatic. Seems like a good choice. If you put it on a NATO strap, I think it's suitable. Next is the Nixon mullet stainless steel. 38 millimeter watch is $250. And it has a passing score if you put it on a NATO, which is a surprise. Um, I think it's because it's quartz, that's why. This is definitely kind of more of a fashion type of a watch. But you can make this work as a field watch. And we will see watches that you can't make work that are designed to be field watches on this slide now. In fact, the next one we have cannot be saved. This Nixon is better than the next one. So let's go on to that next one. The Bulova A11 Automatic 37. This is already on a NATO, so it, it's under my recommendation threshold of 66 or above. It's, it's already on a NATO, so you can't, you can't fix it. How could you fix it? Water resistance of 50. Boost that up to 100. Screw down the crown. Boom, you're at 69. You're good. So th this is why Bulova is not actually used as a field watch, is because they have 50 meters water resistance, in this case, and a push-pull and no crown guards. And it doesn't have the protection you need. It's got less than half of the protection points that are available to a field watch. So that's not great. I don't recommend the Bulova A11 for extreme scenarios. Next is the Bulova Hack Watch. Hack, and it it is a hack of a watch here. Um, it's a <laughs> score of 58. I'm sorry. It They've got Heritage. They're an American company. Bulova is cool. I would love for this watch to be great. So many people would, but with a water resistance of 30 meters, it's not cutting it. There's a watchmaker that their watch is 30 meters and they advise in their manual, I think this is Hermes, they say, do not let the watch get wet. They say, do not let the watch come in contact with water because you're gonna ruin your watch if you do that. So 30 meters, is do not get let your watch get in contact with water. Don't tell me 30 meters means you can dive under the ocean with it. You cannot. That's not what 30 meters means. I don't know why, why they do this, the system the way they do, but 30 meters does not mean you can jump in the lake with it. You cannot. So this is not suitable for the purpose. What if you're fighting the predator and you have to jump in the lake? Well, too bad, your watch is dead. Score is deserved of 58. They need to bump this up, they need to give it a screw down crown, and it'd be fine, it'd be suitable. So that's what they need to do. Right now it's not a suitable field watch for extreme scenarios. Next we have the Seiko SRPJ85. Same deal as the Bulova here, same score, 58. Um, this one actually does have good water resistance, but it needs a screw down crown. Screw down only gives it five points, which puts it to 63. So you put it on a NATO and, oh, it's already on a NATO, dang it. Okay, so this needs more help than the Bulova does because it's already got 100 meters of water resistance. Why is it doing bad? Two complications. That's a problem. Um, and it is a problem from legibility when you're trying to read this thing. It's just not as good. It's not a field watch here to have all these things on the dial. So there's 10 points off for this. You could have a day-date watch make it pretty high that's 10 points off so conceivably you could have a watch with a score of, of 89 with this if it got everything else right you could get a solid watch that has a day date i'm evaluating the seiko compared to the competition and we've seen the competition the competition is better than the seiko the competition has fixed lug bars it has recessed crystal it has all these kinds of things it has a screw down crown it has crown guards so Seiko's not competing when it comes to extreme field watch. And they're not trying to. I think this is a street style or something. It's some kind of style. It's not a, a zombie style watch. It's still just like a, a urban style. And yeah, it's urban. It's not for the jungle. Next we have the Luminox Ice Sar Arctic XL. It is XL. It's a 46 millimeter watch, very big. 
price of $254. Um, but you put it on a NATO strap, and I recommend it for fighting the zombies. So even though it's huge, you can still make it work. It is penalized for being huge. It's losing some points there for being huge. Uh, minus four for how big it is. But it's kind of interesting. It has 112 at the top instead of 12. Apparently that's the number you dial for search and rescue. If you're in whatever country they're from, Swiss made. If you're in Switzerland, you dial 112 for that search and rescue when you're on the mountain and you shouldn't have been. It's got a push-pull crown. But 254 for this Luminox with the Tritium, that's a great price. I I think they have models that are newer um, that probably do cost more than this. But this is one of the ones you can still pick up, this particular variation of it. The new ones look a little fresher. But yeah, you've got some cool Tritium. They've got Tritium on all the indices, not just like the, the 12, 3, 6, and 9 like they sometimes do. Cool watch. Very cool design. It looks very sharp, like it's going to cut you. So I don't like that it cuts you. Some may argue these are crown guards. I did not give it to them. It's like a crown guard, but it's not a crown guard. So I did not give this crown guards. If you think this is a crown guard, then add five points to the total score. Next, we have a disappointment, I'll be honest. Sterling. If you're on Instagram and you follow Sterling, you'll see guys shooting off mortars, guys firing machine guns with these watches and stuff. They are leaning heavily into the uh, military thing. Probably what they're doing is they're sending these watches to anybody who wants one and saying, hey, just take a, take a video of you shooting this M4 or something or firing off a mortar and, and you get to keep the watch. I bet that's what they're doing. It is quartz, but it's still not making the grade. It's on a NATO. It's quartz. You'd think it would work. It's got a score of 58. Why is that the case? It's the typical things. Water resistance. Push-pull crown. No crown guards. They could just fix, like, one thing, and they would be a recommend. Well, no, they, they have to fix a couple things. It's not the most robust watch. This is the Pretender. Go to MWC if you want. Let me show you the MWC again. MWC. This is the real deal. Score 85. If you want the real deal, get an MWC. Don't get the Sterling. That's my recommendation. They look very similar, but they have very different specs, and the MWC is superior. Next, we have the Marathon GPW with Mariglow. Score of 58. I don't recommend this guy for your field watch to the apocalypse. I think you can do a lot better. 30 meters water resistance, push-pull, no crown guards. It's a plastic watch. There are benefits of plastic. It is lighter. But overall, I don't recommend this Marathon. Um, again, I know it's legit used by people, but there's just much better specs. And for 280 bucks, um, we had much better options. For, for goodness sakes, the Bertucci plastic watch is better and it's $75. It's significantly better than this one and it's $75. So yeah, I don't recommend the Marathon GPW. There's just much better options. Next is the Ventus Field Watch 1. If you put it on NATO, this is better than the Marathon for fighting the zombies. There's still, I mean, <laughs> this far down the list, we've, we've covered a lot better options so far. But this is cool. It's, um, it's really nice looking. I like the pattern on the dial. It's got kind of a wood sort of pattern. It's got applied indices, which look really pretty. It's got the Arabic numerals around the outside for the minutes. That's really nice. This chunky crown is cool. It means business. It does have some kind of crown guards, even if they're a little bit wimpy. I do think that does offer some protection for the crown that it wouldn't have if they weren't there. So it's better than nothing. Yeah, it's a viable option if you put it on a NATO. Well done. Next, we have the Unimatic U4 Classic UC4. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, what is this dive watch doing in here? It's not a dive watch. Okay, maybe it's a dive watch. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's a dive watch. They're trying to be a field watch. It doesn't have the numbers. It would be better if it did have those numbers around here. Um, that's actually really holding it back. Um, it's already on a NATO, so it needs a little bit more help. But I think if they fixed up that dial, this would be solid. It would be a solid choice in this format. This, these crown guards are really nice here, the way it integrates here. Um, it goes all the way out to the crown. This looks really cool. I like this case. I think this case could really be good for a field watch. 
the dazzle it's making it not pull its weight as an actual field watch. All right, next we've got the Marathon GPQ Tritium. Does even worse than the Mariglow, and that's because tritium tubes can fall off. Loses a few points there for that, even though the loom is more impressive than the, uh, than the painted loom. It's a downside here that it could fall off. So, you know, this doesn't have a date. That's nice. But again, I, I can't recommend this for the apocalypse when we have such better options from the likes of MWC and Bertucci and, frankly, a lot of other options that just come before Marathon, unfortunately. I think Marathon has cool history, but I think their actual watches need to modernize. And they could do it. They have the recessed sapphire crystal. That's cool. Or, well, the recessed part of it I think is cool. Sapphire crystal, I'm not going to harp on it. It's not a big deal. But to, to recess the crystal like that is, is great protection for the crystal. I like that they did that. They just need to tighten up here things like this 30 meters of water resistance. Push-pull. If they made this a 100 meter, then you'd have a zero here instead of a 13, minus 13. If they made this a screw down crown, then you'd have five more points as well. So what is that? 18 more points on this 57? It's an easy recommend if they up that water resistance and screw down the crown. So that's just what they need to do if they want to compete in that um, extreme watch category. This is not an extreme watch. This is just, this is a little bit of a fragile watch for a field watch, unfortunately. Next we have the Mass Arcticus. And this one is trying to look really cool for school. It's trying to look too cool for school. It does succeed a little bit. I think I chose probably the ugliest, ugliest color, so sorry about that, Moss. They have a black one and I believe a blue, pale blue one or something. It's a little bit weird that the orange is behind the sandwich here. I don't know what's going on with that. There's like a vertical line behind it. That's That looks weird to me. Um, the numbers don't look very crisp because of that. It does have the minutes on the outside, so I like that. This this meets my threshold. If you put it on a NATO, you could take this to the apocalypse as well with your buddies and your coordinated attacks. Not much to say. $403, size of 40 millimeters is going to please a lot of people. Next, we have the Swiss Military Avenue Quartz. Another one of these brands with the uh, Swiss flag here. There's a lot of them. I don't know what to say about that. There's the JDM Swiss or whatever, and then there's the Swiss Military Avenue, whatever Avenue means. Is that part of the brand? I don't know. It says high precision movement. It's a quartz. I have nothing wrong with quartz. I think that's cool. Um, this is a viable option on the NATO strap, so the style doesn't do a lot for me. It's got like these diamond things or whatever, or they're just, maybe there's nail heads on the it's got a style of its own. I don't particularly care for this handset on a field watch. I think it's a little bit too fancy. I think you need something chunkier for a field watch. It's it's a better choice. So this is sort of like, a, it kind of looks like a mall watch, a department store watch. Doesn't do a ton for me. Um, $218, it's kind of priced at that mall watch price where you can get somebody to think, oh, that looks pretty nice. I'll get it for my husband or whatever. I think you can do better than the Swiss Military Avenue Quartz. As you'll see later, this watch handily defeats some that are really looking a lot more like a field watch, that are looking a lot more legitimate. It's not always the looks. Um, that was kind of the point of this video, is you've got to dig into those specs. Some of these really don't have the specs. This actually does have 100 meters water resistance, and you can't say that for some of the ones that are going to come up, these golden calves, that we're just going to think, why did you do this watch brand? Why did you make your field watch to be so wimpy? Next, we have the Axios Pathfinder. This is a really nice looking watch. The bracelet looks really excellent. Um, it's kind of like brick pattern or something. It looks so cool. Pebbles or bricks or something. This is a really cool bracelet. Um, that's kind of off topic because bracelets, I don't think bracelets should be on a field watch. I think you should have it on some kind of fabric strap that is going, I think you should have it on a NATO. Field watches should be on a NATO in my opinion. Yes, you can have a really high-scoring watch that's not on a NATO. We've seen those. This is not going to be one of them. It has other issues going on. Um, it does have a screw-down crown. It does have 100 meters water resistance, but it's got an automatic movement. It does have applied indices that can fall off. And they've, they've kind of doubled up their risk here because they have the little dots too, but 
Yeah, you can have a, an applied indice fall off if you if that glue fails or whatever. I would prefer to see some minutes in the, the military time. It's okay though. You can put it on a NATO strap and it still meets my threshold. Next is the Shield Palau. It's a huge watch, 46 millimeters, huge for a field watch. Nice crown guards. I like to see that. It has this extra complication of the compass dial. Um, there's another very famous watch that has the complication of a compass dial. I think it's a mistake. I think it clutters things up and confuses. And I would prefer to see minutes on the outer track rather than like all these numbers, like 300 and 330 and 345. Those numbers that my mind will read are going to interfere with me telling the time correctly. So those numbers don't belong. They need to get off of there. Practicality <laughs> gets a score of 2 out of 10 because it's very big. And um, yeah, it's very big and you got to change the batteries. And Anyway, total score of 56. You can still use it in your apocalypse and uh, with all your friends. Next we have the Islander X, the Urban Gentry Rangemaster. I really like both these guys, TGV and Mark from Long Island Watch. You guys do a lot of really cool stuff. I enjoy your content. Your watch looks really cool. It doesn't pass my recommendation threshold. I don't recommend it for the apocalypse. But you're almost there. You just need a couple more points. And um, there's a few There's a few ways you could, you could do that. The easiest way to do that would be just put on the minutes here. We've got these little slashes here. Um, you could have minutes there too instead. 5, 10, 15. If you put those on the dial, that would give you a couple more points, and I would recommend it for the apocalypse on a NATO. <laughs> you'd have to change the strap and <laughs> change the dial format, but you'd get there. Otherwise, yeah, you've already got the screw down crown, you've already got the 100 meters. You guys know what's up. You know those two elements are extremely important in a field watch, which I agree, but I think the dial format also matters a ton too, and I'm not a huge fan of this Explorer thing of just leaving off a lot of your numbers in, in lieu of these other things. You guys also got it right by doing printed. I don't know if this was a cost-cutting measure or if it was deliberate for robustness purposes, but when it's printed on, it's not going to come off. If it's an applied index, that applied index can fall off. Um, I've seen the pictures where that happens. It definitely happens. So printing is the way to go. But yeah, it's a cool watch, and that's all I got on that one. Next we have the Vario D12. Very cool how the crown is here in this four o'clock position. The watch looks really nice. It's a 37, great size. It's $368. Um, it's actually not on a NATO. It sort of looks like it is. Everything here on out cannot be salvaged even with a NATO. You'd have to make some changes to the watch itself. This one, if you just took off that complication, you'd be there. I'll leave it at that. Next we have the Laurier Falcon. Very cool watch. I understand they're trying to mimic several other historical field watches. The The price is $499 and it's 36 millimeters. Just scraping in $1 under my, my cap here for $500. The, the irony is if it was in the over $500, it would probably um, rank higher respectively to its peers because, because the quality, as I've mentioned, kind of tends to go down a little bit as you go up in price. But yeah, the dial format is not my cup of tea. It could still excel. That's the dial format with where there's only some batons and there's no minutes or anything. That's a minus 11. If they did everything else right, it would be recommended. But right now, it's tough to say how they could fix it. I think you guys are going to get bored if I try to say how you could fix each watch. So I'm not going to go into all that. I'm just going to say not recommended for the apocalypse. Next is the Smith's Everest PRS 25. The Smiths and the Laurier, it's fitting that they're right next to each other in score. They have the same score of 53. Very similar watches, both 36 millimeters. Smiths is a little bit cheaper. And uh, yeah, similar outcome as before. Don't recommend it for the apocalypse. Next, we have the Venturo Field Watch 3. S same thing going on. We're not doing all the numbers anymore. They're too cool to put up the numbers on your field watch that you're just... Are you trying to look cool or are you trying to tell the time? Because <laughs> when you're missing the numbers on your watch, it makes it harder to tell that time. Okay, so the score is 53. And uh, it's 40 millimeter watch and it's $432. All right, the Roebuck Ranger. Never heard of Roebuck. I don't know how big these guys are. They're probably a micro brand. Their icon here with the R looks very similar to RZE. 
but the Roebuck Ranger, I like to see all these numbers, I like to see the minutes, um, just doesn't quite make it. This uh, turning dive bezel thing gets it a complication penalty. If they didn't have that thing, it would be, it would make the cut, but it doesn't make the cut. Next we have the Citizen BM8595-16H. This one also does not make the cut. It looks pretty cool. These two complications hurt it. It would make the cut without that. Next we have the San Martin SNO107G. And this um, 38 millimeter watch is $268 and gets a score of 52. They did this part right. They have 100 meters water resistance and a screw down crown. That is good, but it has other shortcomings. Next, and this is sad, next is the Prezidis service watch. It is $259, it is 38 millimeters, and it has a score of 51. Do you remember when I told you how the Swiss Military Avenue Quartz was going to beat, like, legitimate field watches? Well, here we go. Prezidis. This should have done better. I'm sorry, Prezidis, this is sad. Water resistance, 50. Push bull crown. Fix that and you have a viable field watch. It's, it's confusing to me how they're not doing that. We saw the Casio that was $34 that has 100 meters water resistance. So why can't you do it? Praise it is. I don't know. But yeah, I don't recommend this for a field watch. Next we have the Benris 3061. <laughs> Same story as the Praise it is. It's 50 meters. It's a push pull. There's no crown guards. It's an automatic movement. And uh, yeah, score is 51. It could do better. Benris should do better. Your American brand with all this heritage, just give it the water resistance. Make that crown screw down. Modernize this thing. And it will be competitive with other field watch options. Now here's the Undone Terra Daybreak. This looked great. I looked at the dial. I thought, okay, we got a winner here. 50 meters. Push pull. Similar story as these other guys. Got to get it together, people. Give it that water resistance. You're, you're just, there's so many out there that actually do have the water resistance and the screw down. And those are your competition and you're losing your competition. Just up these metrics here. Score 51. Oh, 37 millimeters, $295. Looks very cool. And you can customize it. That's one of the cool things about Undone is that they allow you to customize all different elements. You can change out the hands, those sorts of things. I don't remember all the customizations you can do, but they're cool about that. Case shape is really nice too. Really like this case shape. Next is the Radia Trinity Black. This thing looks really cool. I don't know what's going on with the dial here, but that looks nice. That's some nice photography or if it's a nice dial design or it's both. It looks really cool. It's $479 and it's a 39 millimeter. Sweet size. Um, this does have a screw down crown and 100 meters water resistance but it doesn't have the traditional field watch format. So in order to make the cut, you have to beef up a lot of other stuff too. You kind of have to go above and beyond. You've got to have the fixed lug bar, all these other sorts of things. Didn't make the cut. Next is the Molnia Green Ray. This is an in-house. They make their own caliber here. In-house. It's a, it's a hand winding movement with anti-shock. I think this is the only hand winding with anti-shock that I have on the list. And it is a 44 millimeter watch, so kind of big. $352, score 50. Very cool watch, doesn't need the complication, doesn't need to be so big. Um, it has no loom that holds it back. What else to say? And keeping with the Russian thing, there's a, another watch with a score of 50 that's a Russian watch. There's a Stramansky Volmax Gagarin. Um, this watch is what this is the first watch worn to space by Gagarin. I'm sorry about mispronouncing, mispronouncing his name and the word mispronounce, mispronouncing the word mispronounce. I think this is a bomb here showing the Soviet bomb exploding the capitalists or something. But um, Stramansky, I love that it's got the Cyrillic there. That's cool. It's kind of a plain thing. I don't really get the style of this. Um, they're charging a lot of money. 427. I don't know what movement is in there. Stellano Vorossi. Probably has a Vostok or something like that. The loom looks kind of weird too. I don't know. It's a cool watch. I'll give it that. It's definitely a cool watch. They have cool fonts I've never seen anywhere else. But it's just not robust enough for the apocalypse. 
don't take it to fight predator in the in the jungle because it's got the 50 meters of water resistance, push pull, no crown guards. That's kind of all it takes to really tank one of these watches is those sorts of things. So Stromanski doesn't make the cut. Here's the second hour Saddleberg. Score of 48. It is a 40 millimeter watch with $469 as the price. It's a field watch, so it made my list. Next we have the Slava Spetsnaz Professional. It's a 43 millimeter, $301 watch. It is a score of 48. This one is a lot better than that other Spetsnaz we saw in the under $200. We were in zinc before, and now if you're a professional Spetsnaz, you want a steel watch. Okay, that's what we've learned with the Spetsnaz. What does that say? Professional. It says professional in Cyrillic right there. That is cool. Um, it's an automatic, so it loses some points from there. Yeah, there's no save in this thing, and I'm not going to go into the, all the <laughs> myriad details why. It just didn't make the cut, but... I mean, I can see the appeal of it. It is a bit much, 300 bucks for this thing. It is cool though. It appeals to my desire for quirky Russian watches. Next, we have the Arcadia G1.0 Durafine field watch. The first watch with the graphene on the case. So this gets a score of 48. There's only loom on these four little plots here that are kind of big. I don't care for the aesthetics of this watch whatsoever, but yeah, I don't know how great these guys are doing business-wise. It's $229, 40-millimeter watch. It's quartz. That's kind of tough. They do have this ring here with the compass. I don't think I gave them a penalty for that, but I probably should have. So it should probably score even lower because this is distracting. You've got a 30, 15. You've got these numbers all around the dial that you just have to ignore because they're not going to help you tell the time, which is what the watch is for. But anyway, it's got... 50 meters of water resistance and a push-pull crown and no crown guards. I don't recommend this one. I don't think people are probably pounding on the door of Arcadia to get these watches though. No offense to whoever designed this. Next we have the TD Polyat Sturm 430-3130. This is a $236 watch with a size of 45 millimeters. Uh oh, there's maybe an airplane on it. I think I missed something. Sorry guys. Uh, so we'll go quick. It's got numbers for the minutes. I like that. Big honking 45 millimeter watch with all these ridges on the outside. This style is not my style, but it, it, it's somebody's style. We know that. Score 48. Next, waiting to see a Seiko. I think we already did see a Seiko earlier. Okay, we already saw the SRP J85. Here's the SRP G41. 40 millimeter watch, $268. I think they're not charging crazy prices for this. It's just not a great field watch for the apocalypse because it's automatic, because it has two complications. That really hurts it. If it was quartz and no complications on it, this would be a solid contender in the field watch for the apocalypse market. Score 46. Next we have the Trafford Crossroads Terlingua. Price of $499, just squeaking in. Size of 38 millimeters. Did I put high contrast? This is not so high contrast that are on the outside, actually. I'm struggling to read the time here that I'm looking at right now. Is it 10.07, 10.08? Well, it's 10.07. I can. It's almost 10.07, but this is murky. That's not great. Um, yeah, a lot of... You're not going to see field watches in this rectangular design because you really just want the, the markings to be right where the hand is. And when you have these corners, the hand just doesn't reach all the way out. Makes it a little harder to tell, and also these little markings are not high contrast. There's other reasons why this watch does not... It's not a great field watch. Score 46. Now the Rotary RW1895. This looks really cool. It's a size of 40 millimeters, 358 bucks, and a score of 45. You probably see what I mean though. In the under 200 price category, we would have watches with a score of 45, and they would look bizarre. You have some good, really good looking watches in this one that are just not scoring well. But maybe you just buy it because you think it looks cool. And if that's what you want to do, go ahead. Just, uh, if zombies or if ninjas like parachute into your neighborhood and they're running around and you have to go out and fight them or you have to go live in hiding or something in a tent and I don't know what you're doing. I can't think of a scenario. Grab a different watch other than the rotary on the uh, lizard stamped leather 
strap. Just grab something else. It'll do you better. Next is the Undone Terra Safari. Similar to that other Undone Field Watch we saw, but this one doesn't have the military time. Score of 45. Uh, 37 millimeters, $325. Next is the Illinois Watch Company. This is a 35 millimeter watch, $225. It's quartz. It has military time. I thought, okay, this doesn't look like a field watch, but man, it may actually do well. It did not do well. It has a score of 43. I don't recommend this one. Next, we have the Vague Watch Company Ever One. This is clearly somebody's love letter to the old Rolex Explorer. This is really cool looking. I will give it that. Um, it's a 34 millimeter. That's the smallest you'll see on my list. I think there's a place for 34 millimeter watches. There absolutely is for men. $495 watch. This one has a push-pull crown with no crown guards and 50 meters water resistance. It's not a very sturdy field watch. You kind of want your field watch to be sturdy. At least I do. Here's a Santo Automatic Officer Classic Round 6302. 43 millimeters in size and $395. It has two complications, which is too bad. Score 41. Now we're at the bottom five, people. Home stretch. Next, we have the Walden Heritage Professional. This has no minute hash marks, so you just have to guess if it's between the uh, major minute markings. <laughs> it's actually a quartz. Um, it's 40 millimeter watch, 300 bucks. Didn't make the cut. It's 41. It's the T-Cell Marine watch. Price of $326, 40 millimeter watch. Score of 40. Next we have the Chronologia Ranger. I only gave it one complication here for this thing here. I actually, did I give it credit? Oh, I didn't. It has some minute Arabics. It has a 20, a 40, and a 60. Maybe you should add three points to this. So instead, okay, add three points to this. This is a 41. 41. I've got a lot way to go to actually become viable. This is a forged carbon case. Darn it. Oh, that's the thing. It's You can't just make it forged carbon and it succeeds as a field watch. You got to do some other stuff too. But forged carbon, that's really cool. Didn't make the cut. We've got the Molnia Achaes Adin. This is a huge watch, 48 millimeters, for no reason. What the heck is on this dial? Absolutely nothing. Just empty black for you to stare at. Why? It's an automatic movement. Why is it 48 millimeters? Who knows? It's a huge monstrous watch. I don't recommend it as a field watch. And finally, in last place, the bottom. The worst field watch I could find from $200 to $500 is the Mondane Essence. I know this was supposedly some kind of train watch, like your, your train engineer or something. It's quartz, it's plastic, and it costs $245. I can see why someone would buy it for the looks and for the history, all that sort of thing, but I think whoever buys it is going to be disappointed that it's 30 meters water resistance that it's a push-pull crown. The quartz is probably gonna disappoint them. There's no loom on it. I think this watch would disappoint whoever purchases it. If you really like it, don't let my bad attitude ruin your watch that you like. I don't think it's a good field watch. So that was it for the $200 to $500 category. Takeaways are there's some really cool watches in this category. There's some heavy hitters. There's some solid players in this category. And if you only have three or four hundred dollars to spend on a field watch, you can get the best field watch there is for that price. In my opinion, the Bertucci is the best. You can get that Bertucci. That is the best watch for the specific use case of telling the time easily and just not breaking. Next, we move on to 500 to 1,000, which I think you're really gonna like. The watches get prettier from this point onwards. There still are a few gems hidden in the weirdness. You'll see. All right, field watch is $500 to $1,000. I'm really excited to show you all this. Um, this category actually has my top, my number one field watch of all 330 field watches. I'm not gonna let slip what it is. 
Um, at the end of the video, I take these scores and I adjust them for brand heritage and just um, aesthetics, how I like the watch, these sort of considerations. I, I'll give you my top 10. What are the top 10 field watches? Keeping in mind that, <clears throat> keep in, keeping in mind that you want the watch to look really good and be good for the apocalypse, but it's not just the apocalypse thing that's not your only concern with the field watch. So the number one is in this price category. I'm not gonna let slip what it is. I will try to contain my enthusiasm for the watch as I go through, but this one has a lot of really good ones. Let's just dive right into it. All right, here are my top five. In fifth place is the Mark II Crucible A11. This thing looks so nice. Um, it is a $650 watch, size of 39 millimeters, and the total score is 70. And I really like this dial. It kind of looks like a chalkboard. Um, these little minutes on the outside kind of look almost like they were even hand-drawn with chalk. This font is very simple. I, it's a really pretty looking watch. We saw other ones that look that have a similar score of 70 in, in the lower price range that would fulfill the same purpose. But this one just looks a little bit nicer. So if you want to spend a little more money and go with something nicer, this is a nice, this is a good option. Um, it's got a screw down crown. It's got a lot of things people like. It's got the sapphire crystal, the automatic movement. It's a serviceable field watch for going out and trying to find Bigfoot or whatever you're doing out in the field. Take this one and you will do fine. Next is a watch that I kind of, I kind of dissed the watch brand a little bit. I said, oh, this is the only one that's gonna make the cut. They don't have any other good ones in their catalog. Well, I forgot about this one. This is a new release, newer release by them. Um, this is the Marathon Officers Mechanical GPM. It's a hand winding watch. It's 36 millimeters, so not 34. Uh, actually, their officer's course is also 36. But yeah, this one gets a score of 70. It does really well, actually. It has a water resistance of 50 meters. Um, it has tritium indices on it. And I'm sorry I gave Marathon a hard time. They do have a watch that I believe is a contender. It's a viable option for going out in the woods and having extreme scenarios. And this is this is the one. I would like to try this watch someday. It looks really nice. The lugs are still a little bit crazy wide here. I don't know what's, this is a little bit nuts here. This watch actually does have the fixed, the fixed lug bar here. It does have, I call it welded lugs, has the fixed lug bar so you can't remove the, the bar. And that is really sturdy. You're not gonna have to worry about a spring bar breaking. So that's really nice. In number three, we have the Victorinox Enox Carbon. And uh, Enox being a word for metal when you spell it all the way out. But this is not metal, this is forged carbon. This watch means business. It's $900, the size is 43, so it's kind of big. Um, it has a total score of 71. In order to justify the $900, they've had to market heavily to get you to, to buy a watch that's quartz and it's $900. I don't see the quartz stigma. I think this is a great option for a field watch. You know, with the market the way it is, they do have to actually, they have to justify this price and they have justified the price. They show tanks running over it, all this other crazy stuff, and it's deserving of the price that it has. It has the numbers one through 11, there's no 12, but they did manage to keep all the numbers and then, and still have a date window by kind of nestling it between the four and five. From a utility standpoint, I think that's kind of okay. I still would prefer not to have the date at all and I do think it looks stupid there at that spot. It's hard to have a date window that doesn't look stupid, but also is not confusing to the eyes. So I prefer not to have a date on a field watch at all, but I've been over that a million times. I'm sorry for harping on it. Um, it does have these nice crown guards and a chunky screw down crown. It does have 100, well, it says 200 meters water resistance. 200, 100, both are good enough for a field watch in my opinion. But yeah, the forged carbon is a really cool material. It is, it has a higher tensile strength than steel, higher tensile strength than titanium, and yet it is significantly lighter. It is a very light material and a very strong material. Um, it's also very expensive. So that's why you don't see forged carbon all that much, but 
if you can make your case out of forged carbon, then it's, it's really good. There's variation in quality to forged carbon, but Victorinox makes really good forged carbon. So if you're gonna trust somebody with your forged carbon, I would trust them to get it right. And this is a sweet watch. Moving on. In second position, we have the Zodiac Olympos Field. Now I know this is a limited run with, with actually the numbers on it. The normal Olympos doesn't have the numbers. This is a worn and wound deal, but you can still pick them up. Um, it does have some crown guards here. It, 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 it comes up a little bit here. The case comes to protect that crown on either side. So, th so that counts as crown guards. This is a very unique watch. You're not going to see another watch with a manta ray case like this. You're just not going to see it. This is, this is the only one that does that. Very cool. It's an automatic movement, which is penalized on my scoring system. It'd be 80. It'd be a score of 80 if it had a quartz instead of an auto. But this is a solid field watch. I really like it. I shouldn't reveal how much I like this one. Now, <laughs> is this in the top 10? Is it the number one? You're just gonna have to wait and see. I, I'm hoping my feelings, my, my description of these watches doesn't reveal which one is the top one beforehand because I don't want to spoil it for you. But anyway, this one has a score of 72. And in the number one spot, score-wise, the, the best option out of the box to go crawl around where, while aliens are trying to hunt you down and you need your watch and you need to be able to tell the time and have it be robust, the number one in the $500 to $1,000 price range is the Cincinnati Cincinnatus Centurion. It has a price of $549 and a size of 40 millimeters. I've mentioned this before, $549 is at the lower end of the spectrum of $500 to $1,000. And the top scoring watches typically are kind of closer to the bottom rather than the top of that price range. That's just how it works out. But it has a score of 73. This has a screw down crown. It doesn't have crown guards, but it's kind of going for that more sophisticated look, sort of like the Hamilton khaki field automatic I have on my wrist here. Um, unlike the Hamilton, it doesn't have quite as big of a crown which is a blessing. The, the Hamilton crown is too big. It has a nice polished bezel that is going to get scratched. I know it will. Mine is scratched like you would not believe. But the Cincinnati is going to get all scratched up. I think that's okay. That's not the point of the field watch. You don't care if it gets scratched, right? It has a really cool looking railroad minute track around the outside with these little triangles. And I really like how they have kind of nestled these um, military time hours within that railroad track where it's there if you need it but it doesn't distract you if you don't the eye is drawn toward the standard time and when you have the military time in the middle it does kind of busy up the dial unnecessarily so nestling them here within the minute track is a really nice move i've seen others do that as well i think cincinnati does it better than a lot of the other ones because these are still a size that's large enough to easily see but they chose to make the color just blend in a little bit more with this um, coppery bronze color that this minute track is painted in and so so the eye is really drawn more to the standard time i really like the texture dial here i don't know if texture dial is going to go out of fashion but it is in fashion right now to have texture dials and i like it the second hand has a red marker on the end and a little loom plot here. Usually you just get one or the other. You, like you get a red accent or a loom. You don't get both typically, but this is, this is the best of both worlds. And the counterbalance is really interesting. And uh, the branch has a lot of heritage. And I'm probably talking too highly of this one and revealing the feelings of my heart on this one. It's a great watch. All right, let's continue. And as I've done with the other price categories, here's the visual overview of what's to come ahead. Oof, there's very few just straight recommend out of the box. You see only six of those. And then three more that I recommend on NATO. Yeah, out of all the 60 watches I looked at, looks like I only recommend nine total. It's a little bit odd. But anyway, I will show you. Here's that first slide. We already saw all those. Next, Woolbrook, Studio Underdog, Vare, Benrus, Hamilton. Merci, Echo Nutura, Victorinox, Benrus, Orion, SWC, from here on out, there none of these are recommended. Dryden, Hamilton, Hamilton, Wasson. Do you want to know why the Hamiltons don't make it? Keep watching and you'll find out. Yema, Nevada, Baltic, Protec, Formex. Formex saddens me greatly. It's a beautiful watch. 
but we're not trying to win beauty contests. We're trying to stay alive in the jungle. SWC, Serica, Certina, Clements, Traska. Young Hans, Akron, Stella, Ferrer, Hamilton, Stova, Shinola, Signum, Marie Lacroix, Shinola, Tissot, Seiko, Seiko Alpinist, not recommended. Watch to see why. Tool Watch Company, Tsao, Steinhardt, Origin, Tissot, Epoch, Marie Lacroix, Leco, Seiko, RGMT, Certina, Notice, Zelos, Hesili, Mondaine, Steinhardt, Duxet. Yeah, so that's it. If any of these caught your eye, if you want to hear my take, why did I, why was I so mean to the beloved, sacred Seiko Alpinist that everybody loves so much? Well, keep watching ahead and you'll find out. Hint, it's a little bit fancy. It's not really for extreme watch scenarios. But anyway, watch ahead and you'll see. Or if you don't want to watch the whole thing, I recommend you use the timestamps now. Skip ahead to that next price category, 1000 to 5000 The choice is yours. Number six, Woolbrook Outrider Automatic. They lost the Douglas. Where'd the Douglas go? Now it says Woolbrook only. Shock resistant. Um, I did factor that into the scoring, anti-shock. We're going to start to see more of that, more anti-shock technology, which helps it out. If you're going to use an automatic movement, hey, put in some anti-shock technology. This is a $522 watch, size of 40 millimeters. Score of 69. If it was on a NATO, this would be the number one pick. This would actually be the number one in this price segment. They put it on the leather. I know you can swap them out, and that's why I'm explaining that you can swap it out. But for my scoring, I tried to just say, who's the most serious about a field watch? This company, if they're putting it on a leather, they're just not as serious as the other ones. So it has a score of 69. It is a screw down crown. It is 100 meters plus of water resistance. It does have a great dial here with all 1 through 24 numerals and little minutes on the outside. A great option. Total score 69. Next we have the Studio Underdog Series 2. This is such a cool watchmaker. I really like what they do. S score 65, this doesn't pass my, my recommendation threshold. This is not a field watch I recommend for taking to war. This is the one you leave at home, you take something else. And the reason why is it's just a little bit under. They could just do one or two things and bump it up. They could put the military time. They could do it subtly on the outside or something like that. Just underneath. But it's a 37 millimeter watch. It costs $900 and it has that score of 65, like I said. Next we have the Veyer A12. Veyer did really well in the lower category too. This one is not quite a passing grade. Their other watches were like solar quartz. This one is an automatic. And it has this extra complication here at the six o'clock, the dirty dozen small seconds that's offset from the main pinion. I'm not a fan of that. And yeah, so I don't recommend it for extreme scenarios. Next, we have the Benris Field Automatic F1 BK BKNC. Price of $875, size of 41 millimeters. This one gets so much right. This is probably the best Benris offering we've seen. It's already on a NATO, so you can't salvage it that way. You know, if they lost the complication, I would recommend this as a field watch. This is also low contrast. We don't see that penalty all that often, but, and that's not enough to save it, it's only minus two points, but the, the low contrast here is not great. This is too dark. Just uh, lighten up your loom a little bit. Just make the loom a little bit lighter or the dial a little darker, but either way, these are too close. The scale from light colors to dark colors, these are really close on that scale. I think, I mean, the numerals are a little bit lighter than the, than the dial, so just make that a bigger difference and that'll help but it won't save it. Uh, I don't recommend this for the apocalypse. Next, we have the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical Brown. And they make this in cooler colors. This isn't their best color option. When I first did this, I bronze was, was penalized a lot heavier. And so if a company offered a watch in steel and bronze, I would always choose the steel. And actually at that point, the PVD was helping it at all. It does not help it anymore on the scale. PVD st steel and normal steel is not helping it for the survival of the uh, the attacks in the woods, you know, the coordinated attacks and the fighting for your life. PVD does help it survive longer. For example, guns a lot of times have those coatings on the outside, and it does protect it from corrosion and that sort of thing. So PVD is a nice thing. Anyway, I'm getting way off track. This watch is $645, has a nice size of 38 millimeters, but this one is below my recommend threshold. 
it is only a score of 61. I'll just mention one thing they could do to fix this problem and be recommended for the apocalypse is they could up this water resistance to 100. And then, boom, you'd be all set. Do it, Hamilton. Next, we have the Mercy LMM01 Original Mechanical. Price of $646, size of 38 millimeters. Don't recommend it for the apocalypse. This is really cool. I mentioned this with their one of their quartz offerings. I think it was in the under 500 category. They have a nice price spread here. Their, their really cheaper quartz one looked a lot like a school clock, and this one does as well, and I really like that. It's not the best field watch, you can kind of tell that. I thought, oh, you can kind of make it work, but it's just, if they gave this 100 meters water resistance, then yes, I would recommend this. It's below that recommendation threshold. That doesn't mean don't buy the watch. It just means it's not the best for taking a war, going out in the jungle. You have better options. Next is the Echo Nutra Averau 39. 39 millimeters, like it says in the title. It is a $650 watch, and it has a score of 60. It has that date, which I think should go, because look, 01, 02, 21, what the heck? Go ahead, make fun of me that I that I <laughs> am challenged by numbers that I'm supposed to disregard. But anyway, it, that's fair. I know not everybody has that, that mental handicap that I apparently have. But yeah, I take five points off for the complication. It almost looks like it's plastic, but this is steel. I said high contrast, but look, that's not super high contrast. These colors are getting a little bit close. It'd be nicer if these were a little bit whiter here. They're trying to look too cool for school, and they do. It, it's a very cool looking watch. Um, I like the sector thing going on here. They've definitely got some stuff going on. Lowercase e, oops, I put an uppercase one. Anyway, lowercase e here. That's how you know they're really trying to be fancy. They're really trying to look cool. What does that say over there? Automatic is over here at the nine. Their second hand has a little white thing. These guys really are trying to be cool. Um, just make things a little bit more artsy. And they, they succeeded, it's more artsy, but it's not a more, but it's not a more viable field watch. Here's the Victorinox, ignore the typo, Victorinox Field Force Sport Titanium. Price of $750, size of 42 millimeters. This looks very sporty, but I think there's a place in the field watch marketplace for sporty watches, and just anywhere. You could wear a sporty watch if you're doing extreme things, if you're doing cool stuff, blowing stuff up in uh, desert environments or whatever you're doing. Um, but this is a 60, but it's not on a NATO. If you put it on a NATO strap, I think it's great for those uh, sandy environments and the explosions. If I had my way, the complications would go. You'd get your military time on here too. But already, um, put it on a NATO and it's a score of 70. This one gets my thumbs up. I like the minutes on the outside here. That's a really good way to do it. Um, the hours are really what we're looking for. So you put those minutes on the outside, they're out of the way, but it still comes into your mind, at least mine. It helps me to see, oh, this is 52, because I see the 50 right there. That really helps me a ton to read the time quickly and easily. So I like this one. Next is another Benris that doesn't make the cut. This is the Benris DTU 2AP. Has a score of 59. The price, the price is $595 and it has a size of 40 millimeters. And familiar refrain as before, push-pull, no crown guards, 50 meters water resistant. Score of 59. Next is the Orion Field Standard 2. Price of $750, and it's a size of 39. I think it's fair for me to voice my critiques here. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but if I was gonna spend $750 on a watch, if I was gonna save up for months to afford a really nice watch, why would I spend it on this thing? I'm sorry, guys. The The font looks bad. It looks really bad. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and my eye is, like, crying from, from what this looks like right now. Yeah, I'm just gonna move on. I don't care for this one. Sorry, guys. Now, here's a beaut. This is the SWC Trench Blue. This is a sweet-looking watch. It has a score of 56, so if you put it on a NATO, it gets in. It gets in just under the wire, or above the wire, whatever proximity to a wire, it gets in there. This is a $595 watch, it's 38 millimeters, beautiful size. It's made of titanium. It's polished really beautifully. I don't see titanium treated this way very often. I'm sure it's gonna get dinged up. But yeah, it's got a score of 56. So like I said, put it on that NATO. Very classic field watch dial format. 
very nice railroad track on the outside with the the thicker markings for every five minutes. Oh, this is beautiful, and it's a hand winding watch. There are some hand winding watches that that make it, and this is one of them. Obviously, it's a push pull. There's no screw down to it, and there's no crown guards. So they did a lot of things right to get in, um, to to become a recommended watch without the crown guards, without the screw down, um, with the hand winding movement. So, you know, they're doing a lot of good stuff here. Titanium, all that kind of stuff. So this gets my thumbs up. I really like this one. And that that dial, if it looks like that in person, oh man, that is beautiful. Apparently they just shellac this thing in loom. It is gonna light up so bright. So. Very good choice there. All right, next is the Dryden Heartlander. Price of $500, and it's a 38 millimeter. Guys, just cut it $1, and you're going to be in the lower price tier. Anyway, um, total score of 55. So even on a NATO, it doesn't make the cut. This is very cool, though. It's similar to the Hamilton khaki that I've got on my wrist right now, um, but it lacks the military time. It also has a really cool hour hand here. It's got kind of like a Tudor Ranger style handset here. Man, that minute hand really goes out to the edge. But yeah, I compare it to the, the Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic, and it's a very similar watch. It does have screw down, so that's nice, but it lacks the military time. And it's got this date complication. They almost tricked me here. Look at this, it says a six. When that thing says a seven, how confusing is that gonna be? Right there, where you expect to see the hour, instead it's a date. So, <laughs> you deserve to fail. Dryden, no, that was, that was cruel. They took off that date, it's a recommend for me, dog. But right now, nah, I, I don't recommend this one. Next we have the Hamilton Murph. Price of $895, size of 38. This has the same case, it appears to me, as the Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic. I, I'm, I'm looking at the Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic right next to it. Um, actually, these three watches, the Dryden, the Hamilton, and the Hamilton, they're all the same score, very similar watches, uh, just all subtle differences, but the same kind of vein where they're just so close. If you combine them somehow, you took the screw down from the Dryden, you took the lack of date complication of this one. You took the military numbers of the, the Hamilton Khaki Field Auto. If you took all those things together, okay, you've got a viable field watch. But each one of these is falling just under the mark. Too bad. This doesn't make the cut, and it is so close. I really like the cathedral hand here. That is really cool. We saw a spade shape earlier. This is similar to that spade shape, but it's um, a little bit different. And then that syringe hand here. It's a really cool looking watch and I like the numbers. I really like the style of it. I just think they could have helped it out a little bit more. If it had the screw down crown, it'd be, it would make it. It would be pretty and also ready for business. But right now it's just pretty. Next we have the Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic 38. I had to specify 38 millimeter because 38 falls into my Goldilocks zone. 37 millimeters to 40 millimeters which is a, the, great, the perfect size for a field watch. It has a price of $759? My goodness, that costs a lot of money. And a size of 38 millimeters. I'm wearing the 42 on my wrist. 42 loses a point for the size, so it's score even lower than the one we have on the screen. I did not pay $759. I think I paid 400 something, uh, but I bought it gray market. Oof, Hamilton charges a lot of money. And it's, there's better options for field watches that look sophisticated, and will serve you well in the field. That, what was the one that we saw? Well, the Woolbrook looks a lot better. The Woolbrook is a much better watch than this one. It was in, it was in the other category. The, the, one, the one that just like takes, a, takes it away from Hamilton is that Smoke Jumper, the Momentum Smoke Jumper that was a solar watch. That one really just kind of renders this Hamilton khaki a little bit meaningless, especially the price difference, $759, oof. Next we have the Wasson Automatic Field. This thing looks absolutely huge compared to the 38. This is a 43, getting five millimeters more on the, the Hamilton. It is $695 and yeah, that size of 43 millimeters. Doesn't make the cut. I've seen these on Instagram. It doesn't mean business. 
it looks like it means business. It really does. It looks like a viable field watch option. What really hurts these is the automatic movements. You do a push pull and you have an automatic movement. That really takes a lot of the wind out. 13 points. You lose 13 points for all that. And this is just a few points below being in the territory where you can put a NATO on it and, and survive. So I just think, I think they're better options. Next, we've got the Yema Urban Field, $949 and it's 38 millimeters. Really getting up there in price. And the score is 54. So I don't recommend this, even if you put it on a NATO. It's nice that there's no date, but they're starting to do the mix of numbers and non-numbers, just weird symbols and stuff. And it looks cool, I'll give it that. The green looks really cool. Yeah, it's a pretty watch. Pretty watch for a pretty person. Not for a manly man that's gonna wrestle a bear in the woods. Next we have the Nevada Super Antarctic. The price is $845 and the size is 38 millimeters. And they're trying to be like the Explorer again, the Rolex Explorer. There's a lot of Rolex Explorer copiers here. Hot take, I think the Rolex Explorer is not the best field watch. That, that Rolex Explorer could be better. Well, we're gonna see the Rolex Explorer later, so just hold on, hold on to your seats, or skip ahead to the uh, over $5,000 category. I believe that's where Rolex sits. Yes, it does, it's over $5,000. Hey, head up there and see what I think about the actual Rolex Explorer. But this gets a score of 54. Next we have the Baltic Hermetic Tourera. Uh, I'm, I'm mixing accents here. I don't really have any real accents. But anyway, the price is $602, 37 millimeters. This one does get crown guards. They put that crown so tiny and they nestled it into the case. So you're not gonna bump that crown on stuff. That's actually really nice. It's an elegant solution. I bet it feels really good when you wear it. So I'm a fan of this. It's not a hand winding movement, so who cares? Um, if it was a hand winding movement, that would be just awful, but it's not a hand winding movement, so not too bad. Score 54, so I don't recommend it for fighting Godzilla. Next we have the Protec Titanium Field Watch 3002. The price on this is $550 and the size is 40 millimeters. This is one of those watches where you get some really sweet tritium and you save some money over brands like Ball, these other watches that are charging a lot more for the tritium. But tritium is expensive. In order to lower this price, they kind of cut some corners in other areas. I think the design is very plain um, and it doesn't score well on my scoring system. So I don't recommend it. Score of 54. <sighs> Guys, this next one is sad. Um, my first go round of trying to do this, trying to develop a scoring system. I had this Formex in the top. I even recorded everything. And then I noticed severe flaws in the system, things I wasn't taking into account, and I redid the whole thing. And after that, the Formex, which was in my top 10, it fell from grace pretty hard. Um, it has a score of 53. And this is one where my heart says, yes. My heart says, go, <laughs> this is a field watch. This thing is awesome. But it doesn't make the cut. It has 100 meters water resistance. It has a screw down crown. At a certain point, you're just, you're getting too far from the protection. You're getting too far from the utility. So the protection, we're getting 22 out of 50 points, less than half of the points they left on the table. What do they miss on, out on for protection? It's not on a NATO strap. At spring bars instead of um, a monolithic case, welded lugs, whatever you want to call it. It's got an automatic movement instead of a quartz or solar quartz. Um, it doesn't have crown guards. And then it has a flushed crystal instead of a recessed crystal. So all those things I mentioned take off all those points and bring it down to a 22. It's not the most protected field watch. It should be better protected. If they added crown guards to this, it would bump it up to a recommend. If they did a quartz instead of an automatic, it would bump it up to recommend. Heck, if they did the welded lug thing, that would bump it up to a recommend as well. So it's, it's very close, but yeah, this one is not a watch I recommend for extreme scenarios. All right, we've got the SWC Hyper G. We've already seen a watch from SWC. This one has a complication on it. Is that the only difference? 56 versus 53. That's the main thing that draws down the score on this one compared to its brother. 
The price on this is $595, the size is 41 millimeters. This dial is very striking. I really like that burgundy color. It's, it's really nice to see that on a watch. Um, score 53 means I don't recommend it for the apocalypse. Next we have the Serica 6190 Commando. Price of $903 and a size of 38 millimeters. This is another big disappointment for me because I heard Serica was like supposed to be the ultimate field watch. Well, it's got a flush crystal. It's got a push-pull crown. Like it's just not the ultimate field watch. So that's too bad. It's got this weird bracelet. What are they doing with this weird bracelet? I don't know. I think I'm totally uninformed, but this looks weird to me. It looks like hair pulling. It looks just strange. I don't know what this, what's the deal with this bizarre looking bracelet. I'm sure somebody will tell me, or please do, please tell me why is this bracelet look so, so bizarre and funky. But anyway, score 53. Next we have the Certina DS8. Wow, this looks a lot like that Victorinox Sport. This is a titanium watch, size 42 millimeters, price of $687. And it says it's a chronometer, so maybe this movement accuracy number should be changed a little bit. Um, even if you took that penalty off entirely, well, that would actually change it. That would actually bump it up into recommend. I don't think a chronometer is quite the same accuracy as a quartz, so I don't think that would be fair. Maybe you could add a few points, but you're still not gonna be a recommended watch, Certina, unfortunately. You know, if they put all the numbers on here, it probably would be. So th that's a big problem for me. Um, the date is not great. Score of 52. Next we have the Clements Monroe Field Watch. That is a pretty Instagram watch right there. I really like it. And it's got a screw down crown and 100 meters water resistance. You know, a lot of times in the past, that was all it took to save those watches. Oh, just, just do those two things, boom, you're safe. Well, this one is not saved. It already has those on there. Uh, the mix of batons and numbers really hurts the legibility. And there's no minute Arabics, there's no military time. This is a field watch for showing off, not for fighting wars. Next, we have the Traska Summiteer 38. This is a $615 watch, the size is 38 millimeters, and similar to before. So this is a fancy pants field watch, if I'm gonna be a fancy pants. You know, it's blurring the lines. It's sort of like an everyday watch, or it's like, you know, I just wanna have a really stylish watch. That's fine. That's, that's, their, that's what they've prioritized at the top, in my opinion because you don't have all the numbers on there. And I think that's what Rolex was doing back with the Everest thing and the Rolex Explorer. That was a style at the time. It was a style, it wasn't a tool. And I know they built it to be more robust than the watches at the time, but that doesn't justify the, the dial format they used. The, the reason their watch was more rugged is because of what they did with the case and the gaskets and all this kind of stuff. It's not what they did on the dial. That's not what made it a better field watch. But people are imitating just that outward appearance of it. And I think I've mentioned before, you could have a watch with this kind of format. This is only 11 points off. You could have a watch that theoretically would score 88 and have everything else right. So it would be quartz, all these other things. In fact, we don't have to play the hypothetical game because we saw one of these early on. The Redwood Field V3. This one has the Explorer format and yet it has a score of 72 which would be quite high scoring in the price range of 500 to 1,000. So it can be done. It can definitely be done. You can have the style, you can have this format and still have a respectable field watch score. Traska doesn't make the cut, 52. Next we have the Junghans Form Quartz. And I did actually give this high contrast. Those, those hands are really tiny, um, which is the style of this particular watch. Uh, okay, let's not worry about that. Price of 532, size of 39 millimeters. The size of the hands are not what's causing it not to win. Win the strongman watch competition. It fails for, for other reasons. And uh, yeah, the water resistance here, push pull, no crown guards. It is a quartz though, but it's got that complication. I think this was the best young Hans I could find. Actually, you know what, we're, we're in 500 to 1000. When we go up to a higher category, I think there might be a better young Hans. Let's just wait and see. But yeah, the total score on this one is 51. Next is the Acrone CO3 MD Jungle. You guys, if there's anything you're gonna take to fight Predator, take the one that says Jungle on it. Oh, it doesn't say Jungle on the dial, but, but it says it in the product description, or 
it says that in the, the name of the watch. It says jungle. It's got a French flag here, I think. I hope that's French. Oh, but what's with this triangle? Are we being a pilot watch? I don't know, guys. Uh, there's a little thing to... This might be a pilot watch. Score 50. Let's just run from it because it might be a dirty, dirty pilot watch. Next is the Stella Felix Downtown Red. Price of $985. Size of 40 millimeters. Great size. Man, that crown is really sticking out there. That is some distance on that crown. Good grief. Oof. Um, total score is 50. This does not do it for me. It looks really... These numerals look weird. It just looks so weird, guys. This is not my style. Next is the Fair Hopewell 2. Price of $995. Size of 40 millimeters. And it's got a low protection score. That is, that is low. Um, total score of 49. The dial's actually pretty good. You've got some minutes on the outside. You've got all the numbers. There's no complication here. Everything's printed. Those sorts of things really help it. Um, but the protection is not cutting the mustard. Automatic hurts it, obviously. The, the water resistance. In fact, it's not on a NATO. The um, flush crystal, sapphire crystal. Yeah, it's, it's leaving a lot of points on the table there. Score of 49. Next, we have the Hamilton Khaki Field King Auto. Price of $762 and a size of 40 millimeters. And this one has crown guards. That's really cool. Um, you could put crown guards on this one too, Hamilton. That'd be sweet. You know, that would make this a recommended watch. So it's kind of interesting what they choose to do and what they don't choose to do on different models. And I'm not seeing from Hamilton any model that kind of combines all the traits that I would like to see in a field watch. It's nice that this case has those crown guards. I'm pleased to see that. Um, it also has the day date here, which they've kind of snuck in there. I don't think it's all that bad. I think this is a good spot to put it, but it's it's still not my favorite. I would prefer if it didn't have the day date for a field watch. Oh, you lose the red. Ugh, the king doesn't have a red tip anymore. Guess he got the doctor to, to cure that disease. Anyway, the score is 49. All right, next we've got the Stova Partitio. Price of $968, size of 37 millimeters. This one ranks at a 49, so I don't recommend it for the apocalypse. Next is the Shinola Vinton. I thought this guy had a chance. Uh, $695, 38 millimeter size. It could have made it, but uh, water resistance, push pull, no crown guards. It didn't make it. It's not a recommend. It does have printed indices, has no loom. I think they market to people who aren't necessarily knowledgeable about watches, and so that's not really gonna strike somebody as unusual, the fact that there isn't loom. Next, we have the Signum Siege. Price is $539, and the size is 40 millimeters. Signum is a really cool brand. They make really cool divers. I have a Signum watch that I really, really enjoy. It's beautiful, the loom is outrageously cool. And this one has really cool loom too. The orange loom looks really cool in photos. Um, this was their first shot at a field watch. And for me, it's not the one that you're gonna take to battle. You can kinda, when you look at it, you can tell that it's not, it hasn't placed that as the priority. So there's several things it could do to fix it up, but I'm not gonna go into that. Score 49. Next we have the Marie Lecroix Acon. Price, 825, size of 40 millimeters. And it's a plastic watch. I've had plastic watches do very well on my scoring system. It's not all that much of a penalty to have a plastic watch, actually. But this one did not do well. Even though it's quartz, which it gives it an advantage, it, it still did not score very well. Score 48. Next is the Shinola Canfield, model C56. No loom on this one either. It has applied indices that can fall off. Um, date complication, push pull, crown, 50 meters water resistance, no crown guard. I like to see these minutes. That's really nice. From a dial perspective, this is actually pretty good. Especially if you get lost the date. This is actually really nice here. But yeah, all together, you put it all together and the score is not that exciting. Next we have the Tissot Heritage 1938. This could be a viable field watch that you could actually use that you could give to an officer or something and it would hold up against more rugged options. 
it has it has a low protection score. That's the main problem with it. Score 47. And now we're finally to the Seikos in this category. It's like every category. When are you going to get to the Seikos? When are you going to get to the Seikos? And they're in the bottom 30% or something, typically. They had one in the last category that did a little better. But this is the Seiko SPV-155J. The price is $737, and it's a 38mm watch. Great size. At first glance, this looks like a contender. It really does. And it has 100 meters of water resistance. It has a screw-down crown. My scoring system really penalizes skipping the numbers, being too cool for school. And that's what they did. They're too cool for school. They don't give you the minutes. They don't give you the military time. On this one, they actually have printed indices, so that's good. It's got the complication. Didn't make the cut. There's better options. That's what all this is. There's better field watch options. Score 47. And here's one of those golden calves. People love themselves, the Seiko Alpinist. It seems like weeks since I recorded the, the bit about why I did this video, and it probably has been weeks, but I recorded, I, I said, <laughs> what did I say? It was so long ago. I said the, the watches you see in these like top 10 field watch videos, they always have this darn Seiko Alpinist. They really like it when they do these types of videos. It has applied indices. It has two complications. It has a complication that apparently moves around on its own, um, that has numbers on it that are not going to help you tell the time. It may confuse you if you see a 30 or you see a 60 here and it's in some weird place. Who knows what? Those might throw you off. The darn Cyclops. It does actually have crown guards. It does have a screw down crown. It is 100 meters water resistant. They've got a lot of stuff going for them here. It actually says 20 bar. It has plus, 100 plus. For me, Seiko is missing out on the more critical issues. It's a stylish watch to look stylish. They have a lizard pressed leather strap with it. This is supposed to be like, I'm going out in the woods but I'm still going to maintain my tie to civilization. This isn't, I'm going out in the woods and I don't know if I'm ever going to return. They're just not going for the ultimate field watch. They're going for a more sophisticated field watch. And that's their thing, but it doesn't pass my ultimate strong field watch evaluation test. Score 47. All right, this is the Tool Watch Company Arctic Field Watch. Put their name down here and the name of the watch up here. It's interesting. Price of $800. Size of 38 millimeters. This case looks really cool. It's a titanium case and they're not trying to disguise that. It is looking rough. This is some rough titanium. It is dark. It's all rough texture. That's all fine. But yeah, it didn't score well on my system. It looks really cool. I really like how it looks. Cool looking watch. Next is the Tsao Legacy. It's $575 and it's a 36 millimeter watch. It looks really cool. I love the purple. There are not many watches that come in purple, and I, I personally think purple is a very versatile color, and I like it a lot. Um, I do have a purple watch, and I think it looks really good, and I like wearing it. The total score is 46, so I don't recommend it for your extreme adventures, but it's still a really cool watch. Next is an absolute Goliath, a behemoth of a watch. We have the Steinhardt Military 47 Automatic. 47 stands for 47 millimeters across this case. I like where they put the military time on the outside. That's really cool. Um, the hands are cool. The dial is cool. I don't know why it's 47 millimeters. It's uh, $610 if I haven't already said that. But yeah, it's got a push-pull crown, no crown guards, and 50 meters of water resistance, and it has a score of 46. But it says military, so you know that military soldiers are using this. Right. Next we have the Origin Watch Company Vintage Field Watch. It looks really cool. This, these hands are really white. This has a price of $525 and a size of 41 millimeters. It looks really cool. I like the offset um, seconds over here at the nine o'clock. It's not the best for a field watch, but I, I like the style of this thing, but it's not really for taking a war. Um, this is a little weird with this hand, just kind of, it's just probably the photography, but these hands are so white that they just kind of blend into the numerals even. That's really interesting. Usually you see the metal of the hand, but these are white all the way to the edge. But this has a score of 45. Next is the Tissot Gentleman. Price of $507, size of 40 millimeters. Uh, no numbers on it really hurts it. 
It does seem fairly robust though. For an everyday watch, it seems fairly robust. Next is the Epoch 7019G, and I had to put it on my wrist while I talk about it. Um, this is one of my four <laughs> field watches. You've already seen the other three. So this is the last one that I even own that's a field watch. That will definitely change after this video. I just, I know too much about field watches now after doing all this that I have to get some more. Um, I don't know how many more field watches are gonna be in my future, but definitely one or two more for sure. But yeah, the, the Epoch 7019G, um, $678 and size of 43. Yeah, I had to save up for a while for this. I was really into tritium and I wanted all 63 tubes to have tritium. Everything on this has tritium. I'm definitely gonna show you a video here of what my personal Epoch looks like in low light. It is breathtaking. But does that make it a good field watch? No, it doesn't make it a good field watch just because it looks pretty. Yeah, it, it doesn't have any crown guards. That It would help to have some crown guards. It probably needs a ton of work. I'm not gonna go into it. These complications hurt it. It is nice to have the numbers on the dial. A lot of times with tritium watches, they think, eh, don't bother, don't put numbers on there, just have the tubes. So it's good they put the actual numbers on it, but it still didn't get all the way up to like the kind of field watch you grab when you're going to war. What's really interesting about this one is it says on the back, it doesn't say this on the back of my watch, but on the product listings, they say PLA officer or something to that effect. This is a, this is a watch they give to PLA officers. So, but it's the Chinese military. I don't necessarily want to emulate the Chinese military. Next is the Marie Lacroix Eliros date. Oh, they tell you about that date right in the name of the watch. It's $800, the size is 40 millimeters, and it gives a score of 43. It's a very pretty gentleman's watch. So yeah, naturally not the greatest go-to-war watch. Next we have the Leiko Navy. Ah, oh, sounding military there. They say it's a Navy watch. Um, it costs $510 and a size of 39 millimeters. It looks really cool. It's got a full loom dial. I love black hands. You don't see them much because people like loom so much. So pretty much the only time you see all black or blued hands, that sort of thing, is when you have a loomed dial or like on a Timex where you've got a backlight or something. But it is cool to see that. I love that look. It is really nice. But with a score of 42, this does not make the cut. Another Seiko. Here's the Seiko SPB117. Double complications again. Confusing compassy thing. Cluttering up the dial this gigantic Cyclops date thing. I think it's just an aesthetic thing. I think Seiko and me just don't get along. It's just too sophisticated. And they try to they try to thread that needle like we're sophisticated and we're outdoor. But it's just not coming across to me the outdoor part of it. And they did it, they, they did the screw down crown, they did the water resistance, but on my scoring system, it's not enough to make it a recommend. They're much better field watches in my opinion. Even, yeah, in this price category, there's much better field watches. Score of 42. Next is the RGMT Locust Hunter Green. When I looked, this was sold out on their website. So I don't know if they're making more of these, but the brand has been around for a while, so I assume they would, or they'll do some sort of little difference, so I included it. But anyway, the size is 44 millimeters. Price is $650. <sighs> That's a lot. Why am I just now balking? This whole price category is a lot, but you get one like this that's just using Seiko NH35, I think. And uh, yeah, for, it's a score of 42, so I don't recommend this one. All right, Certina DS7, Powermatic 80. So you know about their, their machine-made movements here with the 80 hour power reserve. Nice to see the crown guards, I like that. But the watch won't even take a NATO strap on this guy. This is not a field watch. Probably shouldn't have included it. Sorry, guys. Anyway, total score of 39. Next, we have the Notice Unity. And if I included the Certina, then the Notice is not that much difference. Let's be honest. This one gets a score of 39. Oh yeah, what are the dimensions? It's a 37 millimeter watch, $700. This will appeal to a lot of people. It's got a very cool style. I like it. Um, it has the, uh, the, uh, the dial that is reminiscent of something not so great. 
But yeah, anyway, it's a total score of 39, and so I don't recommend it. Last page. My voice is grateful that we're on the last page. 330 watches is a lot of watches to talk about, guys. But I do it in service to God and to all of you. It's my honor to be able to serve people with information that I've assembled here. I hope it's useful to you. Next, we have the Zellos Comet. Another really pretty Instagram watch with the uh, mm -hmm, dial here in the center. 39 millimeter watch is $629 if you buy this thing. And it didn't do it didn't score so well on my scoring system. Total score of 38. Next we have the Hesili Velvet Green Duo Tone. This is clearly not a product image, it's a render. So who knows what the actual watch looks like, but you know, I saw the minute Arabics, I thought, okay, there's numbers, maybe this would do okay. Did not do okay. Score of 36. We've got the mundane stop to go watch. These are really cool. The second hand pauses at a second for two seconds at the top, and the minute hand just flips over. The minute hand, from what I understand, doesn't constantly move. It literally clicks into place at the top of each hour, which is really cool. It's got 30 meters of water resistance, $685, and it's 41 millimeter. For quartz and 685, man, that thing's gotta be. That thing's gotta be rock solid. This is not particularly rock solid. I don't know, I'm sure people are buying these, but yeah. It's not a great field watch. Score of 35. Here's the Steinhardt Military 42 hand winding. If it says military, you know, it must be military. They really want it to be military. Maybe that's why they're putting it there. They're saying, hey, militaries, buy this watch for your soldiers. And the militaries are like, uh, come again? $599 for 42 millimeter watch with this onion crown and everything. I mean, Okay, no, no, why am I calling out the onion crown? That's actually fine. Partial one through 24, oh yeah, that's what it means when you have, wait, this should actually have one through 12 hours, um, no minute Arabic. So this should get a minus seven, not a minus 10. My bad, people. The, give this thing three more points. This is a 35, it ties with the mundane. So I messed up there. Some mistakes were bound to slip through, but I caught it before this went out to the world. Anyway, it's a hand winding movement. That's pretty cool. Lost a point, five points for this complication here. Score of 32. And to finally wrap up this $500 to $1,000 price range, it's the Duxit Altius. Who's paying $650 bucks for this thing? Man, some people must have a lot of money. 46 millimeters. These are actually printed. They look silver like they're, like they're some kind of metal. No, these are actually printed on. But this did not score well. It's really big, 46 millimeters. It has this crazy crown sticking out that's a push-pull. No crown guards. That thing is just begging to smack into something. And of course it's an automatic movement, so you're gonna damage the movement a lot easier. And it's only got 50 meters of water resistance. It's really easy to rag on this one, so I'm glad there's one at the bottom that I can uh, abuse a little bit. But yeah, the score is 31. Do not take this out into the jungle. Take something else. Take anything else. <laughs> this one's the bottom of the, the category for field watch. So just just take something else out with you. So that's the end. That's the end of the $500 to $1,000 category. There are some really cool things in this category. You know, those first few slides just had so many cool things going on. But it was interesting how even on slide two, even slide two, number seven, Studio Underdog, not recommended. We got to not recommended very quickly in this particular price category. And I hate to say it's only gonna get worse in the last two categories. There's still a gem waiting for you. There's still a really sweet watch. I think for these, these ones going on, I'm gonna try to speed it up a little bit. Just, you know what, I'll talk about the watches. Not harp so much on the score, but in this upper category, it's looks it's form over function, and a field watch should be function over form. In these upper price ranges, they kind of miss the mark. But there's a lot of cool stuff to see. You're really going to like it if you stay tuned. But if you're not into it, just skip ahead. Go check out my top 10 if you don't want to see these um, more expensive field watches. Anyway, enjoy, and God bless you. watches from $1,000 to $5,000.
This category is big money. I don't have any watches that are over $1,000. Um, for most people, that means you're gonna have to save up for a while. You're really gonna have to think about this purchase. So let's get into it. In number five, we have the Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic North Hollywood. This is not a typo, or if it is a typo, it's not my typo. This is what it says on their website. This watch is $1,146. It has a size of 40 millimeters. And if you've been watching so far, you've probably already seen that score at the bottom of 65 means I don't recommend this watch. Yes, it's in the top five, and I don't recommend it. So in this price category, we have a watch that made it to the top that is not a recommend. Um, its score of 65 is just below my recommendation threshold of 66. So don't recommend this one. It's interesting that they have this in their catalog here. It's a limited run. Um, it doesn't quite look like other Hamiltons. And they've made the interesting choice to make the 1 through 12 to be really dark. And in fact, I gave it a high contrast. Probably shouldn't have high contrast because look at how dark those numbers are. It's not great. But anyway, um, yeah, with the 65, you're just under. So they could do just one small thing and that would bump it up. Um, probably the easiest thing to do would be to screw down that crown, that'd give it five more points, make it a 70, and it would be in second place in the $1,000 to $5,000 category. That just kind of shows you the caliber of what's going on. You're not going to see a lot of field watches that look like this, that also have a screw down crown and that sort of thing. It's going to be a mixed bag. In fourth place, we have the Mule Glasuta Tsar Rescue Timer Lumen. Tsar is search and rescue. This costs $2,298 and it has a size of 42 millimeters. Um, there's some cool things going on here. This is the first one. Well, we, <laughs> it's only the second one in the video, but it's the uh, it's got anti-shock technology on their automatic movement. So it lessens some of the, the penalty. Actually, it lessens the penalty considerably for because normally I do minus five for automatic movement compared to course, but now it's only a minus one. So their anti-shock technology really helps with the uh, durability of the watch. Total score of 68 is awesome. They have a cool crown guard here that kind of envelops the crown. Um, I've never seen one quite like that. The whole look to it is really interesting and unique. Um, it's a full loom dial, so it lights up really bright. They've got the minutes on here. It doesn't have any hour numbers or military time, so it gets penalized for that. It compensates that for that in other ways. Okay, you may notice here it says NATO strap and welded lugs. This does not have a NATO strap. Um, basically, all watches, all modern watches, 99% of them use spring bar technology where you can change out the strap, put on different ones. A NATO strap is a great option to mitigate the dangers of the spring bar paradigm where all the watches have this vulnerability where the spring bar is just held in by tension. So you have a NATO strap and one of the spring bars pops out. Well, you don't lose the watch. It just dangles off by the other side. It's okay. I mean, you don't lose it. You can put it in your pocket and you still have the timepiece. Now this avoids the issue entirely. So there's no need to penalize it for anything. It doesn't have any spring bars. So it doesn't really need a NATO. The way they've done this is they have the strap screwed in with these heavy duty screws on both sides. So it's not going to break under torque like a spring bar would, or it's not going to fail the same way. They've, they've come up with a, a much more sturdy solution for holding this strap on. And yeah, it's great, it's brilliant. It, it'll keep you from losing the watch. So that's really nice. Total score of 68. And next, in third place, we have the Timor Modern Field. This is a beautiful watch. The images just really, really appeal to me. I think this white is like slightly gray or something, or slightly eggshell or something. I don't know quite what they did, but the contrast with that, that dial, this watch looks amazing from the product images. It looks like there's no crystal on it at all. So I don't know what they did to make it look like this. That black is so dark. It looks amazing. Price $1,068, size of 37 millimeters. And all the watches are gonna look amazing in this category, but will they function well when you're fighting for your life in the jungle? That's the question. This one, I think will. This is a score of 69, so I recommend it. Now, you may notice 
Ben, what the heck? This is a Dirty Dozen style and you didn't give it a complication penalty. What's wrong with you? I chose not to give it a complication penalty because they kept the six. They kept the 1800. Um, you can still read it just fine. Every other time I've seen a Dirty Dozen, they've chopped that six all the way off. They take the six off. They take the 18 off. It's this huge thing that's cluttering up the dial. With the Timor Modern Field, they truncated the actual ring and then they just had, they had a, a baton that goes both directions. So you can count the seconds either way. So in a very elegant solution to this issue, clearly it mattered to them too. They wanted to have all the numbers on the dial and they put all the numbers on the dial. They have all the minutes on the dial. This is a very solid field watch. It does have a push-pull crown for some reason. That's kind of a surprise, but I still think it's viable. It's so strong in other ways, it compensates for that push-pull crown. In second place, we have the Longines Spirit Titanium. This watch is $2,750. It's a size of 40 millimeters. This is a famous field watch. I don't know why there's five stars on it. I think that's a little excessive. They say it's a chronometer. That's something I, we're gonna see a lot more chronometers and maybe I should have factored that in and given it a couple points for movement accuracy above the normal automatic. But actually, you know what, no. You don't get any more movement accuracy, and here's why. So a high performance quartz is going to have plus or minus a second or so per month. Now I'm talking about high performance quartz. I'm not talking about the Chinese quartz or just whatever quartz you find. They make quartz movements that are outrageously accurate. If your automatic movement is costing hundreds of dollars, well, get an equivalent quartz and compare those two. The quartz is gonna be so much better in terms of accuracy. It's not even a question. Chronometer is like plus or minus two seconds a day. And then the quartz is plus or two minus two seconds a month. I think, I think Citizen has a, a movement that's like plus or minus two a year or something insane like that. So yes, a quartz is at least four times as good as an automatic. Quartz is the bomb, baby. But yeah, the titanium looks really nice on this. Look, they did the minutes here. This is a very standard looking field watch. Um, it's priced at that luxury price here. This is a very expensive watch you kind of have to save up for. Really have to plan on getting it for a long time. But I think this is an excellent choice. I think this is totally serviceable. I think you can go take it out into your battle and it will serve you well. Score of 69. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but the total amount of watches that I actually recommend, it's roughly a third of all the watches. If you do the NATO thing, if you say, oh, you can swap out the NATO, it's roughly a third. Um, I believe it's 18% if you, if you just take straight up out of the box. I only recommend 18% of the total watches on the market I could find. But if you're allowed to swap the NATOs out and stuff, I recommend... Um, 119 watches. So I actually do recommend a, a fairly large number of these things. But yeah, Longines is here and it's it's scoring very well. In number one spot, this is not a watch I expected to even find. I found it kind of at the last minute. It makes me wonder, are there other really amazing watches out there? But I had to cut off at some point. But this is an amazing looking watch. I didn't expect one in this kind of format to score so insanely well. It is the SEAL FTX Field Watch. It's shown here on a NATO, you can buy it that way. They also have a really cool looking bracelet. But yeah, the price on this is $2,885 and the size is 42 millimeters. Now this isn't a, a watch you buy off the shelf. You have to notify these guys well in advance that you're going to buy it and you, there's a long waiting list there's one guy who does this he makes everything that goes into this well he doesn't make the movement but he he makes he d does things like actually make the screws himself and these kinds of things very high quality watch but it almost has a perfect score like that bertucci construction king those kind of really insanely good watches Water resistance of 100 meters, that's a joke. That's a joke. Well, actually their website doesn't say exactly. <laughs> Great job, guys. But no, I, the Chrono 24 listing I see here, it says um, 120 ATM, so 1,200 meters of water resistance on this. So it is very, very water resistant. 
clearly they make dive watches and stuff. This is very over-engineered. But yeah, it has, I said welded lugs, it has this cool, these are, these are screwed in, these little dangly things here. So it's not a traditional type of a strap attachment system. They have their own proprietary strap attachment system. And it is extremely robust. It's not a spring bar that can, can pop off with torque. These things are heavy duty. You can see it just looking at it. There are thick bars that, that screw in here. So that's not going to break with torque. Your, your arm's gonna break before this thing breaks. Being a quartz, it has high impact resistance. I say crown guards, there's really just one crown guard. It still counts. Think about it, if, if an impact happens this way, it's protected. If an impact happens this way, it will hit that crown and the crown will push into the, the crown guard. And so you don't really need one on either side. You kind of just need one crown guard, but there you go. Case strength, titanium strong. Um, it doesn't have the, the numbers for the one through 12, but it actually does have the military time on this outer ring here. And they have this interesting feature. You can't really see it on this one so well, this particular shot but the um, the minutes, co you can see them through the minute hand here. I think this was an earlier version. I think the minute hands now, you can fully see the, the minutes through the hand there. That's kind of cool. Um, you can also customize these hands however you want them with the white and the orange. They have orange hands that you can swap out. Well, you just tell them what you want, which do you want the hour hand, orange, minute hand, orange, whatever you want, they, that's, you can get it that way. So I would definitely do that. It would be easier to tell the time if these were different. But yeah, there's no complications on this thing. I love that there's no complications. Um, you can tell I'm really excited about it. This watch is really cool. I can never afford it. This is, this is crazy. But some of you out there can afford it, I'm sure. And uh, with a score of 83, this is a legitimate field watch. In the entire ranking of 330 watches, this is ranked number nine. This score here of 83 is ranked number nine. And that's not the ninth highest score, that's the ninth highest watch, because watches will tie for certain places. You get it, ranked number nine. As I did with the other price categories, here's an overview of what you can expect from the rest of this price category, now that you've seen the top five. Um, it's kind of a tip off that there was one do not recommend already in the first slide. But as you can see, there are 69 watches and there's only four that I recommend out of the box. Um, on top of that, there's another eight that I recommend if you put a NATO strap on it. So there's only 12 out of the 69 that I recommend. But this is the broad overview. Now I'm gonna go through each scorecard so you can actually see the watches, see if something interests you. This is the first slide. We already saw all this. Next, Ralph Tech, Oaken Oscar, Tudor Ranger, Vertex, MTM. Well, one recommend there. Find out why. Do you want to know why Tudor Ranger is not recommended? I will tell you exactly why. Circula, Christopher Ward, Hamilton, Valtham, and Oak and Oscar. I recommend all these if you swap them to a NATO. Watch ahead if you want to find out why. Glycine, Tipson, Archimede, Formex, Unimatic. Kind of a mixed bag here. From here on out, <laughs> it's sadness. Hamilton, Khaki Field, Day Date, Knight, Certina, Ralph Tech, Dave Bergold. Young Hans, Fear, Timor, Nomos, Vice, Isotope, Notice, Bamford, William Wood, Hamilton Khaki. Yeah, that Hamilton Khaki Field Expedition Auto. This is the hotness. Why did it get a score of 50? I will tell you why. Monte Triumph, Tau, RGMT, Ball Engineer, Shinola. Towson Watch Company, beautiful. Why did it fail? I will tell you. SUF, Glycine, Mont Blanc, Nomos. Ball, Raketa, Ball, Ball, Eterna. <laughs> Alpina. Turby, DWC, Raymond Vile, Luminox, Lang, Bremont, Longines, Ball, O&W, Longines, West End, Raymond Vile, Sartori Biard, Accutron, and finally, Dornbluthenson, Vortec, Cuervois, Serbinos, and Longines. And there's that summary. If you see anything that interested you, keep watching ahead. Um, it's, a, it's very entertaining, I promise you that. Um, you'll hear my witty quips here and there. But I do recommend, if you just wanna to see top fives, go ahead and skip ahead to that next price range. This one, frankly, is a disappointment. There's so many watches that got really close and didn't quite make it. Now I'm gonna continue on with slide two and just go through each one of these watches for you. Next we have the Ralph Tech Academy Veteran. It looks pretty good, 
it looks like a good field watch. Um, everything from now on, if it's on a NATO, it means I don't recommend it. So yeah, I don't recommend this watch. It's just a little bit under. All of them could do one little thing and come up, or at least the ones that are just barely under. Like literally anything they do will bump it up. Like it says loomed indexes no Arabics. That means these little plots here on the outside have loom, but the numbers don't. If they just loom those numbers, boom, it's a recommend. But yeah, it's a 2000 $67 and it is 41 millimeter watch and a score of 65. Next we have the Oaken Oscar View, whatever that is. Something to do with whiskey, Olmstead. The price is $1,850 and it is a 38 millimeter watch. Very nice there. I really like the sandwich dial thing they did. This watch perplexingly has no minute markers. What time is it now? It's 1017? 1018? I don't know, what the seconds, what, what, what are the seconds? If you actually have to count seconds, that's gonna be impossible on this watch. You can't do it. You can only count every five seconds. So that is a huge miss on a field watch. I don't know how that got through. Like just put the minute markings on there. Is it so cool you can't have the minute markings? So anyway, in my opinion, 65 is not low enough for this watch. If you're gonna take those minute marks off, Get out of here. <laughs> but no, it's, it is a cool looking watch. Next we have the Tudor Ranger. In a previous version of my scoring system, Tudor Ranger won this category, this price category. That was before I found out about the seal. But yeah, it's it's a score of 64. What could they do? They already have a screw down crown. They already have the water resistance. You know, the easiest thing that they could do, and I'm, I'm not saying easy like, oh, it's it doesn't cost a lot of money or anything. But what they should do is give it some kind of shock protection. That would bump it up into a recommend, easy. Automatic, impact risk automatic is minus five points. If they gave it shock protection, this would just be a minus one, you'd have a score of 68. That'd be a recommended watch. I was kind of surprised they didn't have some sort of shock protection system with the Tudor Ranger. When you're paying almost $3,000, that's the kind of feature you expect. I think they should do that. I went with the product listing and searched for the word shock and read through the part about the movement and everything. It didn't say anything. So I just have to go with what the product listing says. I don't recommend this one. Next is the Vertex M100A, price of $2,690, size of 40 millimeters. This looks sweet. I want this watch. It looks awesome until um, I apply my scoring system and then I realize, okay, it looks cool, but there's other cool looking watches like that Timor that do it better. If they did the thing that Timor did and kept the six here, well, I would recommend this watch. I really would. But they took off that six and for me, that, it, that doesn't mean cast it out and, and it's no good. Like they could have done other things to make it a viable field watch. You can have a minus five and still be okay. Like they did a lot of other things. Um, this also does not have any shock protection. It doesn't have any crown guards. You know, they, they actually don't have military time or minutes, minute Arabics anywhere on here. So, score 63. Next is the MTM Black Falcon, price of $1,290. And this is exciting. This is the first watch we've seen that's actually special ops. This is a special ops watch. Tried to do a little bit there. I don't know if it came off, but. Obviously, if you're actually a Green Beret or like a, a Navy SEAL or something, you're not gonna have a 44 millimeter watch that says Special Ops on it, that has a flashlight that shines at your face when you when you press the button. <laughs> you're probably not gonna do that. But yeah, it has a complication of a flashlight and you can see those, those lights at the 12, eight and four are pointed directly at your face, <laughs> so. I think if you press, I'm being, I'm being totally silly about this. I think if you press it, it just does like a dim light first and then you press it again for, for like an actual flashlight and you can point it at things. It's probably actually a very useful complication um, and very innovative that they did that. That's pretty cool. But this last point for the rotating dive bezel that they have, that is totally imprecise. Like look at that 60. How do you know where that 60, it, it's not aligned on the product image here. And that leads me to believe it's not gonna be aligned when you actually buy the thing. But yeah, um, it's got tiny little minutes printed. It does have military time, like only in alternating indexes. 
So, oh, because these are lights. So the lights that shine on the dial are, there's little, six little market, six little lights around here or on the outside, and there's three bright lights on the dial itself. I could do without this carbon basket weave thing. I don't think that adds anything, but yeah, it has a score of 63. And here's the Circular Pro Trail Brown. Price of 1,080, size of 40 millimeters. So just in the bottom of the price range. This price range goes up to 5,000. These guys could uh, let it breathe a little. I'm just kidding. This is, this is a good price. It's better to be competitive with your prices. It's better to have low prices. You'll sell more watches if you do that. Typically, sometimes the price drives hype or something. I don't know. But this one is not on a NATO. If you put it on a NATO, I would recommend it. So the irony of my system is, you know, I'm judging based on out of the box. And that's fair because we need to judge the watches based on how they actually sell them. Are they selling it as a field watch or not? Um, but you can make this work. You can put it on a NATO and it is wonderful for your jungle nightmare. Take it for your jungle nightmare but put it on NATO first, that'll, that'll make your nightmare less sad. You, you might prevail if you have the NATO. So we've got 100 meters of water resistance, a screw down crown. It's a solid field watch, you can see from looking at it. Good job, Circula. Next we have the Christopher Ward C65 Sandhurst Series 2 W10. This is a W10 watch, apparently. To be honest, I don't know the difference between the H10, the G10, the W10. I probably should have like memorized that, the A17, I see that on this page. Probably should have learned all these nuances before doing a field watch video. But we're talking about modern field watches. I don't think people care so much about these historical designations. I'm not losing sleep over it. I do have to tell myself that I don't have that knowledge base. I'm sorry, dear audience. I can't tell you about the historical, what the heck a W10 is. But this is a cool looking watch. They've got all the numbers except for the 12. That's fine, I don't need a 12. But this still counts. What really bothers me is when there's date complications and all kinds of weirdness and stuff. But this one is actually not on a NATO, even though it looks like a NATO. I don't know why they didn't just ship it with a NATO. You know, people probably don't like wearing it on a NATO. I usually don't like NATOs very much. It depends on the NATO. But yeah, this doesn't have a NATO. Put it on a NATO and I recommend it for the apocalypse. It's a great size, 38 millimeters. This is a really cool dagger hour hand there. They went really simple here. Again, this says chronometer. I think a lot of these will. I think it's a nice field watch. I think you're gonna be happy if you get it. Next we have the Hamilton Khaki Field Titanium Automatic. Price of 1,245, size 38 millimeters. Hamilton, bravo. This is exactly what I'm looking for from my Hamilton Khaki Field. You've got all the minutes. You've got the one through 12. You've got the 13 through 24. Beautiful. I know you do all those things on the Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic. The normal Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic has a date window here. Get that out of there. Okay, all is not perfect. Obviously with a score of 61, it's not a recommend how you see it right here. I would take that bracelet off, put it on a NATO if you're gonna go out in the woods. But right here, the crown is a push-pull crown. There's no crown guards. We saw Hamilton do crown guards on the Khaki King. You could do crown guards. You could also do a screw down crown. This could be like the ultimate field watch. It really could be. You are almost there, Hamilton. It's not, but this is their best one that I've seen and I really like it. So I recommend it if you put it on NATO. Next is the Waltham A17. This is on pre-order, I believe. So that's a disclaimer. Look what they did with the numbers. They just, they just leaned heavily into this. We're just putting all the numbers. We're putting big plots. This is just a ton of numbers in your face. I think it works. I think the style actually works just fine on this one. To have all those numbers, that's what, the, that's what the watch is for. You're not gonna have any trouble reading this time. The red tip on the second hand is very nice. This also has a push-pull crown, but it squeaks in here. Score of 60, if you put it on a NATO, I recommend it for extreme scenarios. Next we have the Oaken Oscar Olmsted No Date. And this is really pretty. Okay, so it's a serviceable field watch, if you put it on a NATO but it also looks really good. It's a sandwich dial. You get this kind of military look here with the eight because how they had to do the sandwich. It's sort of like those, um, when you have those templates that you spray paint numbers and letters on things, you have to have little cutouts here for, for these sorts of things. That, that looks so cool. The hands are green. I've never seen something like that. That is really cool. This counterbalance like a sledgehammer here. They have their own design language going on and it, it looks good. It has a screw down crown, it has 100 plus meters of water resistance, 
it's an expensive watch. When I look at this, I think, okay, $500, $700, something like that. I don't think 15 This is easily double what I would expect to pay for a watch like this from Oak and Oscar. And maybe I just don't recognize the brand so well, but this doesn't seem like $1,500 watch territory. I mean, the Christopher Ward was cheaper than that. The Hamilton is cheaper than this. So I don't know who these guys think they are with the Oak and Oscar. They're, they're trying to be really fancy and maybe they're selling tons of watches. It looks really cool, it looks fresh. So I'm uninformed, maybe they're doing great. I think they're charging too much for their watch, but I could be wrong. Total score of 60, so put it on a NATO and I recommend it for the apocalypse. Next is the Glycine Combat Vintage GLO458. Love to see these crown guards, that is excellent guys. I don't recommend this. It's falling nine points short of a recommendation. So water resistance, boost this up to, to 100 meters, that gets you six points. Screw down that crown, that gets you the rest of the way. Or do several other things. But as is, I don't recommend it. 50 meters of water resistance is not, not good, guys. Next is the Tipsim Guide. And this one's not on a NATO, put it on one and I recommend it. Ironically, like that Glycine looked so much more of a field watch than this thing, but that's just how it shakes out with the specs. This has good specs. It's got a screw down crown and 100 meters water resistance. So it's not a bad watch here. I think you could do it. I don't get it. It looks like a solar panel here or something. It looks really sh reflective. I don't know what this symbol is here that looks like a pill, but there it is. It must mean something to them. Interestingly, it has an acrylic crystal, which is not as bad as you think. Sapphire is more prone to shattering than, than acrylic or mineral crystal. So for the purpose of a field watch, would you rather have a scratch or a crack? You'd rather have scratches. If you're really in the woods fighting for your life, you'd rather there just be a few scratches on the crystal rather than the crystal cracks entirely and you're gonna have to baby that watch, put it in your pocket or something. Yeah, score 56, put it on a NATO, I recommend it. Next is the Archimede Outdoor. Price of 1,392 and a size of 39 millimeters. Man, look at those crown guards. They are serious about that crown. That looks good. The color here is really interesting. Got kind of an olive color, a Dijon mustard color. The loom is dark within these already Dijon colored hands. You've got this gray green. There's some very unconventional color choices here. Yeah, this is good. This is a good color from, for hiding from Predator. Score 56, put it on a NATO and I recommend it. All right, from here on out, I don't recommend any of these watches, even if you swap out the strap for something else. The first one is the Formex Carbon. It's price of $1,840, size of 43 millimeters. This is just under my threshold. They could really, um, they could bump it up quite easily. They could do a screw down crown. They could remove the complication. They'd be just fine. But as is, it's, uh, it's not a recommend for me for extreme scenarios. Next is the Unimatic U4S CH Carbon. I really like this case. Oh, let me do the, the price. $2,200, size of 40 millimeters. This case looks really cool. I like the gray hands and the gray dial. This, this is stylish. This is styling. Great example here of how pretty these watches look, how cool they look, but it doesn't have the what it takes to pass here, the scoring system. There's not a ton of things they're getting penalized for. It's just kind of big things that they are. But look at these crown guards. That is beautiful. That is a sight to behold there. The way this, this uh, crown integrates with those crown guards seamlessly. I don't think I've seen another watch other than Unimatic do that so cleanly. Really nice. Total score of 55. All right, here's the Hamilton Khaki Field Date Date Auto. So you've seen the ones where they put the day and the date at the top. This is an abbreviated day, and then there's the date. I don't think it looks very good. I'm not a fan. Score of 54. It'd have to improve a lot to be suitable for extreme scenarios. Next is the Knight Atlas. Price of $1,050, uh, size of 40 millimeters. This is really too bad. It looks really cool. It's a very fresh design. 
This is a newer watch in their catalog. It looks really cool. I really like how it looks, but it doesn't quite make the threshold. And it easily could if they took off that date window, stuff like that. But it doesn't make it. Next we have the Certina DS. I'm not gonna read all that. Price $1,046, size of 41 millimeters. Yeah, most of these have been closer to the $1,000 than the $5,000, so that's interesting. But here you see they've got the minutes around the outside, they've got some of the numbers for the hours, but no military time or anything. They've got this complication I don't care for. It's actually already on a NATO strap. It's an interesting choice, because this looks kind of fancy here. We've got the Powermatic 80 in this like in this fancy pants script here. Yeah, it's got a score of 54. I don't recommend it for extreme scenarios. Next is another very pretty watch, the Ralph Tech Academy Royal, or Royale. The price is $2,392, size is 41 millimeters. It looks like a very well-made watch. It looks like a very cool watch I would like to have. It's not the one you grab for SHTF. This is not the one you want. You want a different watch for that. Probably a quartz. Let's just do quartz. I mean, I probably should have ended the video earlier just once we got out of the quartz realm. No, there's, there's value to this. It has a bronze case, so it loses a couple points on there. Bronze is really not very sturdy material. Uh, they don't use bronze for like the girders in skyscrapers and stuff because it's not going to hold up like steel will. Okay, so, so bronze is not where it's at. It does have higher corrosion resistance than steel, so that's interesting. Total score of 53. Next is the Dave Burkhold DM Model 2. Price of $1,250, size of 37 millimeters, minutes on the outside, all the numbers, it's got the crown guards, it's looking good, um, it has push-pull crown and 50 meters water resistance. If I change that, it would be a recommended, but I don't recommend this one, as is. And I promised you there'd be another Young Hans, here's a Young Hans Solar, the Young Hans Max Bill Mega Solar. Price $1,352, size of 38 millimeters. It's your typical Young Hans Max Bill. I mean, we've all seen these before. The hands are tiny. They're the thinnest little hands you've ever seen. It's got this date window that just looks stupid to me. I've already mentioned this before. The date windows often just look not good. This isn't an art design class or whatever. But yeah, I, I don't like that that's there. If it says three or it says six or whatever, I think that's distracting to the eye when you're trying to read the time. So I don't like that. But yeah, it's got the minutes. It does a lot of things right. It's just underneath. 53, just underneath. All they'd have to do is give it 100 meters water resistance, and I would recommend this one for the extreme scenarios, but I don't right now. Next is the Fierce Brunswick 40 Blue. $3,950, size of 40 millimeters. Does this not look like a watch you get at Macy's for like $200? I mean, seriously, guys. This is not a three, this is not a $4,000 watch. It just isn't. What the heck? It says England on it. it is that why it costs $4,000? I, I cannot figure this out. There's no loom on it. It's kind of a dress watch, to be honest. So maybe that's why it's so expensive. But yeah, it doesn't do well as a field watch. Score of 53. And this is too bad here. This is the Tamor Heritage Field World War watch. Price $1,047, size 37 millimeters. I mean, it it looks the part. It looks really good, but it's got 50 meters of water resistance. Has a push pull and no crown guards. You guys, you're, you're charging a thousand bucks. Please just make it more sturdy. Why are watches getting wimpier the more you go up in price? I know I've been I've been beating this horse absolutely to death, but for goodness sake, there's a Casio and Timex, $34 each, both of them with 100 meters of water resistance. Is it that hard to do that? Like, this should just be standard, people, with watches. Why are there any watches made that don't have 100 meters of water resistance? This is a legitimate question that I think consumers deserve an answer to. Why the heck are you making a watch that has 30 meters of water resistance, or 50? Why is that being made? Just screw on the case back or whatever thing it takes. Just please, please do it for, for a thousand bucks. 
let's say for a second that it costs 30, the entire $34 of the Timex watch is just for that 100 meters of water resistance. That's, everything else is free. It doesn't cost Timex anything. The only thing that costs them money is that 100 meters of water resistance. That's $34. Add $34 to your price, Tim Moore Heritage. Just to add that $34 on there and give me the water resistance. What the heck? Okay, score 52, rant over. Next is the Nomos Ahoy Atlantic. This one does have 100 meters of water resistance and a screw down crown. It's kind of cool. Nomos branching out a little bit. You know, they did kind of a, this is sort of like a divey watch. I know we're not doing dive watch or a field watch, either way. Kind of looks like a fish here, so yeah, maybe it is kind of a dive watch. At the very least, it's not a dive watch in the traditional sense. It's a watch you can jump in some water with, which is kind of what you want with a field watch. What if you have to jump in some water? What if it rains on you and you're setting up your tent? Do you really want to take off your, your watch while you're doing that, or do you just want to finish setting up the darn tent? But yeah, the, the Nomos here gets a score of 52, so I don't recommend it for the apocalypse. Very long lugs, as everybody always says. 40 millimeters across, it's a 50 millimeter lug to lug. Now this is a beautiful watch here. The Vice Standard Issue 38 millimeter blue. I've seen this watch recommended on forums. Somehow people really know about this one. Um, I didn't know a thing about it until I started investigating viable field watch options. This has a price of $2,000 and a size of 38 millimeters, but it's under my recommendation threshold. And there's a couple reasons why. I guess the main one would be that there's no protection for the crown from impacts, and that's not good for a field watch. You should have at least crown guards or screw down, in my opinion. You could do it, and then I would recommend it if they did that. But right now, it's almost there, and that's what a lot of these are. It's just almost there. I mean, as we continue, no, they're not gonna be almost there anymore. They're gonna get way worse. Let's keep going. The last one was pretty. This one is the polar opposite. The Isotope Radium Portugal UK. Ugh, I'm blinded by the ugliness of this watch. And they put it on some weird background. This is their like official product listing. For some reason, this is the best shot they got. It's ugly. It's an ugly watch. Score 52. Oh, sorry, $1,293, size of 40 millimeters, score 52. And I gave it the, the low contrast penalty this is not easy to read the time there. Next is the Notice Canyon. Price $1,199, size of 41 millimeters. I don't recommend it for the apocalypse. It looks pretty cool for Instagram. You could buy it for that purpose, but don't take it to extreme scenarios. Next we have the Bamford B80. $1,140, size of 39 millimeters. I don't get it. I think it looks pretty cool, but I don't think it looks $1,140 cool. It is titanium, that's that's cool. Uh, it's push-pull crown. I really like the colors, the, the blue, then the way they did these these uh, minute hash marks here where they're, the five minute increments, they're slightly shorter and a different color. I think they could have done a, a different color for the second hand. Maybe that, that blue here, the really pale blue for the second, that would be cool. It's not a viable field wash. Score 51. Next is the William Wood Fearless. Price $1,197, size of 39 millimeters. Great size. A lot of times when they market to firemen or police officers, you get these huge watches that are 45 millimeters and that sort of thing. So it's really nice to see that they did a 39 millimeter. I think an actual firefighter is going to appreciate that it's not a 45 millimeter watch. Actually, this has some crazy thing on the case back that makes it even thicker. So this is a thick watch with that automatic movement. It doesn't have shock protection on this movement. It's just regular automatic. So it's probably not going to do so well if you hit it into things, which you're likely to do if you're an actual firefighter. So it, it looks like a tool for a man doing a dangerous job. But if you're a man doing a dangerous job, I recommend a Bertucci or an MWC or one of these more, one of these better field watches. And do the Circula, do the Hamilton, do the Longines, do the, the Mula Glassuta. There's a lot of other options that are better than this William Wood, unfortunately. It looks really cool. I like the textured dial. Got a lot of cool stuff going on, but with a score of 50, I don't recommend it. I'm gonna blow a lot of wind for this next one, so let's get some water. Okay, and this one was really hot when it dropped. The Hamilton Khaki Field Expedition Auto. Price of $1,146, size of 41 millimeters. Why is it so much more expensive than the regular Hamilton Khaki Field? 
automatic. I guess it's just the bezel, but they took a lot of stuff off the dial that, that the other one had. They took off the military time, they took off the minutes. It's not loomed as well. This one only has loom on these tiny little indexes here that are all identical. So if it actually is really dark, you're gonna have orientation issues because the, the 12 o'clock is no different from all the other ones. They really should have just loomed the numbers. And in fact, looking at the scorecard, you'll see that I gave it a complication penalty for this rotating bezel here. You could argue there's not much to see on here. It's just a few letters. It's really not gonna distract you if it's off or anything. Don't give them the complication penalty. Okay, we can have that conversation. Sure, let's take off that complication penalty. It's still only a 55. Put it on a NATO, it's still only a 65. It doesn't get there. They have to do something to the watch to make it a recommend. Easiest thing they could do is just loom these Arabics. That's two extra points if they loom the Arabics. I think it'd be a much better field watch. But as it is, I don't recommend it for the apocalypse. Total score of 50. And here's the Manta Triumph. Cool looking watch. I don't get it, it's not my style. The price is $1,700, size of 39 millimeters. And the total score is $49. Next we have a, is it a field watch or a rave watch? <laughs> this is the Tsao KDA Titanium. Price is $1,099 and the size is 40 millimeters. Ignore the airplane, it doesn't exist. There's, this is a field watch, dang it. The score is $49. And yeah, I mean, that, that dial is absolutely crazy. I think you could have a dial like that and still hide, try to hide from Predator. It's probably better if you don't have such a loud design on your wristwatch. It does kind of look like a toy, which appeals to some people. It, that kind of thing does appeal to me personally, but I know my wife kind of rolls her eyes when I have these watches with two, you know, the colors are so bright and it's too, too fun and quirky. And a lot of people have that attitude, but... Anyway, for field watch perspective, it doesn't cut the mustard. It's it's a 49. Next, we have the RGMT Tactician Tritium Black Horizon. Price of $1,195. This one looks legit. It's got tritium on it. Two tritium hands on that hour hand. That's really cool. I bet that looks really awesome when the lights are out. These tubes kind of stop short. They don't really go far enough. I think they should have made the tube go out farther. The hand could have gone out farther and the tube should have gone out farther on both of these hands here. Uh, there's a lot of empty space in between the actual markers on the outside and these hands. But yeah, it doesn't have the score you, you want to see. And as I mentioned in the past, these tubes can actually fall off. Um, so it does get a three point penalty for the fact that the tritium tubes can just fall off, which they do. They're just kind of held on with glue. So that glue can release and, and they can fall off. Yeah, it has a score of 49. Oh, and here's the Ball Engineer 3 Starlight. Price $1,799, size of 40 millimeters. It looks sloppy. I know what they're trying to do here with these numbers, and I know it's probably really hard because these tubes probably only come in very specific sizes, so it's hard to actually make the numbers look right. But look at the five compared to the six. Why are they so different with the height here? This. I, well, because you have a long tube here and a short tube here. Like, clearly they're just, they're hampered by what the tubes are that they actually have. This was kind of some puzzle for them to figure out how even to do this. But it looks, it looks really weird. The, the proportions are totally off. The six is way taller than the five because of this. And you've got a bigger space here. Um, the seven is not equidistant between the eight and the six. It's placed closer to the eight. Or at least visually, that's what is happening here. Uh, when you look at it, it looks like these are not spaced equally, all the all the numbers. There's also something going on where they look a little bit like they're crooked from each other. Look at this date window here, the Sunday. The text is to the right and bottom. It's not even centered. So yeah, with their product images looking this bad, I would not want to buy this one personally. None of that has to do with the field watch. Um, it doesn't pass as a field watch, but... I just thought I would air my grievances with this style of tritium watch. Probably looks really cool in the dark, but <laughs> it looks like some kid actually did the... The two is, is oddly proportioned, too. I, I don't get it. It looks really weird to me. Score 49. Next, we have the Shinola Mechanic 39. This is a hand-winding watch. Price of $1,500, size of 39 millimeters. It costs $1,500 because it's a hand-winding watch. 
These guys mostly make quartz. I think all the Shinola watches are priced a little bit too big for their britches. They charge a lot of money for their watches. I would be really inclined to get one of their watches if it wasn't priced so excessively high. It looks okay. It's an all right watch, I guess. Total score of 49, so it's not a, not a great field watch for the Apocalypse. This is one of the surprise watches I did not expect. I didn't know anything about it until I started researching this. This is the Towson Watch Company Cadet. This looks so good. The color combination here, which is the navy blue angels, I believe. I know they fly planes, whatever. Okay. <laughs> but it's a good color combo. The crown guards looks good. They've got all the numbers and everything. I thought this was going to be a winner. It doesn't pass my test. It has a score of 48. They need more water resistance. They probably need a screw down crown. 11 points on here. It would get you up to a 59. Slap a NATO on there, it's a 69. Boom, you're there. So that's kind of what they need to do. Give it 100 meters water resistance and screw down the crown. They could do that. Also, they could lose the complication. But yeah, I mean, if you like the watch how it is, go ahead and buy it. But I don't recommend it for, for, for as a field watch. Next we have the SUF Helsinki SUF 180. Very plain looking watch. It's got kind of this, uh, what do you call this? It's like a reverse explorer where instead of having the 12, 3, 6, 9, you just have everything else. It's okay. Um, it's penalized on my scoring system to have any kind of symbols instead of numbers. Except for the, the I, I give the 12 a pass. You could do one number and and replace it with something else. When you have when you have a third or a quarter of the numbers on the dial totally missing, I guess two thirds in the case of the Explorer. Eh, it's no good. It's a cool looking dial. This is very artsy, kind of dramatic when you look at it. Not a great field watch. Score 48. Next we have the Glycine BN 1914 GL0335. It is $1,554, size of 39 millimeters, and I give it a score of 48. Next we have the Mont Blanc 1858 automatic date zero oxygen, the 8,000. Price of 3,210, size of 41 millimeters. This one looks like it means business. It looks like you'd be climbing a sheet of ice, like thousands of feet below the ground with wind whipping in your hair. And you'd look at your watch for some reason, because it matters what time it is. Instead of you dying, you actually need to know the time. It looks hardcore, but it's not very hardcore. There's, they could add shock resistance. They could screw down the crown. You could do all kinds of things. Score 47. Next is the Nomos Club Sport Neomatic. Price of $2,930, size of 37 millimeters. Sort of a sport watch. It's got the Dirty Dozen though. Why does it have the Dirty Dozen if it's a sport watch? I think they're a little confused. Uh, maybe I'm confused. Looks like a fine sport watch. I don't think it's a great field watch. Score 47. All right, we got more ball coming. Ball Engineer 2 Marvelite. Price $1,795, size 40 millimeters. So the seal proved you don't have to have the numbers. You can do you can just do symbols and still get top spot, frankly. Seal did amazing. Ball does not do amazing. They're supposed to be like a rugged, sophisticated tool watch. But I'm not seeing the tool watch part of it. I'm not seeing the rugged part of it. Now, I know they do anti-shock. They do anti-magnetism. That's great. That's only part of the story. I think it'd be good to have some crown guards on here. I think that would be a more of a tool watch thing to do. I think they could do it in a sophisticated way. They could have their crown be a little smaller and just have the, the case kind of integrate around it. Anyway, I think they, they could do better. Ball is in this weird spot where they are marketed as like, I'm a railroad engineer, I'm hardcore, I have dirt all over my hands and I use this watch. Look, they have a 26 points for their protection. This bracelet is held on by a spring bar. You know, if you're working, that bracelet can pop off. It's not attached very well, in my opinion. NATO would be better. And I've seen people put a ball watch on a NATO. I think that's a great choice if you actually have one. But it still doesn't bring it up to a recommend status for me. It's too bad. I like what they do. Their designs look really cool. But they're just not a great field watch, in my opinion. Score of 47. Next is the Raketa Big Zero. And yeah, this says Raketa here. Um, price $1,584. Size of 40 millimeters. In, in Cyrillic, the P is the R. The M is a T. So yeah, this is Raketa. It's an iconic design. <sighs> they must sell these for $1,500. All their watches are really expensive to me, but they look so cool. I'm so tempted to get one of these. It's such an iconic Russian design. It's not a great field watch. 
for for several reasons here. I'm not going to get into, but uh, the score is 46 out of 100. Next is the Ball Engineer 3 Bronze. It's similar to that last one. For some reason, this one looks slightly better. The 7 is still not equidistant between the 8 and the 6. They're, they're all kind of off. There's, there's something seriously off about this, and I don't know how they managed to just produce this when it looks this weird to me. Like, the, ah, the, there's two vertical lines, but they're not parallel. The, the seven is, is, is pointed slightly to the left here. It's veering slightly this direction. It's breaking my brain to look at this, but yeah, $2,749, 43 millimeters in size. The, the case looks really pretty. The dial is giving me nightmares. Total score is 45. Next is the Ball Fireman Enterprise. Price 1,499, size 40 millimeters. Now when they say fireman, they don't mean like you fight fires. It means like you shovel coals into that train to keep it going. That's what the fireman is. So that's pretty cool. I love how long these tritium indices are. That looks really good. It's, it's a unique look. You don't see this very often. It's like the spokes of a wheel. Looks really cool. Not a great field watch. Score of 44. Next is the Eterna Heritage Military Re-Edition. Price $1,360. Size of 38 millimeters. I get why some of these watches are expensive, like the ball. You have anti-shock, you have anti-magnetism, you have tritium. It looks really nice. What is this doing to justify $1,360? The proportions are all weird. These numbers are tiny. They're, they're a weird green color mixed with this orange. Um, the logo just looks sad and weird. It's, it's so, so dark there. This date wheel is really close to the six and just looks bizarre. This watch has so many issues with it. It's hard to even start. I mean, I, I listed a bunch of them, but I could go on and on. This, this watch is a hot mess and they're charging $1,360. If you bought one of these, I'm sorry for ragging on your watch. You know, you may see the beauty, I cannot. The case is cool, I'll give it that. I don't get why a lot of watches exist and why they cost so much money, and this is one of them. Total score of 44. Next is the Alpina Alpiner <laughs> Extreme. <laughs> the Alpiner. <laughs> All right, grow up, Ben. Price is $1,695, size 41 millimeters. This one actually does look pretty rugged. It's a sports watch that you could use as a field watch. I'm sure that's how they're marketing it. Texture dial is okay. I think that's fine. It does have a screw down crown. It does have crown guards. It does have 100 meters water resistance. I think it needs to lose the date complication. Um, I think it needs some anti-shock technology on that movement. And then I think it needs to do some other stuff to make up for the shortcomings. I don't know how you say this one. You can't even put it on a NATO because look at this weird lug width. Like, I guess you could put it on this 12 millimeter NATO or whatever this comes out to be. But yeah, you probably can't put a NATO on this one. So I don't recommend this one. Score 43. It's the Turby Old Military Vintage B. Price of $3,102, size of 40 millimeters. It's got the dirty dozen thing going on. Aesthetics here, come on guys, this blue against the other blue does not look good. Just do silver for the hands. But the blue is looking weird, the light blue with the dark. Maybe that's just a pet peeve. Score 43, I don't recommend it as a field watch for extreme scenarios. Next is the DWC Pancha Train. It looks really cool, um, very nice blue. Price is $1,395, size of 42 millimeters. That's a, that's a sweet looking blue there. I like that. I like the Fleur de Lis here. It's a classy looking watch. It doesn't look like a hardcore watch. And it's not hardcore. Doesn't pass my test. Score of 43. Next is the Raymond Vial Freelancer. Price of $1,895. 42mm size. They've given it some sporty features. Uh, it's, <laughs> the sporty ones typically have the screw down and the 100 meters. That's what people expect. They think the screw down crown offers them any water protection. They don't realize it's to protect the, the stem, um, to protect the movement inside. But it's neither here nor there. People want the screw down crown and you get it on these sporty watches. Often you don't get it on the more fieldy watches. But either way, that's not enough to save it. And it gets a score of 43. All right, Luminox Atacama Field. Price of $1,195. 
size of 44 millimeters. <clears throat> it looks the part, but it doesn't do the trick. It's got the military time. It's got the minutes. It looks really rugged. Um, it's got a screw down crown. It's got 100 meters water resistance. You'd think this would score well. It did not. And um, here, let me find out exactly here. How many of these tritium watches do I even recommend? Do I have it out for tritium? Um, the answer is no, I don't have it out for tritium. There are eight tritium watches that I recommend. Recommended the Armor Light AL144 Field Watch, MWC G10 SL Tritium, Knight MX10, Luminos Green Shield Patagonia Steel, Tracer P67 Officer Pro, Marathon Officers Mechanical GPM, Luminox Ice SAR Arctic XL, and the Marathon Officers Quartz. So there's plenty of tritium field watches. If you really like tritium, there's definitely viable options. This is not one of them. And a score of 42. Next we have the Lang 1943 Field. This has a price of $3,833. Size is 39 millimeters. And it doesn't cut the mustard. Really cool looking uh, paint here, or loom, or whatever. The green looks really nice. Score of 42. The Bremont Armed Forces Broadsword. Hey, it says Armed Forces, so don't you doubt its credibility here. It has a price of $3,445, size of 40 millimeters. They said Armed Forces, guys. It's got to be good, right? But no, it's, it's not so great. Score of 41. And next we have the Longines Marine Nationale Fabrique Suisse. Price $2,300, size of 39 millimeters. I knew we'd start seeing them. 30 meters, water resistance. Score of 40. Longines could have done something cool here. They could have screwed down the crown. They could have given it 100 meters water resistance. They're really close. This, this one has the look of a field watch, but not the modern protection that it deserves. They just gave it 100 meters water resistance and a screw down crown. That's an additional 18 points. That brings it up to 58. Put it on a NATO, it's a 68, and I recommend it. But as is, whoever buys this deserves a better field watch that they can actually take out camping, that they're not gonna worry about it getting wrecked. And I would worry about it getting wrecked. 30 meters means barely splash proof. If you splash it too much, you might actually ruin it. That's what 30 meters means. It means you need to baby it. Score 40. Next we have the Ball Railroad Standard 130 years. Price of $2,649, size of 40 millimeters. I saw this very early on when I started to get the watch bug and I found out about Ball and I got really caught up in the mystique of Ball as a brand and I thought, when I found this one, I thought, yes, they've got all the numbers. <laughs> all the numbers are here, one through 60. That's what I want. I, I think that would be so cool. I would love to have that. Um, it has tritium still for some reason. It's, it's very odd that they have the tritium on this kind of watch, but they do. That's okay, you know, no problem. What kills me about this, and I found this out very early on when I didn't know a ton about watch collecting or anything, the 30 meters. Everybody sees that. Everybody sees the 30 meters and you go, what? What's going on here? It has anti-shock technology, but 30 meters. Make it make sense. It doesn't make any sense. Like this has got to be so much more expensive than just making this 100 meters. Whatever they're doing to protect the movement from magnetism and shock and everything, like why do you then skimp on the water resistance? It doesn't make any sense. It's really too bad. Yeah, the small seconds, I don't get that. And then the, I mean, it's not that bad. You can still see the six. So maybe that's not so big of a penalty. Maybe you take that off entirely. The date should go. I don't think it needs a date. But uh, it's a cool watch. But I think you're just going to have to baby it a ton if you get it. Next is the Olek and Wash 56M. O and W, I think is what these guys go by a lot of times. Um, their price is $1,589. The size of this is 38 millimeters. And... Uh, it doesn't pass. It looks really strange, like it's some sort of alien artifact or some sort of ancient codex. Got all these dots and then these slashes at, at 3, 4, 5, and then 9, 10, 11. Is there a hidden code? Um, you've got all these extra dots on the dial in random spot, like double dots here, single dot there. It, it has this mystique about it because of that. And also the, the colors, 
colors being a little strange, the kind of dark metal on the, the hands. It's a weird looking watch, a quirky looking watch. The bracelet looks absolutely sick. That bracelet is awesome with these like hexagonal things or whatever. That looks sweet. I would love that bracelet. I'm getting off topic. This is a field watch and it's not doing a great job as a field watch. Score of 38. Longines Heritage Military, $2,425. It's 39 millimeters. They dropped the ball again. 30 meters of water resistance. Get it together. Score of 37. Next is the West End Watch Company Sowar 1916. That looks like it's from 1916, but it has the specs of 1916 too, apparently. Price of $1,300 and size of 38 millimeters. It does have the sapphire. I, okay, so they didn't have a sapphire crystal back in, in 1916. I think the sapphire crystal is overhyped. I think it's a really nice convenience, and uh, I do prefer sapphire on my watches. In terms of a field watch, it's not, it's not the be-all end-all. Mineral and acrylic are actually superior for a field watch application because you, you you don't care how it looks you just want the thing to survive in fact sapphire has the shatter propensity yeah didn't score well score 37 here's the raymond vial milsim price of 1575 dollars size of 40 millimeters gets a score of 34 next is the sartori biard sb04 you know I, I see these watches a lot and they're beautiful works of art I thought, okay, maybe one of these can kind of work as a field watch. It does not. Price of $3,932, size of 40 millimeters. It's a work of art, baby. You probably want to treat it that way. Don't take it out into the forest. Score of 34. All right, Accutron Legacy Automatic RR0. RR is for railroad. This is a railroad watch. You can tell it, it looks sick. I like how it looks. It has this spade hour hand. This is a 34 millimeter. If you're even considering this, just realize it is tiny. This is a tiny watch. I love the what they did with the with the numbers here. Nobody ever gets it right, okay? These guys got it right. AM is the outside one, PM is the inside one. Why is this so hard? Why are we putting 12 on the outer track when 12 is PM? This bothered me since I was a little kid. Like, is 12 PM or AM? Because I saw watches with military time, and it's very confusing if you have 12 and 1, you're like, does the day start at 12? Or no, okay, so does it start at 1 and then just do it like this. They got it. This this is our timing system in visual form. So why the heck aren't all watches laid out in our timing system in a visual form like this? 23 is as high as you're supposed to go. You don't go to 24. You go to 0. You go back to 0. But the watch itself only has 30 meters of water resistance. That's a slap into the face of their customers. Come on, Accutron. Why are you slapping your customers in the face? Ugh. Score of 33. All right, here are the bottom four. Next is the Dornbluth and Son 99.0. This thing is beautiful. It is drop-dead gorgeous. I think it has a silver dial or something. They've got these dark hands. I already mentioned I like dark hands. They look really good. Price is $4,375. So getting close to that upper limit. Size of 42 millimeters. You see this thing, you're not gonna take it in the woods. Why did I include it? I, I don't know, I just thought some of these might do okay. But the scoring system really flushes it out. No, this does not do okay. It's a score of 33. Next is the Vortec, the Springfield 053. So what Vortec does, from what I can tell, is they take old pocket watches and they kind of turn them into actual wristwatches and modernize them to some degree. They put on a sapphire, for example. They probably clean up the movement, um, give it modern lubricants and stuff like that. And essentially just revitalize some really old watches. I think it's really cool what they're doing. The price on this is 4,300. This is a piece unique. So this particular model may be gone if you go to look for it or whatever. This is very cool they're doing this. Obviously, it costs a lot of money to do what they're doing, but, but I think it's really cool. It's a 45 millimeter. I, I do think this was a pocket watch. It's got that crown here at the 12 o'clock like the pocket watches used to have. It's got a score of 31, so it's not a viable field watch by any means, but it is very cool. Next, we have the Cuervo y Sorbinos Emilio Carranza. The price is $3,525. Size is 44 millimeters. 
cool date window. Get out of here, plane. You don't... No. <laughs> no planes. They're leaning heavily into this Cuban thing, which is cool. I mean, if it's a Cuban watch company, go for it. Or if it was a historically Cuban watch company, it's been bought by somebody else. And, and, you're, and now you're doing the Cuban thing. You're just continuing the heritage of the watch. Cool. I like it. Very unique lugs here. It's got kind of a beetle appearance to it or something. It looks awesome. But yeah, it didn't, didn't fare well as a field watch. Total score of 30. And in last place is another watch. It's really not a field watch. Sorry, guys. Longines Master L2. Price 2763 Size 39 millimeters. Score of 30. Doesn't make the cut. And it's obvious why. That was it for the $1,000 to $5,000 price category. Hopefully it was interesting to you to see a bunch of watches um, and hear me talk about them. The last category has a lot of similar stuff to what we saw here at the end, these dressy things. I think I've learned my lesson. I'm going to go quickly through those because uh, they're really not field watches, are they? They're watches that you'd think could could serve a, a dual purpose, that you could take it and use it as a, as a field watch. And if they were a lower price, maybe they'd be made out of quartz. Maybe they would have higher water resistance. And you could actually do double duty, do a dress watch and a field watch. But yeah, in these pri higher price categories, they just slap their customers in the absolute face and say, who cares? Who cares if your watch breaks? I don't care. You'll just have to buy another one, rich, rich man. It's really unfortunate what they do there, but um, that's the nature of the watch world, apparently. But anyway, that's, that was the end of the 1,000 to 5,000. Thanks for sticking with me, and I hope you enjoy the final segments. That $5,000 and up category has a major surprise right near the beginning. Stick, Hang in there for the number one. It is very cool. You might be able to guess what it is, what could be over $5,000 and get a number one and get me so excited about, oh, this was unexpected. I didn't know it was going to happen. But yeah, keep watching. Okay, the top price category. Field watches over five thousand dollars five g's this patek philippe looks so natural in the wilderness i know in number five is the rolex explorer price of seven thousand two hundred fifty dollars size of 40 millimeters they also do a 36 but i chose the 40 um i actually recommend this one good job rolex <laughs> i'm really glad the scoring system <laughs> worked out this way so that um these famous field watches, at least some of them, would actually qualify. I mean, Rolex kind of pioneered this category to some degree. With They really decided to make their watches more robust than the competitors. And I would argue they still do, actually. Um, they do make them pretty robust. It's pretty watch, and it's also robust enough to pass. If you put it on a NATO strap, I think you can use this for your coordinated attacks and your zombie fighting in the jungle. Um, it has anti-shock protection for the movement, the automatic movement, so the automatic costs it, of course. The fact that dial layout is the way it is, that costs it. Um, you know, they could do things like put crown guards in, make it of titanium, recess the crystal. They could beef it up and still sort of keep it in character, I think. And they could get the score up to 77 on a NATO strap. But as it is, it, basically they could add 11 points by doing some, some wacky stuff. You know, they could do print it, printed instead of applied indices, because applied indices can fall off. However good your glue is, they can they can still fall off. They're, they're just glued on there. But this is a viable option. Way to go, Rolex. In number four, we have the Patek Philippe Aquanaut. I hinted earlier that this was a solid field watch, and it really is. $24,000 and a size of 41 millimeters. Good size. Um, the price is insane, totally insane for a wristwatch. I guess rappers can buy it or something, um, or like professional athletes. Somebody has the kind of money they could buy this thing. I don't know. Actually doesn't have any shock protection on the movement, which surprised me. Um, given what it looks like, you'd, you'd think it would. If you put it on a NATO strap, I recommend it. 
look, they did the crown guards in a sophisticated way, and they have a screw down crown. So you can be fancy, fancy watch and still have crown guards and screw down crown. You can do it. Take note, other watchmakers. A number three, this thing is so cool, is the Norcane Wild One. Price of 5,290, size of 42 millimeters. I think it's probably gonna wear pretty large. But um, this is the NHL Players Association version. It has like ice skate marks on the dial. It's really sick. They make a lot of versions of this with different colors. I thought this, with the highest contrast, this would be the, the best version to choose for a field watch if you're gonna do that. Um, yeah, they make cases that are like blue or red. This forged carbon case is of their own making. They make this themselves and they found a way to, to do all these different colors with it. But it's got like rubber bumpers on the side. This watch is designed to be well protected if you're doing extreme things. And they, they're marketing it that way too with the NHL thing. But yeah, good protection here. You put it on a NATO and it gets a score of 41 out of 50 for protection. And it's, it's an automatic movement. So that's a very high score for an automatic movement. That's solid. And yeah, the total score of 57, if you put it on a NATO, I recommend it for the apocalypse. Good job, Norcane. In number two is the Omega Railmaster. Uh, price of $5,400, size of 40 millimeters. They have a screw down crown. They have 100 plus meters water resistance. Omega, getting a score that you can make work if you put this thing on a NATO. Which if you're gonna go into the jungle, you probably would anyway. What is this like tweed? I mean, this looks like you, you took your, your sport coat and you like turned it into a watch strap. So that's, that's a, I mean, it's, it looks cool. I actually like it, but it's very unique textile they, they've chosen for the, the strap here. It's got the Explorer format here with just the, the 369, and then you've got symbols for everything else. But they still have the symbols on the 369. That's kind of cool. I mean, it's its own thing. Omega Railmaster is famous. Uh, they've got their own design language here. They deserve it. This is a good option. Um, for a field watch, if you put it on a NATO. Shock resistant movement. Good job, guys. In the number one, I did not expect this one at all. I've been hyping it probably too much, let's be honest. But yeah, it's a, it's not really a field watch, but you can use it as a field watch. I wasn't trying to box everything in. This could work as a field watch. It is the Richard Meal RM005-01 Titanium. $129,000 size of 40 millimeters. So if you're Bill Gates or, or Elon Musk or Joe Biden, I suppose you can afford this thing. But for the rest of us, us peasants, we, we cannot. But yeah, it's uh, this is the titanium one. They make it in gold and stuff. Gold is, doesn't do so well as a field watch. It loses a few points. So I wanted to, to choose the model that would score the highest, the Richard Mille model that would score the highest as a field watch. And this is the one that I found that would do that. It's titanium. It actually has 100 meters of water resistance. A lot of them, I think they don't do that anymore. I think they gave up on that or something. It's, it's too bad, guys. Keep the 100. Just, just make them 100 meters water resistance. But anyway, this one is, and you can still supposedly get it. The price is hard to figure out. They don't really advertise on the internet how much these things cost. You can find prices here and there. Like I found 80,000 for this white gold one, but the titanium's more rare, so that one's more. I think I actually, this is the price I actually saw for one of these somewhere was 129. You can find it probably for vastly different prices as well. Take this with a grain of salt here, but it's absolutely insane. Whatever it costs is way too much. They're famous for having a really ridiculous anti-shock system on their watches. But the main reason this rose so high is, uh, what do we have here? So for NATO strap and welded lugs, there's no penalty here because most watches have a spring bar and that's a very vulnerable strap attachment mechanism. It's just held under tension and if you put um, force on the watch, that spring bar will pop right out and you'll lose your watch. This attachment mechanism is much more robust. These, uh, these rubber straps here are actually screwed into the, the case. So they, they won't be removed as easily as a spring bar would. It's a much more robust strap attachment system, and therefore, you know, they, they, there's no penalty. You don't need NATO strap, you don't need welded lugs, they've got a better system here. So uh, that contributes to this great score of 71. Very high protection here, 40 out of, out of 50. 
So that's very good. You don't see scores that high all that often, especially not in the upper price tier. The dial is really not great for a field watch. Um, so I gave it low contrast. That was kind of all I could think of. They do actually have the minute air, but it is technically high contrast. You have white and black. They, that's kind of their thing is to have a ton of contrast on the dial, but it's not in a good way. It's kind of in a distracting way. Um, and the skeletonized dial doesn't help with readability. So that's why I gave it low contrast. I think it's just a couple points off. Yeah, it's just two points off for that. Um, they've got this complication here. It says simplicity. It's a crazy way they do the date wheel. It's absolutely insane. You can kind of see it through there. That's that's why you want the dice, dial skeletonized. So you can see this crazy system that they have for the date. That's really cool. Anyway, very cool watch. And you could actually use it in the jungle if you if you wanted to. Um, a lot of these watches in the upper price tier, they look cool, but you can't really take them into an extreme situation. I argue the Richard Meal is suitable for extreme scenarios. So go ahead and use it if you've got all this money, I guess. As I did with the other price categories, here's the overview of the over $5,000 price tier. There's 29 watches total, and I only recommend five. Maybe I didn't find all the field watches over $5,000. If I miss something, let me know, but Here's the broad overview, I'll go through them. So we already saw slide one here. You've already seen all that. Um, only one that's recommended out of the box, the rest you have to put a nail strap on. Then from here on out, you know, they're not recommended. IWC, RGM, Hermes, De Batoon, Neoya Hida, Bulgari, Neoya Hida, Gran Seiko, Neoya Hida, again, JLC, Piaget, Bulgari, Chopard, Hermes, IWC, JLC, F.P. Jern, Patek, Philippe, Hajime Asoka, Hublot, Breguet, Audemars Piguet, Audemars Piguet, Gerard Perigo. Now that you've seen all that there is in this category, keep watching if you want to see me go through these one by one. Otherwise, skip ahead to my top 10. Start with slide two here. We've got the IWC Ingenieur Carbon. IWC Ingenieur Carbon, price of 15890 size of 46 millimeters. And it doesn't get a passing score. Even if you wanted to put a NATO on it, you couldn't. This is the ugliest watch I've seen in the entire 330 watches. It's, it just doesn't look that great. Um, there's no shock technology on the automatic movement, so that kind of surprised me. That's per, their, that's per their product listing. Okay, so if they didn't put that on their product listing, well, that's not my fault. I just went with what the website said. Next, we have the RGM 151 Corps of Engineers, price of $7,950, size of 39 millimeters. Great size. Great looks, this is styling. Um, it's almost a viable field watch, but they really lost some on the, um, on the protection here. Literally, if it was 100 meters water resistance, if that's all they changed, it would be a recommend on a NATO, but it is not. And that's too bad, they came close. This one is actually kinda close. But they didn't get it, it's titanium. It looks like they finished the titanium really well, but push-pull 50 meter crown, it seems like that's what most of these higher end field watches do, but it's too bad. If someone's paying this much money, give them 100 meters. But yeah, I don't recommend it. Next is the Hermes H08. This thing made waves when it came out. It was really, it looks really cool. It looks like you could actually use it as a field watch. And you almost can. This one does have 100 meters of water resistance, but it has a push-pull crown. You give it a push-pull, you get it up to 50. They could probably make it a viable field, field watch. They lost the date complication, put the crown guards on there, it'd be a 55. Then they just, all they'd have to do is like, could put on the military time or something, you'd be, you'd be fine. But yeah, as it is, score 45 doesn't pass. Next we have the Daybatoon DB28 XS Starry Seas. Price of $90,000, size is 39 millimeters. Yeah, this thing's a work of art, and it is super fragile. 30 meters, so didn't pass. Next is that Nioya Hida and Company NH Type 2C1 Letter Cutter. Price of $19,200, size of 37 millimeters. Um, it's not a viable field watch. Surprise. Next is the Bulgari Octo Roma. Price of $7,784, size of 41 millimeters. Total score of 44. It's got a push-pull crown. It does actually have crown guards. So good job on that, I guess. It's really more of a sports watch. They could make it a field watch. 
They could make this thing a field watch and it, it could actually work. Obviously you wouldn't want it on some bracelet, but yeah, it's not viable. Next is the Naoya Hida and Company NH Type 4A. Subtle variations, I probably didn't need to include all of these. Score 43. Grand Seiko SBGW 311, price of 5,900, size of 37 millimeters. Well, you know this did a lot better than the other Seikos in terms of where it is in the ranking. So in the over $5,000 category, in the score of 40, oof. But compared to its peers, Grand Seiko is doing, I guess, okay. It is 100 meters of water resistance. So like all other Seikos, they're losing points for other things. I know this probably isn't a field watch, so we'll just go on to the next thing. For, score of 40. Now you might in company NH Type 2C. Another subtle variation. Mix of uh, numerals and marks. Oh, $16,605, size of 37 millimeters, score of 40. Next is the JLC Reverso Classic Monoface. Price of 9000 and size of 40. This was supposed to be like uh, you're riding a horse and whacking people with sticks thing. So why is it so weak? It's 30 meters of water resistance. They didn't give it any anti-shock technology for the movement. If you're riding that horse whacking people with the sticks, like, come on, dude, just beef it up a bit. And it's a push-pull, no crown guards. I mean, I get why there's no crown guards. That would look really stupid on this one, but they could do a screw-down crown. It is supposed to be a polo watch, after all. But yeah, score of 39. Next is the Piaget Polo Field Watch, another polo watch. Am I supposed to wear this while I'm, when I'm playing polo? It's got a, it's $13,300, size of 42 millimeters, has a score of 38. It looks sporty, but it doesn't have the sporty features you, oh, okay, it's losing points here for the fact that there's no hour hands. Seal Instruments proved you don't have to have the Arabic numbers on the dial you can still deliver a watch in the score of 80s and up. So, other ones could do it. It says field. It actually says field on this. This says it's a field watch, okay. So, there's others that look like this that I put in here too. You could put it on NATO, but it's still way under. I don't actually recommend this for fighting predator in the jungle. Grab a different watch. Next is the Bulgari Octo Finissimo. Okay, I lied people, that, that IWC wasn't the ugliest. The Bulgari is the ugliest. The most expensive watches are the ugliest watches. Um, even though it's forged carbon, you th pfft, forged carbon helps it out a little, right? But where are the minute markings? Oh, you're too fancy to actually know what time it is, so, eh. You probably pay somebody to know what time it is. It's not your job. Total score of 36. Next is the LU Chopard XP bunch of numbers. Price $9,600, size of 40 millimeters. How could you pay almost $10,000 for this? I don't get it. I really don't get it. Um, is this even an actual product image, or is it a render? This might be a render. Like, they couldn't even get somebody to photograph the watch. It, the image looks weird, I'll be honest. It's got this weird denim pattern on the dial. It looks cheap. It looks like you would buy this for, like, 100 bucks, Not $10,000. And of course, they slap you in the face with 30 meters of water resistance. It should not be done. Don't put 30 meters of water resistance on a watch. Just don't design it that way. What is it, a snapback case back or something? Come on, screw that thing down. For $10,000, come on. Score of 34. Next is the Hermes, Slim de Hermes. $7,475, size of 40 millimeters. It looked like it could be a contender, but no. It is not a contender as a field watch. Score of 33. Next, the IWC Portugueser. Price $7,450, size of 40 millimeters. This looks like it could be a field watch. Am I wrong? Like, look at that thing. It looks like you could actually use it as a field watch. I highly recommend you do not use it as a field watch because it has 30 meters of water resistance. It was Hermes or somebody else. I actually looked for it. I couldn't find the manual, but as I was doing this video, I found that a watch manufacturer said, do not let your watch come in contact with water that has 30 meters of water resistance. They, they advised against letting water contact it at all. So that's what that means. It means really try not to let anything splash it. And for a field watch, you can't. And, uh, okay, they're probably not trying to be a field watch. But, yeah, you can't use it as a field watch. Don't try. All right, JLC Master Control. $9,550, size of 40 millimeters. 
Score of 33. Not a field watch. FP Journe Chronometre Bleu. Price $37,400. Size of 39 millimeters. Score of 32. This was the only tantalum watch, so I had to talk about it a little bit. I programmed that in. I put the tantalum in. It's in the video. I explained the difference between tantalum and steel only for this watch. Nothing else. But yeah, tantalum is not as good as steel, even remotely. It's heavier than steel, and it's weaker than steel. For a field watch context, the, 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 you want your material to be strong and light. And this is a weak, heavy material, so not good for field watch. Looks really freaking cool, though. That color is insane. And that's why they do it. It looks otherworldly. It's a very cool color. The dial is... This thing is beautiful. I, I feel bad ragging on these things because some of them are just so beautiful. It's kind of silly. It's not a field watch. That's pretty obvious. Next is the Patek Philippe Calatrava. Price of $43,800, size of 40 millimeters. You know, this looks like you could use it as a field watch. This is like stealth wealth right here. You have a, a watch on your wrist that looks like a field watch. It has the syringe hands. It has these numbers. It looks just like a field watch. But then it has an absolute dog do score of protection here. Two out of 50. You may not be able to go lower than this. This may be the lowest you can get. Okay, if it was plastic, it would have, I think it would have a minus three instead of a minus two here. White gold has low tensile strength. It's not a particularly robust material. Yeah, I think one is the lowest score you can get. So this is, this is a two for protection. They could have beefed it up. They could have made it do double duty. I wish they would. You know, people are spending all this money for a watch. Even if it's really expensive and fancy, can't it still be a little bit robust? But no, this is, this is not robust. Yeah, score 31. Next is the Hajime Asaoka Tsunami. My deep apologies for my silly voices. It's done in good spirit. Price is $26,700. And the size is 37 millimeters. Again, bad water resistance. Not a field watch. Score 30. Hublot Classic Fusion Racing Gray Titanium. Price of $7,300. Size of 38 millimeters. Ooh, 50 meters. Getting, getting robust here for these fancy watches. Total score 28. This is the last page, y'all. We have the Breguet Classique 7147. You know, can you blame me? I thought I could be a field watch. It is not a field watch. Price of $22,700, size of 40 millimeters, score of 28. Next, the Audemars Piguet, code 1159. This is the green one. Price of $25,300, size of 41 millimeters. It's actually steel. Man, they're trying to make it look like a sports watch. They're trying to make it look like it's got some rugged capabilities or something here, but it gets a protection score of four. Uh, it, they really did a lot wrong here. They did it pretty much everything wrong you could do. At least it's made of steel. But yeah, low score, not a good field watch. Audemars Piguet Code 1159, the red one. I don't know. You can see the numbers here if you actually want to buy this thing. It's $34,400 if you want to buy it. You're trying to save up. Size is 41 millimeters. Score of two for the protection. White gold, yeah. Like the other one, it could only be worse if it was made of plastic. Total score is 24. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not a good field watch. Again, it looks like it could be, but it's really not. And in last place, it's the Girard Perigot 1966 Orion. This is the lowest score here. Score of 15. Price is $10,900 size of 40 millimeters. And here's the lowest score that we've seen in the entire video, score 15. So what we've learned today is if you spend more money, you get a worse field watch, pretty much. Since I encourage people to jump around using the timestamps throughout this whole video, who knows if people have actually watched all the things, but the lower categories really have some wonderful options. 200 to 500 is really solid. The $5,000 and over category really was not where it's at. There are a couple winners. Well, there's 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 five solid field watches in this category. The rest, maybe a couple, you could argue, are trying to be field watches. Most of them aren't even trying. Just wanted to see if something was possible. But as you saw, there really wasn't anything viable beyond these, these top five. There's probably some other watches I haven't considered. 
I, I feel bad that there's probably something even really super obvious that I'm missing. So please let me know. Did I miss something? Is there a watch brand over $5,000 that I should have considered? There's some watches that I could have considered that were like dive style watches, but I just, I tried to exclude dive from the video since we're doing field watch. It's just a style thing, but. And now I'm gonna go on to the top 10. Enjoy. <laughs> the top 10 field watches. Now for the twist. Earlier I blasted Instagram field watches for looking pretty but having non-ideal specs. However, most of us are not being dropped in the wilderness for a zombie fight where we need an indestructible, analog-only, simple, high-contrast watch that we can sync with friends' watches for coordinated attacks. So for this list, I added some more subjective data points. I factored in the looks, the aesthetic, the brand heritage, the affordability, the uniqueness of the design. And I also took off the NATO penalty Honestly, I don't personally care for NATOs very much on my everyday wear. I just think it's superior if durability is your top concern. So NATO has been reversed. Rather than consider all 330 again, this is an elimination round. We have the top five field watches in each price category that we've already looked at. And here they are. Under $200, we've got Bertucci Construction King, Redwood Monsoon, 511 Pathfinder, Escapement Time, Miltado Military. In the $200 to $500 category, we have the Bertucci A2T Vintage, the MWC G10, the Veyer C3 Korean Field, the Armor Light AL144, and the Newmark 52 Field. In the $500 to $1,000 category, the top five were the Cincinnati Cincinnati Centurion, the Zodiac Olympos, the Victorinox Inox Carbon, the Marathon Officers Mechanical GPM, and the Mark II Crucible A11. And in the $1,000 to $5,000 category, we had the Seal FTX Field Watch, the Longines Spirit Titanium, the Timor Modern Field, the Mula Glassuta SAR Rescue Timer Lumen, and the Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic North Hollywood. And in the category of over $5,000, we had the Richard Mille RM005 Titanium, the Omega Railmaster, the Norcane Wild One, the Patek Philippe Aquanaut, and the Rolex Explorer. In addition to these 25 watches, I decided to select some wild cards, just some other field watches I wanted to give a chance to actually win this thing. Okay, and so I try to keep these all above the recommend category, but since we're going more general, there's a few, and I'll explain where they are. But yeah, these SWC Trench Blue, Timex Expedition North Field Solar 36mm, Bertucci A2 SEL, Momentum Smoke Jumper Eclipse Solar, and the RZE Valor the CWC G10, the Timex Expedition North Titanium, the Archimede Outdoor, the Tudor Ranger. This is the one that didn't, didn't cut it. It's already on a NATO. I don't recommend the Tudor Ranger, but you know what? Let's give Tudor a pass, see if they win this thing. Maybe they'll be in the top 10. Luminox Green Shield Patagonia Steel. Merci LMM01 Original Quartz, Trigolux F100 Parabellum Vintage, Kuawe Old Smith Green, Rotary RW 1895 Field Watch, Minus eight, Field 1S. Boulder Venture Carbon Black, Woolbrook Outrider Mecha Quartz, Studio Underdog Series 2, Christopher Ward C65 Sandhurst Series 2 W10, <laughs> Bowdery Voyager Titanium Field, and the Circular Pro Trail, the Hamilton Khaki Field Titanium Automatic, the Tracer P67 Officer Pro, the California Watch Lost Coast Solar, and the Sestrian Chester Ch Field Watch. Okay, so those are the 50 watches here they are. Here's all the 50 watches. I know this is tiny, especially if you're looking on a phone. But yeah, uh, not much I can do about that. I needed all 50 on the screen. These are all the contenders. So what I'm doing is I'm taking their scores that they received based solely on durability, their fitness, their suitability for the use case of Field Watch, which we've already described a thousand times. I took that original score. I lowered it 70%. The, the remaining 30 percentage points are going to be factored in by the following things. So here's brand heritage. That's a piece of the pie. So 10 points were added based on brand heritage. And what I did is I just ordered all the watches by their brand heritage. This is very subjective. That's why I said it's subjective at the end. I think Richard Mille has the best brand heritage. Then Patek Philippe. Then Rolex. And so on. I put these in the best order I could think of. 
Did I get something wrong? Well, surely. This is my perception of their branding. So it's probably just marketing. Who has the best marketing? Patek Philippe has the best marketing, not Chester or whatever. Cestrian down here and Momentum. Patek Philippe beats them. So it allocates these 10 points based on their ranking on the screen you see here. Next, I did the same thing for looks and style. I think the Zodiac looks the coolest of all the watches, then the Norcane, then the Cincinnati Cincinnatus. You will likely disagree with me on this. You may even think this marathon is the best. I'm sorry, guys. I did the best I could to factor in looks. I think they all look pretty cool, all these watches. I'm a watch guy, so I kind of like most watches. But yeah, this is my order. I can't do your order. I don't know how you would have done it, but I did my order, what I think is the coolest at the top. And finally, five points were given for uniqueness. I put the Norcane at the top. I think that is the most unique design out of all these. Again, you may disagree. You may think Richard Meal should be the first one, or Zodiac is the first. Whatever you think, um, I put these for, in order of uniqueness, the best I was able to do. Okay, so I factor all this in, and now I'm going to give you the top 10. In 10th place, and I'm so happy to see this one here, is the Vayer C3 Korean Field. This had a really high original score of 81. It was in a very competitive price category of 200 to 500. I thought it looked amazing. It looks really nice. Um, if you want to tell the time, I think I said, this is a watch you can tell the time with. It is very clear. They, these numbers are a great size. Actually, for looks, I only gave it 10 points out of 20. Brand heritage, 6 out of 10. Again, that's just based on that ranking I showed you. Uniqueness is not even very unique. It is fairly affordable. At this very moment, I think it looks really, really nice. So 10 out of 20 seems like not quite fair to it. But here it is in number 10, the Vare Korean Field. This is a solar movement. It pleases me greatly to see a solar watch in this. This is the only solar watch in the top 10. Good job, Vare. In number nine, we have the Timor Modern Field. This 37 millimeter watch looks so cool. I praised it for its, its, I praised it for their fresh take on the Dirty Dozen where you can still have the six and the 18 here. You don't have to chop it off and you can still have that small seconds. That's so great. I haven't seen anybody else do that. Um, but yeah, its original score was only 69. So not very high scoring whatsoever, but the looks, come on, look at that dial. This looks so good. Now, this is on pre-order. They're supposed to ship it very soon. So I don't think anybody's even reviewed this watch. I don't think anybody's even held this watch. Keep that all in mind. This is hot off the presses. I think this is very deserving of a place in the top 10 field watches. Obviously, I say it's number nine. This is the ninth place. Even if you can't get your hands on it. I'm so sorry. I find that I found that out afterwards. I think it's fair to include it. It's coming out any minute. But yeah, affordability, not so great. One out of four. These are just based on the price tier. Since it was the 1,000 to 5,000, it got a one. Um, this is a good point for me to mention. Patek Philippe, Richard Mille, if they would have gotten in the top 10, they would have been in this kind of ranking. Um, I gave them actually negative points for affordability because over 5,000 doesn't tell the whole story when you have Richard Meals $100,000. So I, I started deducting more points for those ones that were super, super expensive. So that's why they're not in the top 10. So now you know, not in the top 10. Patek Philippe didn't make it. Richard Meal didn't make it. But Timor Modern Field did. Next, in number eight, we have the Mula Glassuta Sar Rescue Timer Lumen. It's a full loom dial. Their strap attachment system is proprietary. You're not going to have to worry about spring bar failing. This thing is rugged to the max. It has like a thousand, yeah, 100 ATM, a thousand meters of water resistance. This is a rubber bumper around the, the front here. This is designed to be super rugged and maybe you don't like it. I thought it was beautiful. I think it is beautiful. 18 out of 20. I rank this very highly for the aesthetics. I really like how this looks. I really like the uh, magnification underneath the crystal like that. I always think those look so cool. And maybe that's just because it's unusual. 
The crown guards are really nice here. Um, ranks low for affordability, obviously. It's, it's kind of expensive. But yeah, that's the number eight. In number seven, we have the Norcane Wild One. And I chose the NHL Players Association version of this. It has really great contrast. I think this would make a wonderful field watch. It has rubber bumpers. It has anti-shock technology on the case that will protect that automatic movement inside. Its original score was only 57. Barely scraping in to be recommended. You can put it on a NATO. My threshold was 66 for recommend. So a NATO added at 10 points. So if you put the NATO on, you could get up to a 67. Barely scraping in. But um, aesthetics... They knocked it out of the park. This thing looks B.A. Um, uniqueness, it's very unique. There's nothing quite like this. It sort of looks like the Patek, what's it called? But it's its own thing. Norcane did their own thing here. It looks wonderful. Affordability, zero. It's very expensive. $5,290. I could never afford this darn thing, but some of you could. It's a viable field watch. In number six is the Bertucci A2T Vintage. Come on, if you watched the video, you had to know I was going to put Bertucci in here. They kill it. You know, if I didn't do subjectivity, Bertucci would be like 9 of the top 10 watches. They just they just make a really solid field watch. But obviously people like variety. You want to see some aesthetics going on. I scored it pretty low on aesthetics. I do obviously like it. I like the looks of it. Otherwise, this would be a zero or something, and it wouldn't have been in the top 10. Yeah, I think this is a great field watch and well-deserving of its place. In number five, we have the Cincinnati Cincinnati Centurion. Good price on this. Um, in my top 10, I have three watches under $500. And I also have three watches under 1,000. And this one is one of those ones that's under 1,000. The original score was 73, so a solid field watch. This won the category of, of 500 to 1,000. So good score there for, for suitability as a field watch for the apocalypse. And then the aesthetics are so good. I think I talked about this when I reviewed it, but I love these color contrast. I like that they put the military time on the outer track because my eye is drawn more to the standard time here and the, the way they changed the colors here. The brighter colors on the standard time means this is what I'm going to be drawn to. I will most likely ignore the outer track unless I need it. But in this case, they made the numbers big enough you can actually read them. It's got a lot of really nice style stuff going on red tip, and loom on the seconds. But I don't want to talk your ear off about this one. In number four, we have the Bertucci A2 SEL. Very high original score, 87. One of the highest you'll see. Brand heritage, out of 10. I think Bertucci actually does have high brand heritage. Well, I think it has a five out of a 10 of the field watches that I reviewed. I'll show you brand heritage again for a second. You know, I just ordered these watches I see on the screen. So of the ones on the screen, I think Bertucci has pretty high brand heritage. Of all watchmakers of all time, is Bertucci half the way up the ladder? No, they're not. They're definitely not. But I just, I judged based on the watches that were in this this elimination round. Aesthetics, I like this a lot better than the one on the prior page, and that's probably why it has a higher score. This is so cool that it's got the backlight, and it has traditional, um, traditional loom on these little triangles on the outside. In number three is the Zodiac Olympos Field. Oh, this thing is so cool. It does actually have crown guards here protecting that movement. It had an original score of 72, so not particularly high. Oh, it was high in that price category. That was a tough category. I think the aesthetics are amazing. Brand heritage of Zodiac is quite high. Again, for this particular subset of the watch market, Zodiac is really good. And it's a super unique watch. And it's not outrageously expensive, $8.95. At least in terms of what's on the market, it's not, it's not crazy bad. In number two, I have the Seal FTX Field Watch. This is such a unique watch. Um, it is so over-engineered. Different take on a field watch. 42 millimeter, titanium. They actually have the military time on the outer ring. You can get different colored hands. You don't. They don't have to all be white here. You can have like a, an orange minute, or they could all be orange if you want. These are just made by one guy, and yeah, it got this very high score of 83 in part due to their proprietary strap attachment system here that is so much more robust than the standard, than the standard um, spring bars that you see on 99% of watches. Probably higher than 99% of watches have a spring bar. This is solid. And it's shown on a rubber here, but you can get, you can order it with the NATO and everything. This is, and it's got a really cool bracelet. 
but yeah, I scored it fairly high on aesthetics. I mean, I don't think it's the prettiest watch in the world. I think it, for me personally, I like watches that look a little weird. So that's, that's what gained it points. I don't think it's not necessarily a beauty contest winner, but I like weird looking watches. Brand Heritage, I just hear such great things about this maker. I think it's well deserving of the number two. In number one, four points above everybody else, is the Victorinox Inox Carbon. This is the best field watch. In my opinion, this watch right here is the best field watch you can get on the market today. It costs 900 bucks. It is a quartz watch. Hallelujah. It is a forged carbon case that they run over with tanks all day and it's fine. It's got these crown guards. It's got the screw and crown. It got a great score of 71 here. Love how this thing looks. I, I just, I've, I always have. Ever since, ever since I've seen the Inox watches, it's just really done something for me aesthetics wise. In my opinion, based on my review of 330 field watches, the Victorinox Inox Carbon is the best field watch you can get. And here are all the top 10 for you in, in one slide. The Ver C3 Korean Field, Timor Modern Field, Mula Glass Suta Sar, Norcane Wild One, Bertucci A2T Vintage, the Cincinnati Cincinnati Centurion, the Bertucci A2 SEL, the Zodiac Olympus Field, the Seal FTX Field Watch, and the Victorinox Inox Carbon. Those are the top 10. All right, so in addition to the top 10, I've come up with this a, a few bonus sections here. I'm gonna give you top fives in a few different categories. In these bonus sections, I'm not going to include anything that was in the top 10. These are watches I thought really excelled in a particular area, but they didn't get to the top 10. So I'm kind of giving them an honorable mention here. The first one is, I noticed that all but one in my top 10 were 40 millimeters or larger. And I know there are people out there who a 40 millimeter wristwatch is a little bit too big for them. So here are the top five field watches that are 37 millimeters and smaller. And when I say top five, it was, it was chosen subjectively. I chose ones with pretty good scores, but that I personally really like. So in number five, I have the CWC G10 Quartz. It's a 37 millimeter watch. It is about 300 bucks and it scored really well on my system to assess whether it's good for extreme scenarios. It is good for extreme scenarios. And in addition, they do issue it to soldiers. I think this is a great choice for you um, if you're looking for a smaller field watch. And in number four, we have the Kuoe Old Smith Green. This is a price of $358. This is a 35 millimeter. Um, it's a great size here. It'll work great for smaller wrists. This one actually didn't pass my test for if you're gonna try to take it to the apocalypse to build your field watch, take it to war, whatever. I It was just one point over. It does have 100 meters of water resistance. It does have a screw down crown. You know, a couple points of penalty here are due to it being 35 millimeter. But if you have a smaller wrist, reverse those points because it is based on, on wrist size. You know, you want the watch to fit well. And once they get too small, I think that is hindering your ability to read it well. But this is very easy to read. Very large numbers proportional to the size of the watch. And I think this is a good one. So let's say it has a 67. It passes. And uh, that's my number four. In number three is the Tipsim Guide. Price of $1,199. It is shown here on a an elastic strap. This is a 36 millimeter. Wonderful size. Traditional kind of size. It, 36 is really sweet. It's not, I don't think it's too small at all. I'm wearing a 36 millimeter watch right now. I think it works fine. My wrist is seven and a quarter inches. So a little bit larger than average, but I think 36 millimeter is still perfectly fine for a watch. There's nothing weird about it whatsoever. Um, and it will be a lot better for smaller wrists than a 40 would be. But yeah, this, this got a good score from me. It's recommended for the apocalypse. And I think it looks really stylish too. I chose this one over similar ones like Laurier Falcon or um, the Smiths Everest. Similar in that they're, they're kind of explorer style. They don't have all the numbers. I chose this one because this actually scored better than them. I think it's a little bit uh, more robust than those other ones. I don't remember the specifics as to why that is, but this one scored a little better. It's a little better of a field watch than those other options. It also costs more. In number two, I have the Rotary RW 1895 Field Watch. Ignore this number, that's for the green one. Put the black one on here because it looks better than the green. 
and uh, this has a price of $272. This is a 37 millimeter watch. It scored very well. Being quartz really helps it a ton. Um, in terms of scoring, my scoring system for the Apocalypse, quartz is a lot better than automatic, so that's why you get a 72. But yeah, one thing to note, it doesn't have any loom. So if, if that's a deal breaker for you, then don't get this one. But otherwise, I think it it's actually is really nice. And it may have loom. I just went with the product listing, and it didn't say loom on the product listing. I couldn't find any night shots, so you could see if it's loomed or not. It looks like it's loomed. It might be loomed, but they didn't have it on the product listing. So do your research. I don't know for certain on this one. I still think it's a viable field watch, even if it doesn't have loom. And the number one pick for a small field watch is the Prezidis Jungle Field OG, 34 millimeters. Now that is a traditional size, 195 bucks. And it got a score of 57 in my scoring system. So if you put it on a NATO, it is suitable for extreme scenarios. And I really like this. I prefer a mineral crystal. I've explained that before. I prefer the quartz. So this is a super viable field watch. So there they are, all five of them. These are my top five field watches, 37 millimeters and smaller. Continuing with the bonus round, here are the top five titanium field watches. In fifth place is the Formex Field Watch Petrol Blue. It scored didn't quite entitle it, but this one just speaks to me so much. I really think this is a nice field watch. Um, it didn't pass my, my scoring system. It didn't quite make it, but I wanted to give it an honorable mention here. This is a, a cool titanium watch that's on the market. It's $840, so it's a little bit pricey. Size is 41 millimeters. For Formex, it's actually cheap. I think this is their cheapest option. It does have 100 meters and a screw down crown. So it was losing points in other areas. You know, it is actually fairly robust uh, protection wise. The automatic movement hurts it. In fourth place is the Boulder Venture Carbon Black is a size of 38 millimeters and price of 300 bucks. And this is a robust field watch. People love the Boulder. It seems like it's well-deserved. It has good loom. They actually loom the numbers and everything. It does have the screw down crown. It does have the 100 meters. The crown is not right on the side where it's more likely to get hit. So it's in a good location too. It's titanium, sweet size, really cool case shape. Clearly it can take a NATO, it's already on one. So this is a really good field watch option. Very solid pick. And in third place for top five titanium field watches is the RZE Valor 38. Priced at $329. This is their yellow version. They have some other colors. Um, this is in 38 millimeters. The case is really cool looking. It's actually very similar to the Formex. Uh, the lugs are very different, but it's got these kind of, these kind of sharp lines mixed with the, the curviness. Yeah, all these kind of have a similar look to them. Apparently I really like that look or Titanium watches tend to take this sort of shape, who knows? But yeah, it's a solid field watch, recommended highly. The second spot is the Bowdery Voyager Titanium Field, 97 bucks. How could I not mention this? How could I not give it some sort of plaudits? This is a, it's a Chinese watch. They do so many things really, really excellent. I think I explained this before, but you've got the minute Arabics, just little tiny here not really causing any problems. You've got all these numbers, but it's been done in a very nice way that I really don't see other brands doing. This is very similar to that Bertucci, but I think they've done it a little bit better in terms of the dial here. Their case is also a little more stylish than the Bertucci. You have the benefit of the recessed crystal. This bezel comes up above the crystal and that will protect it from a lot of the scratches that you would otherwise get. So that's really nice. It will protect it from impacts. It's a very solid watch protection wise and also just looks, I think it looks really nice. They come in different colors. I chose kind of a fun one with these hands, but they have a lot more plain options as well. And in number one for titanium, my number one pick is the Longines Spirit Titanium. It's very expensive. Uh, it's way outside the price range I would consider, but you know, if I saved up for, <laughs> If I saved up for a couple of years or something, I could probably pick this one up um, if I had that kind of discipline, which I don't. I don't have very good discipline with saving, and that's why I have mostly cheaper watches. But um, I should probably I should probably get more disciplined and get something nice like this Longines someday. But yeah, it's a 40 millimeter watch. They screwed down the crown. It's 100 meters water resistance. Um, they did a lot of good things on this one. I think this is an excellent field watch and it's also titanium and it also looks really nice and you've got the brand heritage. This is my number one titanium field watch. Here are my top five solar field watches. Fifth position is the Redwood Kilroy. 
price of 170 40 millimeters these guys are a canadian watch company and their their watches scored extremely high on my scoring system these are very robust these are legit field watches and they they're fresh too this has a fresh look to it they made these triangles a little bit bigger than you see a lot of the times it just it looks really nice and um it also scores really well on my system designed to measure how suitable it is for extreme scenarios. Great choice for a solar watch. In fourth place is the Vare S5 Tactical Field Solar. That other Vare was in the top 10, the Korean field. So here's a different Vare, um, a different solar watch from them. They do a great job at these solar watches. They look really nice. It, I love how big these minutes are on the outside. That makes it really easy for me to read the time. But yeah, $260, 40 millimeters. Does have this date on there, which I don't care for, but some people prefer the date, so you choose. Very good option. In third place is the Timex Field Post Solar. Price of $169 and size of 41 millimeters. Great crown guards on this case. Beautiful colors here with this, this gray and the navy, and then this kind of cream color mixed with all that. This is a solid, this is a solid color combo. If it had a matching date wheel, that'd be the cherry on the, the top. It does not have a matching date wheel. That's kind of an eyesore. But if you don't mind the eyesore there, then this might be a good option for you. If you put it on a NATO, I recommend it for your camping trip and your extreme scenarios. In number two is the California Watch Lost Coast Solar. In the main video, I did a blue one that was really quirky looking, but this one is stylish. That gray and orange... Ah, oh, they did a good job on this. This looks really nice. The price is $250 and it's a 38 millimeter watch. There's no complications. I, I said it didn't have crown guards, but it looks like this might, might be a little bit protected from the case. The crown might be set in a little bit. So this might even have five points extra for crown guard. It might be a 72. This is an excellent choice here. It, it looks so good. They really made the solar panel a part of the design here, and I really like that. It's got this fun little uh, hand-drawn style of writing on there. That's It's kind of out of the way, but if you like the look, definitely look into these guys. I don't know anything about them, but their watch looks really nice. I think this is a good option. And in number one is the Momentum Smoke Jumper Eclipse Solar. Price $265, size 38 millimeters. When I look at this thing, I wonder why do I even own a Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic? These guys did a similar thing to Hamilton, and they improved on it several ways. You've got a solar movement, you have crown guards, you have a screw down crown, and the price is like $500 cheaper. So it scored very well on my system. Put a NATO on this and it's an 85, which is extremely high, extremely high in my scoring system. This brand of momentum markets exclusively to outdoors people. This is meant for camping. This is meant for the field. So I think it kind of slips under the radar. I don't think watch people are necessarily aware of this watch. This is a solid field watch. I'm glad I got to honor it at some place. It didn't make the top 10. It's kind of, I don't know too much about the brand and so forth. It just didn't make it to the top 10. But this is solid. This is a good field watch choice. So there they are. These are all the top five solar field watches. And here are the top five tritium field watches. In fifth place, we have the Tracer P67 Officer Pro, price of $470, a little big, 42 millimeter. It scored well in my system, and I think it looks really nice. Tracer actually makes these tritium tubes for other Swiss companies. They can still have Swiss made and everything. And I really like their watches. They look really nice. In number four, we have the Luminox ISAR Arctic XL, $254, size of 46 millimeters. Now, this price is because they don't actually make this watch anymore, but you can still find it. You can still find this one if you do a little hunting. It's got a forged carbon case. These tritium tubes, they put they actually put the markers on everything here. I think they have an orange one at the top and then green on the outside, so you can get that orientation correct. Like all the other ones in my, my top five here, it's got the standard time, it's got the military time, it's got minutes and stuff. They did a great job here. I really like this one. It is huge at 46 millimeters, so if you can wear a 46 millimeter watch, I recommend this one. And in third place is the Marathon Officer's Mechanical GPM. Price is $600. And unlike that last one, this is 36 millimeters. 10 millimeters difference between this one and the Luminox. That is a crazy difference. 
So if you like, if you prefer a smaller watch, here you go. Here's the Marathon Officer's Mechanical GPM. This thing has gotten a lot of praise. Um, people are waiting for this to happen. There's no date on here. Good job, Marathon. It is only 50 meters with a push-pull crown, but it does have crown guards. It'd be better if they screwed it down, gave it 100 meters. But this is a serviceable field watch, and they do actually issue it to soldiers. Cool option. And in second place is the Knight MX-10. Price of $400, size of 39 millimeters, beautiful size. Comes on this kind of rubber strap here. It does have some crown guards. It's got 100 meters water resistance. I think this is a great option. I really like how it looks. I've considered purchasing this in the past and I was a little put off by the $400 price for the quartz. This is a UK company and uh, they do actually issue this to soldiers. And so maybe that's part of the price situation here. But yeah, if you can stomach the price, I think this is a great watch. I've actually owned a night watch in the past and it was extremely well made. They do a good job on their watches. So I think you do get what you're paying for. And in number one for Tritium Field Watches, I put the Armorlite AL144 Field Watch. Price of $350, size of 42 millimeters. This gets the benefit of a fixed screw-in lug bar instead of the traditional spring bar that you normally get that can pop out more easily. So this is a lot more robust of a strap attachment system that they have on this Armorlite. So it's got extremely high protection, 48. The only way they could improve this is to recess the crystal here. Very well protected, very easy to read dial. I don't care for the date complication, but most people actually prefer it, is what I've found out. This armor light is a solid choice for a field watch, and I highly recommend it. This is my final top five little segment here, bonus segment, and this is hand winding field watches. There weren't a ton of hand winding watches in this review. I was kind of surprised. There just there aren't that many hand winding field watches. It's kind of a small segment. And they really didn't score very well. You're kind of stuck in this, this uh, push-pull crown scenario. I know you can screw them down, but with hand winding, they don't seem to usually have the crown guards. They're just not as robust as the, the other options. So they just didn't score very well. But I still think they deserve a spot. They deserve some recognition. I think there are people that are going to be looking for hand winding field watches. I chose five of the most attractive ones. Technically, there are only three hand winding field watches that I even thought were suitable for the purpose of a field watch. The, the, everything else just scored too low. So I've got two that I recommend for the apocalypse and three that I don't in this top five. In number five, in fifth position, is the Merci LMM01 Original Mechanical. Look at this. This is beautiful. Merci is like some sort of art project sort of thing. They, they make some watches that have this very classic look to them, sort of like a clock, a school clock. And this is their mechanical one. Price of 646 is a little bit high. 38 millimeters is an ideal size. I, they did very well on this watch. If they upped it to 100 meters, it would have been a recommend for me. You know, I don't really recommend it for extreme scenarios. If you're just looking for a field watch to wear around town, this is a wonderful choice. In fourth place, I put the Vice Standard Issue 38mm Blue. If it looks like these pictures, that is gorgeous. Very beautiful watch. $2,000. You're getting up there on this one. Uh, 38 millimeters across. From what I understand, this has a, a great reputation among field watch enthusiasts. Vice is a good choice here. You do have the minutes on the outside, and then you do have just the standard time. I'm missing the six. They chopped it off for the Dirty Dozen style small seconds. It's got very nice aesthetics, I'll give it that. But it didn't meet my recommendation for fighting enemies in the jungle. In third place is the very popular right now Studio Underdog Series 2. Price is $900 and a size of 37 millimeters. It's a very conventional color choice I put up here. They have some more fun color choices. They have the Stephanie blue one with the pumpkin and the, and the kind of gray blue. And then they have that really striking pink lemonade version. These are really cool Instagram watches and it almost made it into recommend for the apocalypse territory. Just a little bit short on that. If they made it of titanium, it would have made it. Things like that. It was one point underneath the recommend from me. And I just, I was consistent throughout the video, so I didn't recommend this one. We can, we can give it to Studio Underdog. This is a really cool field watch. It's a hand winding watch. I love that they did it that way. There is a romance to hand winding, and this is a good option for that. If you can actually pick one up, I suggest doing it. In second place is the Timex Field Post Mechanical. $114. This is the cheapest hand winding option in this top five size of 38 millimeters, and it is a good field watch. Put it on a NATO and it's a great choice. 
Now, it's only loomed on these little triangles. They didn't loom the numbers, unfortunately. It does have 100 meters of water resistance. It's a steel watch. And my number one recommendation for a hand winding field watch is the SWC Trench Blue. Swiss watch company. This thing looks so beautiful. They have some other colors as well. I thought this was the, the best looking color they have. It has 100 meters water resistance. I do recommend this for the apocalypse if you put it on a NATO strap. I think you're good to go to fight Predator. Yeah, this is a viable choice and it looks really good. They finished that titanium really well. From what I know, this is a really nice micro brand. So those were my top five hand winding field watches. And this, this ends the, uh, the watch portion of the video. If you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I always share a Bible passage at the end. I make all my watch videos in service to God. My ardent prayer is that through this work that I'm doing, people would come to know God and know Jesus Christ as their savior. It's a big dream to have, I suppose, but um, is that God would use this work for his ends. For the disclaimer, I'm not a pastor or a trained biblical scholar. I just like sharing the Bible with other people, so that's what I'm doing today. Today's passage is Psalm 36, verse 8 and 9. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. So when the psalm says, they, they are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house, it's referring to the children of men. It's just in the previous verse. So that's us. We're children of men. So we can be abundantly satisfied with the fullness of God's house. So I have a, I actually have a three-point outline for this. Point number one. With God, there is complete satisfaction. Satisfaction meaning lacking nothing. All our needs met. So the question arises, when have I ever been abundantly satisfied with the fullness of my house? Well, Prior to my relationship with God, never. I was never fully satisfied. I was never abundantly satisfied. I was always wanting more and never finding it. The house that the psalm is referring to is not a physical house. You know, God's house. It's, it's the house of the Lord. And it's not necessarily the four walls of the church. We often call that the house of the Lord. But I think it is being immersed in the church family. It satisfies me abundantly. My church does. And it is about going to regular service, but it is that fellowship with other people. It is the activities with the church, the Bible study as a group, helping each other out, having fun times together, being able to call each other in times of need. That satisfies me abundantly. God's house can actually also refer to my body, the temple of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit resides in believers' bodies. And when we're paying attention to him and are tapped in, he gives us abundant satisfaction with our portion in life. Point number two, with God, there is complete immortality. In verse nine, it says that the fountain of life is with God. This fountain is very symbolic. So God is both the source of life and the sustainer of life. So he created the water in the first place, which sustains us, but he also causes water to flow perpetually. The water always flows. These rivers never stop. It's amazing. He designed life to be continuously renewed on a daily basis with the eating of food, which comes from photosynthesis, from the sun that he created, from the water. God set all this in motion, and it can last forever. In the Bible, believers are promised eternal life. John 10, verses 27 and 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Jesus promises us eternal life if we believe on him. Point number three, with God there is complete joy. In verse nine it says, in your light we see light. The peak of joy is only found in what God illuminates for us. If something in our life is illuminated by God, it is there that we will find our joy. In John nine verse five, Jesus calls himself the light of the world. In James chapter one verse 17, we are told that every good and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. I.e. perfect light, not like a candle that, that varies. God's light is perfect. It is always the same. It is always there. It is perfect light. It's interesting that Jesus called himself the light of the world, and then Jesus also tells us that we are the light of the world, those of us who believe in Jesus. In Matthew 5, verse 14, he said, You are the light of the world. 
a city set upon a hill cannot be hidden. Who is he talking about? He's talking about his disciples, those who are following him and seeking to be like him. In your light, we see light. This is where true joy comes from. And this is how we can share joy with the world. The joy of God, we can share it with others by being that same light. We can be the light of the world. So this this passage, this is an amazing passage. It's a couple of verses. The whole psalm is amazing. Um, I just wanted to highlight that one portion of it. So that's all I had on the passage. Now for a prayer. Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity to share your word, to put that out there. Um, I just pray that whoever would listen to it would be changed. Um, whoever would listen to your Bible passages that I read today, pray that they would um, pray that they would come to know you. That would they would become followers of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. I thank you, Lord, for everything you've given us. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and in every way. The Lord be with you all. See you next time. And I know that he-